Travelers, welcome back to a very familiar location. I'm sure that you've played some Genshin Impact Genius Invocation here many times before. But we got something a little new for you today. I'm sure you've never seen something like this because we are here live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Astra Carnival Prince Cup Invitational EU Grand Finals, baby. We have brought for you the seven greatest players of this card game in this very building to play for you the most amazing card games you have ever seen before. Now, I know why you're here. You're here to see the best in the world compete. You're also here to steal all their decks. No problem, my friends, because we will show you the greatest decks you could ever put together, and we will get you all those fantastic games. But before we can start this action, before you can see all of this, I must introduce you to our wonderful players here, my friends. Yes, they have clawed their way up through the qualifiers, and we have gathered for you the greatest TCG players in all of Genshin Impact, and we will start introducing you to them right now with our friend Vesta. Now, Vesta is from Germany. Fun fact, I asked them all for fun facts. He said he's going to win and beat everyone, which is not really a fun fact, kind of toxic. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't say that. He said yeah, he hopes everyone has fun. And so do I, my friends. Thank you so much, Vesta. And another competitor here is Kaito. Now, Kaito is from the UK. Shout out to Cousin Joshua and Little Sis Lola. Fun fact, we already did the next event. Lola and him go in the grand finals. He loses. It's pre-recorded. No, I'm just kidding. It's not real. Uh, let's head on over to the bar. Diona's taking the day off. No kidding here, but we do, of course, have Binzu. Now, Binzu, fantastic man from Germany. And of course, he builds healers and stall decks. Very toxic, but uh, we like it. He's a very nice guy, but you don't want to go against him. Not at all, my friends. And we bring you to our fantastic table right in the center of the stage. This is where the action will take place. This is where you'll see the greatest TCGs ever played. And you better get used to seeing Fufu right here, my friends. This is Fufu, creator of the Chong Yun Melt. And of course, fun fact I asked, said this is the first time that they have ever left their basement. So congratulations on your wonderful journey here. We're so happy to have you. And get used to seeing our boy 2LGG here at the table as well from Italy and uh, a purveyor of the Yai Quick Index. So well done there. We will see some more of them. Now, as always, when you're having a party, you gotta watch out for the people sitting in the back of the room. And these two, oh, they're terrible. Please, a, a toast if you, oh, wonderful, wonderful. This is gonna be Fuyu Mi. She is a Kingfisher VTuber and one of the most devout customers of the Chi Chi delivery service. Chi Chi's always busy, whether she you know, once or two or not. And uh, of course, we'll go to our last competitor here, Claude E from Sweden. Fun fact, prefers tea over coffee. Tea, of course, I assume is a metaphor for the tears of his enemies as we will get into this fantastic competition. Seven of the greatest Genshin Impact Genius Invocation players all sent for you. Show them off, my friends, as they will fight for the right to show who is the greatest in all of EU. We're going to get right into the action real soon, but please, first, allow me to introduce our wonderful casters. Hi, thanks so much for the introduction, Slacks. My name is Leah. I'll be casting today alongside. Uh, hello, this is Blep. You might have heard me on some of the previous TCG trials. I am so excited uh, to be here in this arena. Uh, the energy here is amazing. Um, yeah, it is surreal. It really is surreal. The venue is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for us, we've been casting for Genius Invocation since around December in some of the community run tournaments. And it's honestly amazing to be here and, you know, being able to recognize the players that are on stage today. So really excited to see what decks they bring. Yeah, if you told me, you know, like when Genshin first released that we'd be at a competitive tournament casting for this with a huge staggering prize pool in this amazing arena behind us, which you just saw, um, I wouldn't have believed you. I don't believe quite believe that I'm here myself. I think sure <laughs> it'll sink in in a little bit. But yeah, we're going to, you know, whenever the players are ready, we will be ready to jump right into our first round. There's no, no waiting for the action here. We also made uh, some bingo cards. Oh, yes. So I posted them on my Twitter, uh, Windflower Leah, if you want to go find them. But you can follow along <laughs> and mark off on your bingo card if you see something interesting happening in the game. Yeah. So, 
So this is the bracket. Um, the quarterfinals are all going to be happening at the same time. Uh, you can see there's four sets of matches that are going to be played. Really interested to see what we're going to see first. Um, Binzu has 2-0 against Hakio because unfortunately Hakio wasn't able to make it today, so he gets a bye in that match. And then the semifinals will be one by one and we'll finish off with the grand final, right? Yeah, yeah, and this should be really good. You know, the players were required to submit five different desks and they were able to ban two of them. So there's yes. a lot of strategy here as well already before the game even starts. Um, so we're not gonna see right away until the players pick which decks to ban, which ones will be played, but you know, I'm looking forward to whatever the players uh, are bringing. Whatever I, I've seen some of the deck lists that they've submitted. It is yes. open deck list, so yes. they get to see what their opponents are potentially bringing. Um, I've seen some really spicy ones, so I'm really looking forward to these matches. Definitely. Um, I think we're also going to see a lot of standard meta decks, mm -hmm. like, you know, Pyro Kuching, uh, Geo Shinid. There, there's a lot of really interesting things, yep. especially with patch 3.7 introducing, like, a wealth of new character cards and support cards. Yeah, and here we go. Looks like we look at the lineup first for Vesta versus Kaito. So, Ooh, immediately I see a Sino deck with uh, oh, Lamia, yeah. Raiden, Overload. Um, Yai Quicken for Vesta, that is a pretty standard deck. Mm -hmm. um, there's Shenemo also on Vesta's side using Jean instead of Sucrose. Yeah, very unusual. Um, a lot more defensive oriented uh, build, which gonna, is going to pair up very interestingly against that very aggressive Dillic deck, which also is quite unusual. But we'll be starting, I guess, with the Yai Quicken match. Yeah, Yai Quicken will be going first, I mm -hmm. suppose. Um, the most important thing to note here, Yai is very essential to this Quicken build, and you can exchange uh, Kale's position with another Dendro character yep, like Jade Plume. Mm -hmm. um, but Tignari Yai is basically the core of this deck, and I suspect that we're going to see a lot yeah. of this play today, not not just in this match. No, right, this right. Match. Yeah, a lot of players have brought this deck. It's one of those uh, decks that don't use a lot of characters that are shared by some of the other decks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, you, when you have to come up with five different decks to bring these tournaments, you slowly, quickly, or very quickly start running out of good cards to start using. And then so you kind of have to scrap together what you can with the rest. And this list is one of the ones I'm keeping my eye on. Um, you know, Yoimi and Sino, very unusual choices. Yes, very uh, unusual. But I am, I'm really excited to see how this works. You know, the right, right in here, uh, obviously newly added in 3.7, um, going to be turboing out some of those bursts potentially, you know. Yeah, and um, you know, Yormia did have a little bit of a nerf um, in the previous patch, making her burst increase uh, in cost from two to three. But with the introduction of Raiden, I think that really shows up one of her weaknesses now, being able to uh, jumpstart that energy very quickly. Yeah, I... Normally with Overload decks, you will see Klee, Kuching, and mm -hmm. Bennett these days. That is the standard deck. Before, instead of Klee, you had yeah. Agent. But with Klee and Bennett, you have the Monstat Resonance that you yes. can add, the very newly strong. introduced regional res resonance cards, which mm -hmm. are very useful, especially the Monstat one lets you go twice back to back. Yeah, well, as long as so... you kill someone. But <laughs> usually those decks have no problem <laughs> doing that. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Resonance cards definitely changed up, I think, the deck building as well and the variety of decks that are possible mm -hmm. by not only allowing you to consider the elemental uh, mixes of the characters, but also just where they come from. It's something doesn't come up very often, but it's very cool to have. Um, so I'm very excited to see, hopefully, some of the decks showcase those new cards. And yeah. I mean, Sino is just very unusual to see in general. Sino is. I mean, so he's he's very strong. Um, you know, one I I, I played in in, in a Tono deck before being beaten by Sino decks. He's fallen out of popularity uh, a little bit recently, especially with some I of the new build cards. Him. I still yeah. build him. Yeah, I mean, I you should build him. You know, one of the cool things is you can make a lot of things work right now in GITCG, especially in the 3.7 version when all of these new cards people are still working out what's good and what's not. So this is kind of the best time to have a tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, not only are the skills of these players uh, on display here, but it's also their deck building skills. You know, can they come up with something different and surprising? Because the surprise factor can matter a lot in these high-level things, right? Because if you, a lot of these players are, have been practicing hundreds of hours against the same decks. Um, oh, and it looks like we're already switch. getting into the match. Yeah, and we see a pretty good hand up there on Kaito. It looks like he's only going to throw away one card. He has a ramp card, energy cards, and a defensive card. So he's, I think he's in a pretty good spot. Vesta down there with a pretty good start as well. Nothing, no ramp and no expensive cards. So it could be uh, a little bit tricky, uh, but he does have that uh, Sumeru residence in, in case he wants to throw away or redraw a bunch of cards in his hand if it still isn't good enough. 
I feel like we might see Vesta switching out some of these cards. Ideally, you want to start with Ramp if you can. Yeah, well, you, I you think, can always pull these cards again. Mm -hmm, I think Vesta might have already switched out his hand. It looks like there might be some. Okay, well, yeah, it looks like there might be some issues with <laughs> the setup there. So we'll, we'll do a bit of a restart. That was just a preview of what's to come. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can expect more of that exciting action in just a moment. Um, but, you know, already, uh, I'm really looking forward to how these decks play. Um, Yomiya again is is a very unusual choice. So I'm I'm I, you know she's my favorite character in Genshin right now. So um, I I really hope that it works and wins. So I'm rooting for uh, for Kaito here for sure. You're rooting for Kaito. I am. I'm gonna root for Vesta then. Well, what you can we can root for the same person. That's fine. <laughs> it's Tignari for Sasino. It's hard for me to decide who okay. to win. Okay. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Be seeing Tignari again. I'm sure. Uh, he's very popular right now. Uh, he's been. He is very popular right now. I mean, I think he's popular in specific builds. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't normally see him outside of the Quicken build. Um, if you were building something like. Hyper Bloom or mm. Burning, you'd normally run Nahida instead of Tignari. Tignari yeah. is really good if you can build around his uh, charge attacks, right. but also he's good as like, his burst is just really good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got a very strong kit, so we'll hopefully see that showcased here. It looks like we're jumping okay. back. So it looks like these cards are different. I think they restarted the match. They did, but Kaito must uh, got a really good draw again with a very similar set of cards. Uh, though, I mean, if I was in, in his spot, I think I'd be very happy with his hand. Yeah, not even going to put any of them back. Vesta has Ram. See the, the, the Liban. Oh, yeah. So that that's better than the last hand, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that uh, restart of the game favored him a little bit. But, you know, that's that's kind of how it is in, in TCG. You you There's a little bit of randomness, but you got to make do what you have. Dice Ooh, are great for Vesta, wow. not so great for Kaito. Same yes. part. Oh, that's not that's not good. <laughs> yeah, only only four usable dice there, unfortunately. Uh, luckily, his hand I think is good enough, so that Paimon card's gonna help him a little bit. He can use that two hydro uh, and an Omni dice to uh, ramp into that big Paimon. So we're probably gonna see that play here because of his rolls. So probably not gonna uh, happen too much this turn for Kaito, but next turn he's gonna have a little bit of an advantage uh, over Vesta. Yeah, I think Vesta has a pretty clean start here. Three yes. Omni, one Dendro can basically switch whoever he wants and use their skill. Yeah, um, uh, it'll be interesting to see if he chooses to deploy that Lieben, because he might want to save that for another turn when his dice aren't so good. But oh, since yeah. his dice have been so good, I think we're going to see him actually use as uh, front load as much damage as possible with skills. I see Vesta hovering over the Dendro Woven. I'm wondering if he's thinking about using it now. Yeah. I wonder what for. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he has that, uh, uh, the other Dendro Residence card. Yes. So I think he's going to try and greenery. Yeah, spawn and greenery, front load that damage by using the Woven for an extra dice to bring up to four and then use Tignari's skill there. But it looks like he's opting to save it. Yep. Both, uh, notably, both sides have a Sealy out. So mm -hmm. if you guys don't know what the Sealy card does, it's newly introduced in 3.7. Basically, every time your character uses a skill, like any kind of skill or normal attack or a burst, mm -hmm. um, it will go up one counter. And once it hits three counters, it will give you three cards. Yeah. So it's a really good card, honestly. It's great for card draw, but you have to be careful not to overdraw your hand, which <laughs> is actually on our happen. bingo list. <laughs> yes, it is on our bingo list. You know, the top players uh, rarely overdraw, but it it's, can be very hard to, f uh, very easy to forget about treasure seeking ceiling there. One of the new cards in 3.7, and definitely, as you'll see throughout the tournament, has been the new golden standard in card draw. You know, we have Strategize, uh, we've had. Um, Leo A. Haba as our card draws of choice here, but for most players here, they really prefer the Treasure Seeking Sealy. Three skills is not very much uh, in the uh, scheme of the game, and you can very easily get it out in one or two turns. Uh, also, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it seems that the um, well, Raiden skill mm -hmm. Procked overload on Tignari and sent him into Kole, so he's sitting at four HP right now. But now Kole's out. Yeah. You see and Sprawling Greenier come out. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Coral brush. So a bunch of damage there from Quicken uh, and triggering, reapplying that. So very efficient kind of damage coming out of the Quicken deck there. This is kind of the best start uh, you can expect. You Electro know, Resonance coming in for the extra energy. Probably going to see Raiden's burst. Might be sacking Raiden, right? Yeah, yeah. Raiden I is. Decide. Yeah, once Raiden bursts, you really don't need her anymore. She's just there to generate that initial two energy. And one of the things, this matchup is going to go very fast because both decks are playing to 
be quick uh, and pile on damage as fast as possible. So we're very likely to see Raiden burst this round, uh, followed up by a Yoimiya burst. And then we might just see Sino clean up in the very next round. We see Gamblers there in Kaito's hand. It's going to be very critical uh, in the upcoming turns, especially if he can snipe out Tikdari in the next round. So what I'm noting on Kaito's side, um, he does have the Ito card I haven't lost yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe if he's sacking right in, that would give him another no, Omni, considering his dice is really yeah. <laughs> unfortunate right now. Um, it is unfortunate, but I think he has enough cards to play with. It's going to be an interesting decision on Vesta here. You know, Gambler the, is in Vesta's hand. Yeah, the I haven't lost yet card. Uh, every player is playing it. And Double. so when you're playing at this high level, everyone knows about it. And so you can see him there choosing to play around that card by not killing Raiden immediately, but leaving Ooh. the summons. Oh, but maybe so not. So we do see the double woven. Gambler's going on to call A, and okay. we're going to take that Raiden out for the plus two Omni on Vesta's side. Uh, Raiden is sacrificed. I wonder, I mean, I haven't lost yet gives you an energy point towards your burst, <laughs> but since Raiden's burst was used, both characters gain two energy. Yeah. So, I mean, we could see it for the extra, extra Omni, yeah. but I, I have to wonder. Yeah, it really depends if Kaido thinks that uh, he can make a turn where he loses another character. I mean, once Yomiya bursts, uh, she is also dispendable. But again, if Vesta ends up playing a round that I haven't lost yet by not killing uh, Yomiya during the round and leaving her to the summons, then we can see that dead card in hand. But I think Kaido has a lot of tools to work with. You know, his, his game plan has been executed pretty well. And in fact, that applies to both sides. Um, here with pretty evenly matched here. So it really depends on who can outplay the other player right now. I mean, I, I do think on Kaito's side, he's had to tune so many cards. Mm -hmm. both, both dice rolls have just been really unfortunate. He's basically only had half usable dice both times. Yep. Vesta got really lucky on the first round um, and was able to work around the second round. Mm -hmm. So, ooh. Ooh. Big damage coming out there, and you know, that's kind of the, the Yomiya's burst did increase in energy, but it also increased the damage that she does, and so maybe yes. players are not used to that yet, but that was seven damage just out of the burst. And now, uh, no gambler's proc there, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Kaido no, not enough dice to put gamblers on. Yeah, Kaido was one dice short, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll see if we can make anything happen, but Vess is in a little bit of a tight spot, because Tignari is only on four, and if he loses that last Dendro, Yae is not the strongest character to end on. And you know, the good thing about Sino as an anchor, mm -hmm. so you know, you have Raiden go out first to use her burst, right? And give everyone that energy, and yep. also use her skill to apply some Electro. Mm -hmm. And then Sino's there as an anchor to basically wipe the entire team out yes. at the end. And right now with the 3.7, the meta is very fast, mm -hmm. unless you have a really, really good stall deck like Geoshina that can really stack those shields or heals. Yeah, definitely. Um, both the, the decks meta decks favors mm -hmm. faster play. Yeah, and both the decks are going to go fast. An interesting play there by Vesta, opting to save that last two dice uh, upon Lieben. I'm not sure if that's a, the best play. I don't see the game going another turn. Uh, so that Lieben might never activate. He might have just lost those two many dice. I saw him hovering over the Northern Smoke Chicken there. I think he was considering using that to reduce Yai's normal attack cost to two. Uh, and using that normal attack. I think that would have been the better play. I wonder if he's going to go look back on this and wish he had done that. Because I don't think that Lieben is going to be effective at all for the rest of the game. Oh, man. <laughs> I think Sino's pretty poised to clean up here. Yes, like, I, I, this could end this round. Mm -hmm. The one thing Kaito has to play around is losing Sino to a, a Yai burst, but because Vesta didn't actually gain that extra energy from the last round with that basic attack, he's not going to be able to burst this round uh, immediately. And that could be uh, big, because... Yeah, you see... Yai. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoimi is going to fall here. Yeah, Yomi is going to fall, but that's actually not a big deal. Uh, in fact, you might be playing into another I haven't lost yet. Kaido doesn't have that in hand, but Yomi is very much sacrificable. But he's hovering over as well. So opting not so, to use the Lotus Crisp. So if you see, there is an Nazuma Resonance card in Kaito's hand, which is going to convert all the dice of cringe, mm -hmm. as we like to call it, <laughs> into Electro. Uh, I think we're going to see that. Also, there's yes. Woven. Um, the one thing... I'm a bit worried about. Mm -hmm. So I see Vesta has Lotus Crisp on hand. Yeah, uh, and he to play, yeah. Is ready. Mm -hmm. So interesting that he chooses to use it. It might actually come back to bite him. Cause... But Goemia's burst coming in, overload yeah. to Tignari. Yeah, I don't think uh, Vesta had enough dice there to use the Lotus Crisp, because you see he has six dice now, which is just enough for two more skills. Mm -hmm. um, so he's very tight on dice right now, but he's got to play very carefully, because one more attack from Sino might just end it. Um, and I think I, I think Kaito has the game in hand right now because even with that 
uh, Lotus Crisp, Sino is going to deal seven damage uh, to Tignari and get through that Crisp no problem. And, you know, we know about the gamblers in Kaito's hand. I think Vesta's trying to calculate the dice right now to see if he, he can survive two more attacks. But with that gambler's equip and the woven, that's going to be exactly enough uh, to finish him off. So we'll see there. So, I mean, I think the thing is... You ha I have to use Lotus on Tignari to survive, right? Because one hit from Sino is going to take out Tignari, and then Yoimi's burst is going to apply to Yai. Yeah, I think what Vesta is doing is looking at the dice right now on Kaito's side oh? and seeing that he doesn't have enough. There we go. Okay, so he's putting the Lotus on Yai because he knows the Yoimi's burst is going to you gonna hate her. Interesting, yeah. I mean, you didn't need to do that right away. I think uh, you probably would prefer to hide um, the Lotus Crypt. And in fact, that might have been detrimental because now uh, Tignari didn't use his charge attack. You know, charge attacks require you to have even dice there. And so uh, by using that Lotus Crypt, he denied himself the charge attack and extra damage on Sino. It's gone. And I, you know, I'm willing to bet he was not playing around uh, that uh, gambler's equip. You know, he might have thought that Sino would have it. So he's going to hope right now that Kaido does not have the last dice, but we know that he does. Yeah. Um, and he is well, one turn short. Yeah, very close game there. It. This is only round three. Game's already over. This is already game game one, and it was down to the edge. So if Sino had not done the kill there, um, you know, we would have seen Vesta with the game there. So very well calculated by both players there. Uh, down to the wire, um, down to the last dice. And that's how we like it here against Jin. What I like is that... Oh, <laughs> we've we seen them in the lobby tech. here. What I like yep. is that, you know, Kaito didn't have the best dice in the beginning, mm -hmm. especially that first round. Yep. Really bad dice, wasn't really able to set things up. And, yes. like... He was able to win anyway. Yes. He secured the round. I mean, that was one. Of, that's one of the powers of the, you know the Inazuma Resonance card. I, when I first saw that, I, that was the one that I went, ooh, uh, that looks great. Because uh, one of the things with top players is, you know, if you are confident in your skills, when your dice go your way, um, that's when you can get all of those wins out. And so the more ways you have to mitigate, you know, the dice RNG, get mm -hmm. rid of those dice uh, that aren't useful, the better your chances of winning. And we really saw that there, you know, he rolled a very bad round three dice, but the Inazuma Resonance just came in, uh, gave him all of the Electro dice he needed mm -hmm. uh, for Sino. Um, but and he, I, think, I think he even like perfectly almost calculated the number of cards in his hand. He used up every single one, that Gambler's coming in clutch, that last Woven also being necessary. But, you know, the game looked uh, very, very close, so... I'm... It did look very close. And, like, in the first round, it seemed like Vesta might yeah. be in a really good position with his dice rolls. He was able to set things up perfectly, and it's just center overload comes in. Like, I feel like when you are in a quick meta like this, mm -hmm. you have to be ready to tune cards that might be important. Yeah. Like, for example, I don't... Do we even see Kaito play... His ramp? Um, I think so. Kaido played his first Paimon card, but uh, during the middle match, you might have noticed he immediately tuned his second one mm -hmm. uh, in round two. And that's kind of forward thinking, uh, knowing that by round three, the game will be over. So using Paimon is actually a dice deficit. But yep. on the other hand, I think um, Vesta might have made a little bit of a misplay there, putting down that Lieben uh, in round two, kind of the opposite of what Kaido decided to do. Uh, even though it took in the two extra dice at the end of the round, the game was already going to be over by then. And I really think if he had used that uh, Northern Smoke Chicken to get that uh, attack off with Yai, that would have let Yai burst a round earlier. And you can see at the very end, they, he was short three damage, which is exactly the amount of damage that Yai's follow-up does on the burst. So I think he actually had the win there. But again, you know, in yeah. the big stage, you had to, like, no one plays perfectly. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, yeah, That's definitely. kind of what's the fun yeah. of it. Um, but yeah, looking back, you know, it's very easy to, to make these reads, but when you're in the, the, the hot seat there with all the lights and cameras pointing at you, it's it's a very different experience. Excited to get into game two. Yeah. What do you think we're going to see? Um, I mean, I, I think we had those lists there. So we have the swell list going up against... Speaking of game two, we're already going in, so... Yeah, I think it was an overload uh, list. We didn't quite catch it, but we're going to see the characters real soon. So I immediately see Tenshikaku mm -hmm. and uh, Vanaran on Vesta's side. So um, those cards pair really well together. Tenshikaku gives you an Omni dice if you have five different elements, right? An mm -hmm. Omni count towards those, those right. different elements. And Vanarana, what Vanarana does is it collects two dice at the end of your turn, and then it gives them back to you no matter what they are. It doesn't convert them or anything, just 
hands them back to you. So it, it's really good for triggering Tenshikaku and also just, you know, carrying yeah. dice forward that you can't use in the previous turn. Yeah, and Instead it, of feeding them to Liban, you know. Right, and it's a classic pairing here in this Geo Ocean deck that we see uh, Vesta using a very strong pick right now. Surprise actually my, didn't get banned. It's on my bingo card. Yeah, we might have to <laughs> uh, we might have to go back and look at things that are just happening so quickly. I haven't had really time to pay attention to bingo. There's so much action going on. And, you know, we, we should also pay time to mention Kaito's deck here with Bennett Chong Yoon Melt. Um, Interesting Diluc. Yeah, I, looks there. I think Diluc there is mainly just as another pyro card that deals three damage. Yes, we're Diluc probably not going to see. Yeah, <laughs> we're probably not going to see his burst come out to play, but it really doesn't matter. And this is going to be really a test of aggression versus defenses. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and yeah, Geoshin. Geoshin's goal is to build those shields on Zhongli. So basically, yep. you normally take Vortex Vanquisher and uh, Tenacity of the Millith, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you want to put both of those on Zhongli, yeah. and then basically every time he uses his five cost skill, yes. he gets seven shields <laughs> or something like that. Especially if you have Geo Resonance card in hand. So. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is the closest to kind of like the end boss uh, kind Ooh. of deck where you you set everyone up um, to you know to have an unkillable character. George. I, I refuse to recognize George. Why? <laughs> okay, okay. So for those out of the loop, um, that frog summon there by Oceanid is uh, affectionately oh called George. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have George there sitting there. Uh, nice shields. <laughs> so one of the things I want to point out, so Vesta actually right, held on to Baranara there. I think that also oh my God. was a bit of a, wow. Yeah, seven damage right off. That's the first turn kill. That Through is a frog as well. another bingo. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start marking these off, I swear. Yeah, I, so one of the things uh, we'll see all that, so when you have Varanara and Tenshikaku, they do pair well together, but the order does actually matter. Um, we yes. see Vesta played it in the wrong order. Definitely misplay there, you know, probably overlooked the Varanara there in his hand. Um, we'll see if that makes a difference. Losing Ocean that early is a big detriment to the deck because you're losing one of your main sources of elemental application and you only have Geo left. Yeah, so, I mean, Geo doesn't have many reactions, but the one reaction it does have is Crystallize, right? Mm -hmm. And so the Hydro application there will trigger Crystallize once the Geo yes. skill is used. And um, the reason why you pair Oceanid with Lawatrol in that deck is so you can run the Abyssal Resonance, mm -hmm. Abyssal Summons, yep. um, which puts a random Hilatrol on your board and you know applies even more elements. So yes, um, and I think Vesta's really going to need to draw that card in order yes. to actually win this matchup. Because uh, yes. if he does not, a solo Geo is not going to hold up to the aggression here, um, coming out of this team. You know. Playing around first turn kills uh, is a very difficult option. You know, sometimes you need to respect that your opponents might have it, but it also messes up the timing of your own game plan. And we definitely see it there. Very strong opening by Kaito with showcasing the power of these aggressive uh, pyro-based decks. Yeah, so, I mean, in Kaito's deck, uh, Yun and Bennett are mm -hmm. the core, right? And yep. you can put pretty much any pyro character in Duluk's place. Duluk is not commonly used, so mm -hmm. it's really, really cool to see him, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we may not even see him used just by how dominating a position Kaito is. And you can see that Bennett with already with two energy. Um, you know, the, the Geoshina deck doesn't output a lot of damage, so it's going to have a really tough time fighting through a Bennett burst. And so once Bennett Bursts come down, especially with that Lieben ramp, I think the next round we're going to see the Lao Chao fall, and this is before Zhongli can put up any of his defenses. So this could be a really quick round too. Yeah, immediately we see uh, Lao Chao's burst go off on Bennett. Bennett's mm -hmm. going to sit at a nice one HP going into next round. Yeah, not too important though once Bennett lands his burst. Oh, he did draw an Abyssal Summons. summons. That could be big, so that could give him a real good chance at turning around. Still no equipment on Zhongli, so this might come down to the roll of the dice. If Kaito doesn't roll well enough, he's very low on cards in hand, but it looks like Vesta's also having trouble with the yeah, dice. Both, oh. both players. Okay, well, that's our free space <laughs> dice of cringe. We put dice of cringe in our free space, because yeah. we knew it would happen. We knew it would happen. <laughs> Luckily, though, the I think the Varanara Tenshikaku kind of ended up saving him. He did end up getting two extra Omni dice there at the end, or maybe even three, so maybe not too bad of a turn. But we're definitely going to see uh, Bennett Burst <laughs> and Kaido having to re-roll with Favonius Library there because his dice are also equally terrible. Favonius Library is such a good card. It's one cost and then basically you get a chance to re-roll your mm -hmm. dice and you can stack them so you can just yeah. re-roll, yeah. re-roll, re-roll. Noticeably, Kaito is sitting on two Ito cards and yes. they are, you can play them in the same turn. Also, Monsat Resonance. Yes. See that? That is such a good hand right now. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because I think Vesta is going to yeah, make the obvious play to kill Bennett here, but this is going to play right into um, 
the double Ito cards. We might see Chung Yun with double Ito cards. Come out. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the double Ito card come in the and the burst. Yeah, so we're going to see the yes. burst because Zhongli by himself is not going to do a lot of damage. So Ooh. being able to kill the Lava Chill here is really going to destroy any oh. chance. Oh, minus seven of the Oceanid deck to fight through the sh uh, the, sh the healing power of Bennett Burst there. Yeah, Bennett Burst plus two health to Chung Yun, so he's mm -hmm. no longer in lethal range. Yeah, I think definitely want to play that Bissell Summons first, although it looks like even, yeah, with because he chose to use the Lao Chao skill there, he doesn't actually have enough dice to deploy Zhongli's yeah, pillar. Unfortunate for Vestas, mm -hmm. has to make hard decisions here. I, I think mean, the best play here is probably Abyssal Summons and then tuning the Lieben, uh, because the game probably won't last that long, in order to run uh, Zhongli's pillar. But it looks like they're going to go for the normal attack, which really isn't going to be enough because mm -hmm. the n you know each normal attack is basically uh, mitigating one tick of Bennett's heal. So all Kaito needs to do here is normal attack back. Yeah, shake, you can see him shaking his head there. He just used Monstat Resonance for no reason, uh, just throwing away a dice there, but he didn't need it. Oh, maybe maybe he does need it now after that swap. So I think Vesta ran into an issue where uh, you have to have two of the same dice to use Abyssal Summon. Mm. So now look at look at Liban's going to have two Electro. You can't, can't give him two of the same element. No, yeah. So... It's, it's very hard to kind of plan around it. Luckily, he has Baranara, so yeah. that, that last Electro dies. But this is a similar situation in the last game where the game might just be over the next round. I mean, Bennett still has... Bennett Burst will still be up uh, next round. Dilix at 10. So, and, mm -hmm. Vesta, sorry for cutting out. Vesta is saving Liban to tune him. Oh, okay. Round. Yeah, very Because he knows, play. knows the, the round's going to end. Yeah, um, I mean... No use in playing it. It's, it's possible. Yeah, he could... Oh, and Whoa. he did find the Vortex Vanquisher. And, and Dual Resonance. Yeah, he might be able to set up a pretty big defensive turn here, but I just don't see it being enough to get through the damage on Kaito's side. Um, luckily, Zongli doesn't have any elemental aura on him right now, so Kaito will have to set that up. Maybe swapping to Chong Yun first, um, or I guess uh, waiting until Vesta uses up all of his dice. The Vortex Vanquisher going on to Zhongli. Yeah, a little late, but still welcome. Uh, yeah, gonna use that pillar there, get a crystallized so, reaction. So That's gonna make it great. Easy dice there, unfortunately. Not great dice, but that does put Dilek below six, which means Bennett Burst no longer gives a damage buff. And I think if Vesta can survive this round, he's in a really good spot next round with a full uh, regiment of dice uh, with that Vortex Vanquisher here. And with that shield, Zhongli is sitting at a nice 12 HP for this round. One more energy point off until his burst, which... Mm -hmm. It gives a new mechanic, right? Petrification. Petrification, yeah. And that could make a huge difference going into the next round by disabling uh, one of the characters. Which is flat out <laughs> eliminating them, right? Yeah, basically the same as Freeze, but no way to undo it. I think Kaito's looking to see if he can end the, uh, the game this round, but he might not be able to. He has six dice remaining. And they're Let's not... Well, I mean, there, there are three Cryo there, one Omni. Um... Yeah, I, I think his best play is to switch to Chong Yun and go for a melt to pile on as much damage as possible. That's going to leave two dice unused and then a Paimon card stuck in his hand. You know, I think he would really he would have to roll perfectly, but he would have really loved a triple Deluxe skill there. Uh, very unusual to see, but not going to have the dice to do it. And once the Inspiration Field runs out, Zonli might be able to tank the rest of the damage. I almost feel like getting to go first next turn might be better than swapping and using Chong Yun's skill. What do you think? I think you really need to pile. So while that Bennett Burst is active, uh, you really want that extra heal. It looks like he's deciding also between deploying Paimon. I'm not sure how much I like that. I think you really need to use, uh, take advantage of the Bennett Burst. One yeah, it's true. Turn. It's going to go out next turn. There's only one more turn, which is yeah, this yeah. one. So. You could do a normal attack with Dilik and play Paimon here. That might be the better play and just hope that you can rely on uh, your elemental reactions. Take it looks like that's what this is going to do. Yeah. Um, pretty good play, I think, here. This yeah. is probably the best line. This sets up yes. Dilek for burst uh, a little bit later um, and makes the best use of his dice. I think the problem I'm seeing is that, I mean, Vesta has Geo Resonance in hand and then also Zhongli's burst is up. So, I mean, right. I, I think I think he was able to get to a point where the Geo Shinit deck started <laughs> to roll despite Oak Shinit falling in the first turn, right? Right, and I think so. a lot of that comes off the back of that Abyssal Summons yes. uh, draw. If, he, if Vesta had not drawn the Abyssal Summons, um, this game would have not even looked close. I think Kaido would have been able to clean up. So, uh, you know, that's why the deck runs two copies. It is a very strong card, particularly the Geo deck. Oh, there's, I mean, <laughs> a bit too late for that, but late. there it is. 
I mean, depending on the dice, we might still see it equipped. Um, we'll see. This is really going to come down to the dice rolls. If Vesta can't finish the game, or at least put Zongli at a healthy life total by the end of this round, Kaito still has a shot. That petrification is going to be huge. Um, oh, great dice wow, rolls wait, on Vesta's Wait, is that five side. Omni? Was that five Omni? Uh, I, I, I think it was. I think it was, yeah. It Ooh. was five natural Omni and then one from... Okay, wait. We are making our way really fast with the bingo card. It might not be on your one. It might not be on mine. Oh, it is. It is. It's right here. Okay, and we see the Jero Resonance card. Dumbledito, right? Uh, yes, Dumbledito did have this game. And, yeah, finishing off... Oh, Dilla. Oh, look, seven shield points on Zhongli. Look at that. And the artifact isn't Ooh, even equipped there. But he it's does all... have Pyre Resonance. Uh, I think this is eight damage, but that's not going to be enough here with Zhongli. Yeah, uh, at 11. But if... Ooh. Might see petrification onto Chong Yun, which yes. means Chong Yun can't do anything. But then um, Chong, Chong Yun is going to get to go first next round. Yes. Oh, but that, that is actually perfect. The Vortex Vanquisher increasing the damage by one. That pillar at the end of the round is going to finish off Chong Yun. So it's... Vesta making it out by the skin of his teeth. Wow. You can see his, his relief there in his face that he had just enough there. That was such a wild match, actually, and we're that one was, to one right now. Yeah, that was a really close match. I think Vesta both rolled and drew very well there. You know, yes. the Vortex Vanquisher is one of the key cards in that matchup during that Abyssal Summons coming in right after losing Oceanid. I think Kaito did all the right plays, but that was definitely a case where the cards favored uh, Vesta a little bit towards the end. Yeah. Had he not drawn either of those cards, that would not even look close. I mean, the thing is, so, like we were saying earlier, Oceanid exists to kind of like stall the match mm -hmm. until Zhongli is all set yeah. up to go and stuff. And despite, you know, Oshid falling first turn, yeah. um, Law Trill was able to do the stalling long enough for Zhongli to get set up because, you know, Vesta pulled the Vortex Vanquisher. Mm -hmm. uh, he even the artifact a bit too late wasn't able to use it except for tuning, but, right. you know, was able to get those shields rolling and that's really what he needed to carry him through that match. Yeah. And I mean, like, with the fast deck like uh, Chongyun Bennett, mm -hmm. that, that core... Um, that melt core is really, really strong. As we saw, we already had a first turn kill in the yes. And <laughs> I mean, just a battle of the meta, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a wild matchup, you know, very swingy, but that, that's, you're really showcasing the power mm -hmm. of the Geo Oceanid deck. We may not see that deck come up again because it is a very popular band. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, it got Vesta through. Did, mm -hmm, yeah. Didn't. Maybe he wasn't too worried about it because he had such an aggressive list prepared to go up against it. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're going to see the players fighting the, the last deck, and I believe Vesta's going to be on an Nemo deck, which is my pet favorite deck. Um, oh, yeah, it I was, love it that was deck. Venti. Shunha and Jean. Jean. Yes, a very is, unusual choice here. Yes. A much more defensive uh, a Nemo deck. Um, and Kaito, I don't remember his last choice. Oh, Bennett Talent! So good. Hang on, didn't he yeah, already no, use? No, 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 oh, are they allowed to reuse decks? They might be able to reuse decks. I guess we'll hear from the tournament guys soon. I assume that you have to use a unique deck in each case. You can see Kaito maybe realizing that he picked the wrong deck, but maybe it doesn't matter because in the third round, you don't have a choice anyway, so we might be able to just do a restart. Well, Let's see what happens. If we don't restart, um, so, I mean, we've already seen both these decks play mm -hmm. out in this best of three, and we know they're both very fast. Yes. So, so this could be a very quick game. Roll. Yeah, it looks like the, the, the players are uh, fine to use these decks, so they can reuse their decks, as, I guess, as much as they want. Uh, or maybe, uh, I think if you lo maybe lose with a deck, you're able to reuse with it. That must be what it is. Yeah. The strategize coming out. Um, yeah, a little bit disappointed we didn't see the double ourselves. Anemo deck, but uh, I, I think this will be a good especially, matchup no matter what. Especially with Jean. Interesting. <laughs> so we oh, have Vesta okay. here. Uh, let's see. He's already one dice down. Oh, the, the starting with a strategize, getting some extra cards. Oh, he's going to tune Sumeru Rez, thinking his hand is good mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, pretty good yeah, dice so, rolls. Yeah, Sumo Res is a card, it's one cost, and basically you draw a card and then you can mulligan your entire mm -hmm. hand, or I mean, as many cards as you yeah. want, depending on what you think you need to keep and what mm -hmm. you need to get rid of and what you're searching for. So, very useful card, but I mean, if Vesta already <laughs> has the cards he needs in hand, he doesn't need it. Yeah, very got the good stuff. Yes. And we see Kaido also has a very, well, no Pyro dice for him, but he does have uh, that Paimon card. Uh, that should fix some of his dice. Still not gonna be enough. That's not the greatest hand um, to go with that dice roll. Yeah, and you know, 
Kaito originally had four cryo dice and uh -huh. even rolled one of them, <laughs> and I, it just somehow generated more cryo. So I, I guess we're gonna see Chongyun. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to see him switch to Chongyun here first. A uh, little bit of a wasted uh, turn of energy there. Maybe just trying to stall. Um, maybe it could be trying to fake maybe potentially a first turn kill uh, once again by, by making the enemy use up his uh, turn first. But it looks like... I mean, noticeably too, um, he does have the Paimon Omni card in hand if mm -hmm. he needs it. And he could probably stand it to maybe... Maybe the leave it to me, the Noah quick swap. Yeah, we might seem to just swap back to Bennett. I don't mm. see the point of staying on Chong Yun here. I think of swapping to Bennett or even Dilluk, um, you know, Bennett heals is, is decent, but the quicken deck puts out enough damage that you might not have time uh, to heal. But that he does have that talent card in hand. I think for me, I would definitely try and get to Bennett first as early as possible. So swapping onto Bennett. Yeah, I here. would swap to Bennett here and probably. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a skill. We should see a skill here. I think it's important to build energy. One of the the great things about this play is by swapping in this way, he prevents the quicken trigger uh, from the Yai summon and denying the quicken deck uh, that uh, re that elemental resonance effect yes. is very important. Yes, it's true because the gender application is on Chongyun and yep. Yai, uh, Yai Summon is going to be hitting Bennett instead. So mm -hmm. no, none of that quicken yeah. yet. We'll definitely see it this turn, probably from Tignari. One of the interesting things saw Kaito there, that even though he used Paimon, he didn't tune another card in order to use Bennett's skill, despite that being one uh, dice short. That means he is very. He thinks it's very important to keep the cards in his hand. He can't afford to throw any of them away. So we'll see if that's the right decision here, because that is two less damage, um, by uh, three less damage by the fact of not having a reaction. I mean, looking at Kaito's cards, just mm -hmm. so good. You know, you have Bennett, talent card, um, gamblers, <laughs> pyro woven, pyro res, which boosts damage. Yep. Quick swap and then a shield. It, it's just honestly the. Perfect. Hand he has side. he has the hands. He doesn't have the dice, and he hasn't drawn That's any true. dice fixes yet. Yes. Um, Vesta fortunately has been able to roll very well, so he hasn't needed much dice fixing. So this game might like he has perfect dice right now uh, to use Dendro and uh, maybe a normal attack even out of Yae or just a, another Dendro character. We could also see a Deptus burst uh, at one point, uh, probably in the next round. Gambler's going on to Bennett. I think we're gonna see the. Ooh. Pyro Resonance card, gonna take Tignari out. I wonder if we're gonna see Lotus on Bennett or... Probably not. Um, yeah, because we might just see a swap off to a different character. Should be Cole, right? Should be Cole. Yeah, but this this play is interesting because it does leave your Bennett yeah, open that, to that be mean, that's, killed. That's why I was wondering if we'd see the Lotus on Bennett, but... Yeah, but it might not even matter because of how fast this matchup is. Maybe That's Bennett first is not a priority here. You That's know, by true. the time you get it out, uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage up front, and maybe it's more important to take out Tignari there at full energy. So the Kaito, they basically denied each other's burst, right? Kaito denied mm -hmm. the two energy on Tignari, uh, Vesta denied the two energy on Bennett, so they're back to equal footing. But I think Vesta wow. has the advantage here a little bit because he's able to, he's, he was able to set up that Quicken. His summons will go off at end of turn to trigger it again. So we're going to see a lot of damage, especially if he chooses to stay on Chongyun here. Well, also, like, Vesta has uh, both Star Signs and Adeptus, notably. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, I don't know if we'd see that for Kolei or for Yae. But we're probably going to see it for Yae. One of the things with the Quicken deck is that it usually doesn't want to give Yae that second energy. You know, there isn't a very effective use or way to get Yae up to that second energy Yeah, she normally. basically casts her skill and yes. passes off to the Dendro character. Yeah, the best so. you can do is a normal attack, but that doesn't do enough damage. So having that Star Signs, we're very likely at some point to see uh, Star Signs, Adeptus, Yae burst to finish the game. And that might be what Vesta is planning on towards the end, especially with that Gamblers there yes. as well. Um, could be, I think the game's probably gonna end next turn. Ooh, a heavy strike. Oh, that, that's so good for Tignari, but yeah. he's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. <laughs> yeah, maybe Kale will bring out the good old bow and, and, and do a little bit of shooting. Oh, Kaito's oh, dice has not been cooperating. That's the dying. third round in a row that he hasn't rolled a lot of pyro dice. No! Oh my god, look at that. That's so sad. I mean, that's why you have dice fixer cards. That's you really why you have need them. them in your deck. Mm -hmm. You really need them. You can't <laughs> always rely on the luck of the draw. No, no. I mean, sometimes you can. Like, looking, look at Vesta's side. He he has only rolled Electro and Dendro with no help. And I think that this is like the third time that he's done it in this game. <laughs> so he's he 
he must be feeling really good about his chances right now. I mean, if he could see Kaito's oh. dice, he could definitely... Oh, he's going to do Star a... Star Sign's going on the Kole. I think we're going to see Kole's burst. Okay. Adeptus. Adeptus burst here uh, on the Kole here. Chong you know. has gone. Oh, I mean, noticeably, Chong Yun's still... It's not activated. Not active. Yeah. So we're out of uh, elemental reactions from Kaito's side now that Chong Yun is falling. Mm -hmm. um, but gamblers will give Vesta another two dice, mm -hmm. but I'm not entirely sure Vesta could do anything with it except, you know, play Lehman. Yeah, we might actually see Lehman go down uh, at the end of this round. Uh, so cut. So I, I really like that play out from Vesta because he denied the opponent the elemental reaction there um, and sets his summons up nicely here. Looks like he's... This is so unfortunate. Like Kaito, Kaito's dice, mm -hmm. all blue and green, no red. Yeah, I think Vesta's thinking if Dilik could kill Kale this turn and then finish off Yae. I think he's trying to figure out if it makes more sense to output more damage. Looks yeah, like he's, he's looks like deciding he's not to go for Liban. This is a really good play because this sets up the Quicken again on the Yae summon. Yes. yes. Uh, those summons are going to be cast. There's no send off to decrease their usage, mm -hmm. so. We we will be seeing Diluc suffering a bit here. Ooh, okay. Is he gonna go for the burst or just two normal attacks? Again, he's out of cards, so he can only out use the cards. dice that he has. Only three usable pyro dice, basically. Yeah. Those those two cryo and those two dendro are oh. not doing any favors. Oh man. Ending his turn because he knows it's not it's not gonna be enough. No, yeah, I think I think Kaido realizes that there's nothing he can do with those dice rolls. Yeah. If he had got more pyro dice, you know, that would have uh, definitely swung in his favor. But as it stands, there's just too much advantage coming out from Vesta's side. So I think we're gonna see him take the round with Quicken there, putting up very good results. That was actually the smart thing to do in this situation to, mm. you know, ending the round there so he goes first and maybe has a chance of drawing something that will keep <laughs> Dilok alive, you know, because otherwise, it's you know, true. use burst, you drop Kole, what happens? Yeah, right? I mean, Yai goes first. Yeah, Yai goes first and she doesn't have a lot of damage, but we do see Vesta has that uh, I haven't lost yet card. So if Kole goes down here to a Dilok burst and Kaido even drew, I think he was waiting for the Lotus Crisp there in case he drew it. You know, things in our spectators, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the winner of this match is going to be playing Vinzo, so I'm sure he's looking at their cards and how they play each deck and, and figuring out which decks he wants to ban, because they can ban different decks going forward when they go against a different player. Yeah. I think Kaito is running through all the permutations and seeing if there's a way for him out. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I mean, he was able to draw the Lotus, but I mean, his dice are just not working for him. Yeah. And you can see he just with a normal attack, you know, I think he's, he's definitely making the concession here. Um, we're probably just going to see Kale uh, do a normal attack um, to pop that Lotus Crisp and then yeah. finish off with a Floral Brush or with a Yai Burst. Either of them is going to be enough. Lotus goes down and the next the next thing against Dilik will just take him out. Mm -hmm. There's there's no avoiding it. And the thing is, Kaito has done everything right, I think. Th yeah. It's really unfortunate that... This, this round seemed to came, come down to the dice rolls, right? Yeah, so. so this round definitely did come down to the dice rolls. Kaito struggled a lot, um, and it's a combination of him not rolling well and drawing very well. But congratulations to Vesta. Congratulations to Vesta for advancing to the semifinals. Yes. Yeah, really well played. I mean, some of those games ended really fast, right? Yes, we had two very quick decks, uh, and even the Geo Oceanid deck, you know, uh, that round ended very quickly because of how, how the cards played out. Um, you know, I think definitely, I think in that last round, the dice and the card did not go Kaito's way. He must be feeling a little bit disappointed. Uh, you know, we're playing for very big stakes here. Yes, $16,000 <laughs> for first place, I for think. For first place, yes. yes. And our, even our semifinal matches, you know, uh, they, they're coming away with still $2,000, but getting into the semifinals puts you at $4,000 guaranteed prize money. Yeah, so really it's big a job. Lot, lot of stakes here mm -hmm. and uh, must be very disappointing when it comes down a little bit to RNG there. I mean, you know, Vesta still played very well. Um, but definitely, I think in that third round, the dice rolls favored him immensely. Yep, and I'm just marking things off. <laughs> On my bingo card, I've already I marked off up. several. So I cannot mark off Shenamo for now. No, you it cannot. Was not yeah, played. I, was I think for that. it will get played unless it's going to be banned every, every No, round. I don't think that's a very popular ban. You know, I'm still holding. I, I want to I see these pro players play Shenamo so I can steal all their secrets because uh, you know, I'm still learning that deck. You know, if Shenamo gets played, I already have bingo. Oh, I, yeah, I need to actually catch up. Yeah, that. please please do. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to see what I have. Oh. But yeah, I, I'm sure. We'll, 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 so uh, the quarterfinals are all being played simultaneously, so we will see uh, probably one of the other matches if they have not yet ended. Yes. Um, come up shortly. Um, but until then, you know, we'll, we'll kind of sit tight. Um, how have you been enjoying 3.7 so far? 
Oh, it's oh. been really fun. Oh, it looks like we're getting into... Okay, so... This is Fuyumi versus Clodda. So it looks like Clodda is already 1-0 against Fuyumi. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh, oh Shinomo, I got bingo it's already! <laughs> oh my gosh. Damn. We okay. need to make our bingo cards harder. Yeah, we, we do. I guess these players are just that good. Uh, and let's try and catch up the position okay, here. Yeah. Looks like Claude might be on the back foot. Shenhei mm. is down, but so, her burst is up. And there's two cryo applications on all the characters. Claude is acting right now. Uh, oh, with Kichu. Burst is up. So we're seeing that burst. I think Shao falls here. Sucrose. Yeah, Shao definitely falls, but I minus three. I think Fuyumi was setting up Shao to take the hit there. Oh, Fuyumi has great dice, actually. And yeah. also, I see. Uh, I think that's Tenderoid Chicken, which boosts uh, elemental skill damage. I wonder if she'll play it. To finish up Kiching, maybe you kind of are almost like it might be okay to leave Kiching alive. Uh, because she will die to the swell damage after the swap anyway, and you might be better off applying Lotus Crisp here instead of Tandoori Chicken. That's a good point. I actually agree. Um, but looks like going to go for that here. So, I mean, another play could also be to save the Lotus Crisp. It looks like the Tandoori Chicken does go down, though, and Kuching will fall, but... Um, so, could save that Lotus Crisp in case the round ends and... Mm -hmm. You know, the Kohlei's Burst would apply Quicken. Yeah, but interestingly enough, um, there's no defensive cards out from Claude here. So, uh, Sarah is in range for uh, being killed by Sucrose's skill here. So, I think he's, he's trying to figure out if he can finish the game this turn. I don't actually well, see a line for it, so we might I actually see if he can take this one. I mean, one. there's Electro Res and then yes. there's Adeptus Burst, but I mean, I, I don't... Would yeah, be enough? Electro Res into Sarah Burst and an Adeptus is still only four damage because there's uh, five damage with Quicken, but that's just not enough. And then it also be... only three dice. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it looks like it looks like Fumi's gonna clench this win, which <sighs> is congratulations one to one. Damn! Oh, I, mean, I saw I, I see uh, Shenhei and Nemo win, but I don't know how they did it. I completely missed how how it was a victory. But oh. <laughs> Okay, well, at least we get to see a game three. Uh, looks like those two players uh, didn't bring quite as aggressive decks. They, their games uh, stretch out a little bit longer. So I'm going to be excited. We don't know what their picks and bans are. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a complete surprise what they choose to bring to game three. Um, probably not Shinomo again, because I, I think if you win with the deck, you aren't able to bring it to the table. Um, but, you know, Claude, I'm very interested in his uh, choices because he has some... I've, I looked at his deck list before uh, the game, and he has some wild choices so i'm really excited to see i think the deck that we just saw is probably the most normal of all of his deck choices so whatever he brings next is probably going to be insane yeah so claude brought kuching sara and Cole. yes there. that's what we just saw um official clee sino would be interesting to see it's overload yes. except it's very unconventional yeah it's overload. a very unconventional overload he has it he's using child Child deck, Which yes. is new in 3.7, but people have not really been using him. For me, I gave up reading his card because he just had so much text. Um, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't make sense of it. I just figured if it was good, someone will show me how to use it. So I, I really hope he brings it out here. But he also has decks around Tubby. I mean, it, it's it's pretty crazy. So uh, noticeably, Claude also brought Hu Tao, Xing Chou, and Chong Yun. Mm. I guess, you know, Friendly trio deck, Rainbow, <laughs> Rainbow trio. Vape Belt yeah. Freeze. Uh, also, Noah Loa Trail Kokomi for a double Geo Hydro Stall. Yes. And then Fuyumi has brought Shana Sucrose Shao, which is classic Shanamo deck, as uh, Blep likes to call it, Sucryos. <laughs> Sucryos. <laughs> and then, so, Hutao Mona Bennett, standard Vape deck, mm -hmm. uh, Fisho Kole Kuching, standard Quicken deck, Sisin Mage Noel Ningguang. Yeah, that one's interesting. Double Geo with Sisin Mage. Normally, I mean, Normally, you'd see Geocean variant in that you case, would, or you even would. even Raiden instead of uh, Sisin Mage. Yeah, I, I think I think some of the the, like the banning strategy in here makes us some really interesting choices. Because if mm -hmm. you put too many good characters into one deck and then it just gets banned, then you lose a lot of utility. Oh yeah. And so you kind of want to spread out your good characters around and maybe bring some slightly unconventional decks, or like mm -hmm. weaken your one of your picks a little bit to make it less likely to get banned, or make it so a little bit more flexible in a different slot. Um, but oh, we Ooh, have some like results here. We have here. the standing. So yes, Fuyumi and Claude are one to one right now, and it looks like the other quarterfinals have been mm -hmm. concluded. So Vesta two to one Kaito. That's what we were watching earlier. Binzu had a bye against Hakyo because again, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Hakyo couldn't make it today. And Fufu won two zero against two LGG, yeah, which is really nice. interesting. I would have liked to see that match, considering <laughs> we have seen two LGG in tavern tournaments before. Yeah. Um, 
a few months ago, yeah, I casted, you casted those, yeah. yeah, I casted those along with Brand. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, congratulations <laughs> to those who advanced to the semis. I'm really, really excited to see those. Yeah, matches. yeah, it is a tough field out here. You know, this is really the best of the best, mm -hmm. um, and it is very hard to go even win two games out of three yes. against some of the top players. Yes. You know. Uh, with between dice and cards and everything, a lot of the best decks even have like 60, 70 percent maybe to win. So yep. it relies a lot on skill and yes. just making sure you don't make mistakes. But you know, I'm excited that we're going to a game three with Claude and Fumi. Yeah, excited to see it. Yeah, they by they by far both of them have the most creative decks I think mm -hmm. that I've seen in the EU lists. The last deck that Fumi brought was Brighton Sara Oceanid, mm -hmm. I think. I think so. So. Um, <laughs> that, even that's like an interesting electro charge yeah. deck. Like that's not yeah. normally something you would see. So yeah, and I re again, I really love this Highland Commons because if you bring something that players are not one not expecting and two not used to playing against, it can actually give you an edge if you know how to play those decks yes. very well. Because a lot of these pop players, I mean, we're talking about like hundreds of hours playing TCG against other people who are equally as good, testing and figuring out what the best decks are. But they're also playing their best decks against other players' uh, best decks. Here we can see it, yes, so... Um, <laughs> a lot of Electro on Claude's side, I've noticed. He really likes Electro characters. Just going back to the decks that they submitted, so it looks like Shinemo and then the Double Geo Sissin Mage and the Sara Raiden Ocean Electro Charge made it through for Fuyumi, and mm -hmm. so that means the Vape deck was banned and okay. the Quicken deck was banned. So very standard. So the meta choices got banned, which only left really fun decks. So that's kind of the way I like to see it. And looks like we have Fumiyu opening on that Oceanid Electro Charge deck. Yeah. Very against, different. Against Quicken. Normally, I mean, yeah, normally you would see double Dendro mm -hmm. with Yae Quicken. Um, this is kind of like a different iteration of Quicken, I would say. And also, yeah. Fuyumi's side's different iteration you normally see for uh, Electro Charge. I think the standard deck for Electro Charge is Mimisi, which is Mirror Maiden, Electro Charge. It's Mirror Maiden, Oceanid, mm -hmm. and normally Fischl. Yes, Fischl. Um, yeah, I'm actually surprised that, that neither side has Fischl well, here instead of Sara. Maybe they, it already got banned in a different deck. Uh, it's possible they bought the Nahida Electro Charge deck. But Fischl tends to be stronger than Sara. Uh, but we'll see if both players can make use of Sara's talents here. It's a little bit more niche. Um, I'm gonna guess Claude's build here is mostly focused around uh, trying to get energy onto uh, Keychain's burst, which is yes. very damage efficient. Yeah, the the good thing about bringing double electro is that you do have the electro resonance cards, which mm -hmm. it, it's one cost and it gives your active character plus one energy point mm -hmm. towards their burst. And so, I mean, as you can see, Claude is carrying a Death Descentation, has it in hand, and also double electro woven and quick swap. So, <laughs> he has uh, it all. It has it all, really. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just see how his dice lineup. As for Fuyumi, um, I see Cathedral heals plus two on your active character at the end of turn, has two usages. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting that she didn't choose to swap back to a Raiden at the end of that turn. I think I would have done that to prevent the Quicken from crocking at the end of this turn. Uh, that extra dice wasn't going away anyway. I guess she wanted to go first in this round, um, seeing it's more important than preventing that Quicken reaction. But that could yes. come to bite her back as the damage is going to pile up pretty quick. She does have some healing cards to mitigate some of that damage, so maybe she's relying on those instead. But let's see how the dice rolls line up. And also notably, she opted to not use Cathedral mm -hmm. despite having the two uh, Geo dice for it. I think it's to feed the three dice to Lieben yes, instead. Yes, yeah, the Lieben. Lieben. Yes. Yeah, which is why I'm a little bit Ooh, surprised. Send off. <laughs> yeah, our first copy of Send Off being visible here. Not actually going to be pretty good uh, if Kale burst, burst yes. which, which probably is going to come down as a priority for Claude here. I mean, when you think about it, I mean. Kole's burst is a lot of the Dendro application from Kole. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't want her to be the active character all the time, you know, you try to get her burst off, and then you can switch back and forth between the other Electro characters. Correct. To yeah. Draw Quicken, but the thing is, like, send off <laughs> going to be super useful against. <laughs> yes, it is exact. Send off did receive a little bit of an adjustment, no longer destroying a summon immediately in 3.7, oh, but reducing its usages by two. That's still gonna be enough to get rid of Kole's burst. There, no problem. Liu Su comes down. I'm wondering if we're gonna see a switch into. Ocean it in that case. That would be a little odd given the circumstances, but given how many hydro die Fuyumi has rolled, she might be using this opportunity. Yeah, it looks like she's using the opportunity for when her rolls yeah, line up to know. use that five cost ability none. to lay down Oceanid. And we'll see how Claude chooses to respond here. That would be the thing to do, I think. And then two yeah. electro, one geo left on Fuyumi's side after that five cost, so we might see Cathedral. 
Yeah. And looks like Claude is... Fi yeah, he's going to play Star Science. He's going to rush out this Kale Burst. I think it, it's going to give him a lot of front-loaded damage. But this is going to give Fuyumi an opening uh, to send that off. Send off. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And it's going to be very efficient for her. I mean, the Kale Burst still front-loads a bunch of damage. But being able to send off that summon... And it will definitely save it until the end. You want to surprise your opponent with that send-off just before the end of turn. So we're probably not going to see her use it yet, but it's 100% yep. coming. Yes, just hanging on to it for now. Uh, looks like we are going to see the double Oceanid summon one more point until Oceanid's burst, notably. And uh, so Fuyumi got the bird with three usages, which is pretty good. Yeah. It's actually probably one of the best Oceanid summons. Yes, I, I mean, I think it is one of the... Uh, well, are you forgetting about George? Yeah, it, it's between <laughs> it's between the bird and George. You'd think that the squirrel that does, you know, two mm -hmm. hydro damage per tick would yep. be better, but in, in the case of Ocean, it, it's better to have additional usages on your summons than exactly. it is to have a summon that does more damage. Yeah. So that's that's why bird's better in that case. <laughs> uh, very good for electro charge check. Yeah, we'll see how Fumi chooses to end her turn. Assuming uh, she uses send off, which I think is a very good idea, she has one more dice left. We might see a swap back onto Sara as the most expendable character here, uh, maybe taking the rest of that damage. If Claude can maybe snipe off Oceanid, although having already used and deployed the summons, Oceanid might be a little bit dispensable here. But Claude would need to use uh, one of his woven uh, extra dice in order to probably sweep t uh, swap to Keqing or Sara to it use another like skill. Looks like Claude is thinking about swapping. We do see the swap onto Sara. Mm -hmm. If I was Fumi here, I think I'd actually switch to Raiden uh, Sara is not a very aggressive uh, ability. I think Claude is thinking, okay, I'm going to use Sara's summon ability combined with Kale's Dendro to trigger Quicken. But the send off here is going to ruin those plans. And I think if Fuyumi swaps to Raiden to prevent another application of Electro, it's going to go very well for her. Send off coming down, and yeah. there goes Kale's burst, just like that. Zero energy, no more Dendro application unless Claude mm -hmm. swaps to Kale and builds it up again, you know? Yeah. Interesting that Fumi chose to stay on, maybe thinking that Claude didn't have the extra dice, but I think we're going to see a woven into Sarah Talon here uh, to do something at the end of turn, or even... Looks like Claude is considering two wovens into Qiqing, potentially. Well, I mean, the plan was probably woven skill, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Sarah's burst would be up, and with Kole's burst out, with the summon, it would have been great, like, yeah. great setup, but yeah. that send-off did come in and yeah. took out that summon, so... Looks like Clodo is choosing to deploy Wolf. I, I kind of like this play. Uh, you know, he's not in, under any pressure right now. Mm. He's going to take a bunch of damage at the end of this turn, but Sarah is probably there just to soak up all of the summon damage, being yes. the most expendable character. But getting those extra cards to secure both, you know, his dice fixing and uh, everything else that round. Ooh. Double Electro Resonance. Double Electro Resonance, indeed. Yeah, and we could see a I... surprise Oceanid burst, but Sarah's the most external character, so probably, ooh, not very good not dice Not very rolls. good dice on either side. I mean, two <laughs> Omni for Claude, but... You know, I'll take two Omni any day. <laughs> oh, That's, man. You could do a lot That'd worse than two Omni. Yeah, very, very bad rolls there. Luckily, has a Paimon card in hand yes. to fix, and a couple could, of options. Could probably tune some of these cards in <laughs> her hand. I mean, they're, they're uh, useful situationally but mm -hmm. looks like it may be going for the ocean ed burst here to clean out sarah here not really sure how much i like this one because again sarah is very expendable uh she's yes. kind of done most of her job and you're using up quite a few cards and your dice in order to do this you know it might be better actually to just have summoned a uh, regular... That's what I was thinking, you know, if uh, Oceanid casts a summon, has that yep. maximum energy, it's, like, threatening. You don't know what dice your opponent have, right? Exactly. And so it's it's very hard to know when Oceanid's going to use that burst if you're mm -hmm. just sitting on it. It's kind of like a mind game, like yeah, threatening yeah. your opponent with the possibility yeah, to use that burst. But. And especially if you have, you know, you can have a quick swap card at any time just to be able to jump that burst out. Because really, Sara is not a very important target here. Um... So we'll see. I mean, I think she's committed to this line already, having tuned the dice just now and the energy. You know, she's kind of maybe thinking if uh, there's any other options here. But taking that line, I think that's really the only thing you can do. You don't really want to deploy a summon now. Yeah, having, just used having used the Electro Resonance, resonance yes. kind of goes to waste. Yeah, so it's going to go for the burst. Minus nine damage. Nine. Yeah, it's a lot of overkill, unfortunately. But Evo, she's kind of committed to that line. Yeah, so Oceanid's burst gains damage with each summon on the field, which is why 
you know, she she is great in electro charge decks like this that just consistently apply damage across the board. Exactly. Um, if you're wondering why that added up even to that much, it's because we have Raiden's uh, skill here on the field. Actually, surprisingly, you know, most people don't know it does add one damage to the burst. It's a little sneaky thing. <laughs> you know, it's like kind of like the fine print at the end of a contract where <laughs> it doesn't reach you. And you know, I feel like Raiden would be the type of person to put fine print at the end just to sneak in a little bit uh, of an extra thing. No, she's not as bound by contracts as our good friends only, so. <laughs> Great she's, explanation, Blood. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, it's entirely lore accurate. You know, the characters are very much uh, perfect representations. This is a lore stream just as much as it is a news invocation stream. <laughs> it is. It's a bit of both. Uh, looks like Claude is going to be playing a silly card. Once That's more card draw. Yeah. I wonder if I can mark off my overdraw <laughs> <laughs> soon. <laughs> It might happen next round if he's not careful, but he does have that two woven. I mean, it's very easy to dump your hand when you have two wovens and a Noel quip swap. That's here. true, and also, I mean, you can use when the crane returns, which mm -hmm. is the the Shana card, whenever. And what if you guys don't know what that card does? Because it's not used very often. Basically, you put it on your character, and then after they Man, use a skill, it will swap to the next character in line, and you can use it before your turn ends, and you'll mm -hmm. stick on your character after. Actually, yeah. So. Um, it's not one of those that will end with the round. Yeah, and not using it quite just yet. One of the positions I like uh, from Fumi here is that uh, she managed to have an ocean and survive on one health, one HP. which is actually very good because th this the deck that Claude has right now with Sarah down is going to be very inefficient at dealing that last point of damage. You know, he she, he doesn't have any electro charge to deal off field. He might probably rely on a keyching burst uh, at some point in order to finish. Interesting that we see the swap here. I would have expected. I would have expected to end on Oceanid with Cathedral going up. Um, I mean, Ocean if you stay on Oceanid, it probably goes down. Um, yes. Although what you could have... No, no, a summon wouldn't have made sense there. I think a swap swap is good. You want to keep Oceanid around. You might swap back into Oceanid uh, at the end of the round or on a future turn to make Claude waste a skill in killing uh, kill him. And also... That, that's what I was thinking. Like, um... Except it would have happened this round. Mm -hmm. If if she had ended on Oceanid, you know, uh, Claudia would have had to either end with mm -hmm. ramp or something or waste a skill on that one HP Oceanid. So, I yeah. mean, whether it happens this round or next round, um, it, it's still an option, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Claudia's deck doesn't have any way to apply piercing damage across the board. So, well, except, except for Kitching Burst. Kitching yes, burst, yeah. burst. That that would be one way. Yeah, we are seeing a swap into color. Hey, this makes sense given Rhinon has that Electro Aura. Yes. So this is the best way to deal damage. Still interesting to see what Fuyumi is going to do. I'm still 100% sure how her deck is is made uh, to work. So Cathedral going down. Mm -hmm. And we might even, yeah, that, that that's actually not a bad play at all. We see uh, Electro Resonance coming out. Raiden's Burst is ready. Next turn. So. Yeah, interesting that, you know, Raiden's Burst is going to charge up uh, both Sara and Oceanid Talons, but Oceanid being so low may not get able to use her burst unless Fumi draws another energy card. So that could be a surprise card uh, at the end here. We'll see. Raiden's Burst does have one charge uh, on the passive, so it should do five damage uh, coming out next turn, which whatever character Claude ends on is going to die um, unless he can finish off Fuyumi here uh, with the Raider, but I don't think he has the cards in hand to do it. He does have Adeptus. Uh, Temptation, but he does not have the energy to do a burst. So we might just see, oh, and his dice aren't very good. We might just yeah, see some tuning tune into Sign mm -hmm. I think that's all you can really do here. Yeah, right? you probably tune Lisio because it's not going to be useful anymore. So, I mean, the thing is, you know, uh, Kalei falls, right? But the, if, uh, you know, there's Electro applied on the right and already, if Kalei is able to get off um, her skill, it will trigger quicken mm -hmm. it will trigger so, quicken but they'll then all the elemental auras will be gone from the other team yes and then that's when healing like for cathedral will really start catching up so claude is thinking carefully i think he's thinking if he wants to use that Kale talent card it it probably won't come up anymore so he probably shouldn't use it at this tuning, point oh he is actually going to the use wolven. it yeah I'm not sure. I probably would have tuned the quick swap there because he's, he's yeah, I would have, about to go down. Yeah, Kale, Kale's about to go down, so I definitely agree. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, if Claude has maybe miscalculated uh, some of the... Ugh, one damage short. Yeah. I wonder if he either miscalculated how much damage those summons are going to do because um, that quick swap isn't going to come into play at all. And Raiden being on one... I mean, one? Fuyumi's in a very tenuous position because both two of her characters two. are on one health. But again, you know, you can't always split up your damage equally. And so you have to deal damage in increments of three. And which means it takes a whole turn to kill off Ooh. Ocean in here. Oh, quick swap. I could be kind of useful. 
It could be, it could be. It really comes down to kind of how the dice rolls uh, pan out for both sides now. If if Claude has to tune any number of dice, oh, got pretty lucky there. Yeah, if he had to tune any number of dice, this round probably would not have gone well for him because he's really low on cards. I mean, I think the unfortunate thing is that Claude tuned uh, Woven. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, that could have really made a difference this round. Yeah, I think when he realizes, I mean, we're almost certainly going to see... Right in burst, and yeah, Kali will given, fall, yes. Yeah, so that, cool that uh, I haven't, yeah, that's a Noel quick swap card isn't going to come into play at all. But Kishin's still on a very healthy life total. Uh, you know, Fuyumi doesn't have any dice ramping cards uh, to kind of turbo out at this turn, so Kishin shouldn't die this turn. Uh, Fuyumi just drew I haven't lost yet as oh, well, yeah. so I mean Raiden could fall here to Kuching and I mean... I mean Raiden's definitely going to go down to Kiching. Um I don't think there's any other play that you would uh, make here uh, aside from a Kiching skill. Um, I think what you're, you're, you're hoping to do is Kiching skill... Into burst, electro resonance Yeah, into electro right? resonance burst. I think that is perfectly eight dice and you're hoping that um, your opponent here switches into Sara. Yeah. Because there would be just KO, right? Exactly, yeah. So. And pre-proccing the Quicken here, notably the Quicken is important in order to get the extra two points of damage. Fuyumi needs to go to yeah, Oshin. And, and that's this what is the she right does. Play. That's what she does. Brilliant play there. Seeing the threat of the Stellar, uh, sorry, or the Burst out of Kiching. I haven't lost yet coming in for Ocean of Burst. It won't do quite enough damage, but I mean, minus four, four damage is four damage, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still very respectable once someone is enough, and really, you know, you're just trying to uh, prolong the game a little bit. You still have the Fomonius Cathedral up in order to uh, finish the game. Sara isn't the best character to finish on, so Claude still has a chance if he can use his food effectively this turn. I think I would have liked to see him use Ito. the Lotus Crisp. No, uh, well, uh, Ito is, I don't, did, wait, Koli, did Koli, Koli, this Koli fell this turn, right? At the beginning of this turn to right and burst. Oh yeah, that's so true. So we, we should see, see Ito. Ito. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to see Ito into burst. I don't, you could, mm, yeah, that would probably be the best play. I don't think normal attack here makes you sense. You need a Lotus. I think you need a Lotus on Kuching. You do. I. Yeah, luckily the Ito is going to, uh, allow, give him that extra dice to do two skills this turn, but he doesn't have enough to do burst and a normal attack, so he might just go for a normal attack into a Stellar Restoration um, skill and then save the burst for next turn, but that might be too late. Yeah, I, I'm a bit concerned. Sara's burst is up. I mean, Fuyumi's at two dice. So Fuyumi's at two dice, so Fuyumi's she won't be able to deploy any other skills either. So I think Claude is thinking about that, you know, what are the chances my opponent has another I haven't lost yet or has an extra dice. Um, that Favonis Cathedral, though, might come in very clutch. Especially if Fuyumi draws any sort of healing um, on her next turn. I don't think she can do anything. She just has to end turn. Uh, is going to be able to go first uh, with Keqing down on two health. Uh, you know, Claude isn't going to have a chance to deploy Lotus Crisp. He might actually just use it this turn to prevent that last point of damage. Because if he doesn't I think he just loses immediately at the start of next turn. Yeah, I think I think Lotus is the best thing to do here too. Yeah, Lotus puts you down, uh, prevents the damage from the summon, puts you down, uh, leaves you at three, and then Sara I think can only do two damage with that electric yep. charge. Uh, think about it, think about it. Because I mean <laughs> the thing is, if you don't play Lotus here, then Kuching takes minus one from the bird. Yeah. And Fuyumi goes first yes. as she ended first, so it would just be over. I mean, electric yes. charge does an extra point of damage on yep. a pitching and just... Yeah, one of the things that Claude, you know, if he had had that woven this turn, and yep. if that uh, Noah Quick yep. card wasn't there, he would have been able to both deploy Lotus Crisp and also use a uh, skill at a keychain for three extra damage. I think that's going to make the difference in this game. You know, tuning the wrong card sometimes at a capable moment can be all the difference. Yep. And it looks like, I think, Fuyumi, assuming she can survive, although Claudia does have Adeptus, so that might actually change the math significantly. It depends if Fuyumi can end right now. I mean, Sarah's burst is up. I think Sarah's burst, I, I, I don't, we, we don't see Sarah too much. I can't remember if her burst is two or one damage. If it's only one damage, that's actually not going to be enough. Yeah, so it's, it's only, only one. one damage that's left. one of the reasons Sarah is not a very popular choice, is that she's not very good at front-loading that damage. Yes. And 
I think this is actually going to Claude. It looks very close. Oh, but this is so close. Yeah, but that, that Adeptus <laughs> Burst is exactly why you have that card in your deck. It's going to go down. Three extra burst damage. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to tune that I haven't lost yet. For I think this is eight damage burst going on to Sarah. Down on to Sarah. It's so unfortunate. We got the one each We got the one each win. win. Oh, my God. Win. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations to Claude. Congratulations Claudia, to Claude. Indeed. Mm -hmm. That was well played from both yeah. sides. That was really yeah. well played. I especially liked how Fuyumi knew Kuching's burst. That that was what Claude had to build to, yeah. to win. And so she made it a point to not keep Sara as her active character yeah. in case that Adeptus burst. Yeah. It, it was honestly really well played across the board and just... Mm -hmm. And Incredible. definitely one of the weaknesses I think of Sarah is that, as you said at the end, she's not a very good character to finish on. And we saw on Claude's side, both sides were using Sarah, but on Claude's side, you know, Sarah deployed some of her skills and then uh, was basically sacrificed. Yes. <laughs> In the name of the greater good, the uh, fueling Ito, uh, the I haven't lost yet card, things like that. Um, but on the other side, being Sarah had the last character out, she can't really fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Keqing, even without the adaptive burst. I mean, that did make the difference in the end, but you have to expect that your opponents have some of these cards. And it looks like we're going back to see some highlights from yes. previous games. So... I'm happy. I will get to see... Uh, I guess Yomi is already down, but we get to see Sino here doing a bunch of damage. I'm taking the first <laughs> win, Kaito against Vesta. Mm -hmm. And then... This is game two from Kaito versus yeah, Vesta. This is game two. It's yeah, Yoshid we saw. Yoshid versus mm -hmm. uh, Chongyun, Bennett, and Melt. Yeah, that, that lone Pyro Hila, uh, Hila child doing so much work. You know, very underappreciated. Uh, those mm -hmm. workers there, you know, we Zhongli is being all flashy on the front, but if you look <laughs> at that Pyro uh that you got to watch out for, he did all the work. Abyssal summons. I mean, that's why you take a lot of troll in that deck. It is. Right? It so, is. Yes. It is a, such a good card. Very, very good deck. Very strong deck right now. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is the uh, this third is game match. three. Yes, this is game three. And this is uh, where really Vesta kind of took it a very close game there. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah, there. and Kaito, Kaito's poor dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dice difference. Yeah, I think definitely if you watch back through that match, you will see how much he struggled with the dice. It's very easy to overlook, but that does matter. Um, and that can decide games. You know, yep. it's not only just the skill to play sometimes, unfortunately. And then this is <laughs> game two. We didn't get to see game we didn't one get there. To see there. Uh, yeah, but. Before you meet clinched that win, and then oh, th this match was so fun to watch. It really was. It was really like, fun. This is normally why you would take Fischl instead of Sara, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yep. Because, you know, if you get Fischl's burst up, it's going to do a lot more than right. Sara's, right? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, yeah defi it's definitely, unfortunate. definitely, you know, I think... Um, Putting Sara out more at the beginning and sacrificing her early on might have been better, so you can end on Raiden. Although Raiden's also not a very good character. She's also not good for front loading. Yeah. No, none of those cards are. Yeah. None of those cards are. Um, <laughs> so it looks Here we like have our brackets. Yeah. Uh, so we have Vesta winning 2-1 against Kaito, Binzu with the buy there, Fufu, as we discussed, 2-0, and then Fuyumi losing 2-1 to one, uh, to Clode. So we have Vesta Binzu as our semifinals uh, 1, and Fufu Clode as semifinals 2. Let me see. So... I'm Vesta. really excited to see Claude advance because he can't... I, I want to see some of his crazy decks. And looks like uh, we're about to throw back to our stage, so take it away to the main stage. Yeah, thank you so much. Maybe. Maybe. Soon. choosing Comania Express. Anything you need delivered? Uh, rest assured, there's no destination I can't deliver to. Hmm, I wonder what's inside this package. Uh, no, no, no. No peeking at my customer's stuff. Ooh, maybe I could curl up inside this box. I'm out of time! An 
told me that those who don't work can't fit into human society. I... I'm not going back to the boonies. Even if it means I get to be a great yokai or whatever.
Welcome back, travelers. You have returned to the Astra Carnival, the Prince Cup Invitational EU Finals, baby. And we have been having a ball so far. In fact, it has been fun for us to watch, but we had to say goodbye to a few of our competitors already. Thank you so much to 2LGG and uh, Kayato and Fuyumi for your fantastic participation. But uh, with three competitors eliminated, we are down to four as we enter the semi-final stage of our fantastic tournament. Two more matches, and then you're off to the grand finals to see which are the best decks and who are the best players in all of Genius Invocation TCG. What a journey it has been. Very close game so far, and absolutely incredible decks coming your way here. I'm sure Prince is very proud as we we do everything, of course, for our wonderful dual saint of cats. Thank you so much, Prince, for having us here. It's an honor to fight in your name. Thank you. But uh, absolutely, it looks like we are ready to welcome our first player to the stage. Coming up from a extremely close series, barely clawing his way in with a fantastic joggly, it is Vesta. Let's welcome Vesta to the stage. Vesta. Unbelievable, barely made it through, but that die were definitely in his favor. Luck, maybe on his side, but skill, absolutely on his side as well. Welcome to the stage, Vesta, once again. So good to have you, an absolutely fantastic performance. But he is not the only one that will be joining us. In fact, for their first joining us on the stage, we have Binzu. Benzu, able to watch, got a bye, and is here to face off against Vesta. I think these two know each other very, very well, and we will see who will be the best in all of EU, because one of these two is going home now. Vesta, or, sorry, sorry, Benzu, how are you feeling? You got to watch the entire series. What do you think about your boy Vesta over here? Yeah, uh, it was a really close game, so I'm hoping we'll have some close and fun games too now. Oh, hoping for close and fun games. And you must be hoping to destroy him. No, I'm kidding. Right. What do you think about Binzu? I think, uh, well, we didn't see him in the first round, but he certainly is a very strong opponent. And I think it's time to do it. Let's do this. All right, let's do it then. Fantastic. Well, guys, I would like you, if you could please, in a show of competitive spirit, a handshake, if you will, before we get into it. There we go. And off to your battle stations. Get ready for this incredible game. Somebody will be going home. But by the way, if you are watching and enjoying this show, go ahead and uh, check out the QR code. Give us a scan. Let us know how you're doing. And hopefully, you will give us some great feedback so we can keep bringing some more fantastic TCG action your way. But besides that QR code, besides that little scan, we can get you into the semifinal match. Keep your eyes on the prize, ladies and gentlemen, because we are about to throw down as I throw to our casters. Awesome, thank you so much again, Slacks. Really excited for this first semifinal between Avesta and Binzu. We haven't yeah. seen Binzu play yet. No, not yet, but he's bringing some very strong decks, you know. Um Probably what people would consider some of the five best decks right now in the yes. format. Obviously, bands are going to come into play here a little bit to throw a wrench in his plans, but should he can play all those decks well, he's in a really good spot. Yeah, and I mean, Vesta acknowledged Binzu as a tough opponent already, mm -hmm. so I guess Binzu's record precedes him <laughs> even before this tournament. Yeah. Uh, so Binzu brought Shenamo, which is Shana Sucrose Shao. Um, Oh, oh, we Which get to actually like, see them yeah, on the screen here. Is available, so not yes, banned. Yes, is available. So it looks like Geo Oceanid got banned uh, on Binzu's side. Yes, uh, Geo Oceanid was banned, and also the Superconduct Super build, Conduct Chong. Razor Chongyun Raiden was banned. Yeah, as it looks for like the same ban actually went uh, out on Vesta's side as well, who also yes. bought the same deck, but it was also banned. So both of the players thinking that deck is very good and choosing not to play against it. I see. Uh, Hu Tao Mona. Bennett Vape mm -hmm. deck made it through. Uh, we have Yae Quicken, already familiar with that. And then we have another iteration of Shinemo mm -hmm. uh, with Jean and Venti. Yeah, and Bested opted, opted not to use that deck. One of the cool things I want to point out, uh, in both the Bennett and the Jean decks, he is running two copies of Aquila Favona uh, in each of those decks. If you don't know, that's the card that once equipped will not you deal an extra damage, but also heal you every time someone uses a skill against you. So it's a very good sustain build. Um, yes. Looks like it favors that uh, a lot, and also running copies of Adventurer's Bandana, another healing card on normal attacks. Yeah, normal really attacks. Cool tech. When you use normal attack, you heal plus one, and then Aquila Favonia is when an enemy uses a skill mm -hmm. and your character's active is plus one. It, very interesting 
Yeah. Very interesting, I think. Yeah, and looks like we maybe. I think this means we're going to see uh, Binzu choosing the Shenamo deck uh, right off to start up. Uh, Immediately, very... I see Sucrose's talent card there, right? Yeah, You're yeah. a fan of that one. Yeah, Sucrose talent card. I think it's almost essential uh, in this build. Um, it really, you know. Uh, send off has kind of fallen out of favor. One of the big weaknesses of the previous iteration was that you would send off Sucrose's talent yes. um, and her burst. But without without falling out of favor, it's a very strong choice right now. It surprisingly piles on the damage very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, despite being a swell deck. Like when you're being battered around by Sucrose, you just suddenly wake up to find out you have all this damage on your characters and you don't know quite know where it came from. That's kind of how the deck plays. Um, Really looking forward to Binzu kind of showing me how it's uh, the, the right way to play that deck. I know he's been so interested in how this deck works. Yeah. I mean, Blep is used to playing double animal that control one, with mm -hmm. Mona, right? Yeah, and the old so, school iteration with Mona and Jean. So that one's more focused on actually controlling your opponent. Uh, Sucrose and Jean can throw mm -hmm. your characters left or right. It looks like we're getting into a match already. Okay. Ooh, I see Adventure's Bandana Double Ito already. being be being discarded. Goodbye, Double Ito. Don't need it at the beginning of your hand, right? Yeah, unless so, if your opponent has a particularly aggressive vape deck, I would could see uh, keeping it. Which, which it does. yeah, <laughs> interestingly enough, I, I you know maybe opting to really prioritize that sucrose talent. Um, you know, assuming since the deck lists are open, you will actually know whether or not your opponent has send off in the deck, which is actually very key. If they don't, and you draw that sucrose talent. Rushing it is is basically swing is going to be the best way to swing the game in your favor. Yes. Uh, but both decks actually surprisingly fast, uh, despite you know double enemy not seeming that way. Good dice on both sides, I believe. Yeah, Binzu has an excellent dice roll there. Only two Ooh. unusable dice there. It's going to go right into the treasure ceiling. And we see Vesta there with a pretty decent hand. Has some dice fixes. He does have send off. So Binzu probably, if he knows about Sendoff, may not even use the Sucrose talent uh, pretty, or rush for that uh, burst. Pretty standard start with mm -hmm. uh, Shona's skill, and then most likely we will see a swap to Sucrose to swirl uh, the Cryo onto uh, Hutan Bennett. Uh, we'll see if Vesta avoids the swirl by switching off of Mona. Yeah, against the Double Nemo deck, going second is actually a huge liability because you can see here Binzu is using Quick Swap using to make quick sure, swap. confirming mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and also denying his opponent the quick swap off of Mona and forcing him onto Hu Tao, which yes. actually is not desirable. I think in this matchup you, you do want to deploy. Yes. Yeah, you want to deploy the Bennett burst. Hu Tao's kind of your backup Khan. Um, you know, when you first fight against decks like Sucrose, it's very tempting to try and fight the automatic switching. But we can see here Vesta there letting the switch happen using that free using swap, skill, yes. mm -hmm, essentially to have that Hu Tao uh, skill uh, ready for next turn. And looks like Vesta will be using the Woven here and going for uh, some Pyro application onto Sucrose. And Mona's uh, summon there is going mm -hmm. to apply Vape at the end. Timmy comes down, turn ends. Yeah, very aggressive start there out of Vesta. You know, unfortunately not able to get the charged attack uh, from Hu Tao, not having an even number of dice. I think if he, if he had the option and, and had one of the food cards to do that, that would have been a very critical turn because it would have put Sucrose down at three already and, and in range of being killed. Well, Vesta drew some sustain. So, I mean, in the end, actually swapping over to Hu Tao yep. worked in his favor. Uh, Adventure's bandana being drawn, also mushroom pizza. Yeah, we might actually see Adventure's bandana being deployed there. If you can stay on one character without elements, and uh, uh, it's actually like. very hard as the Swell deck to fight against that. So I think we're gonna see Vesta swap back onto Hu Tao being, oh no, being the only character without application. He's thinking about it. He's like, definitely stay thinking Bennett? about it, but I mean, I think we're going to see... Uh... Hmm. Yeah, almost certainly going to be the swap to Hu Tao. You know, having played the double emo deck, there's nothing more annoying than uh, after you get to full energy on Sucrose, swapping back onto the character without energy. Because you only have so many fast swaps in this deck, and you really, really need to use Swell, or else you can't keep up in damage. I'm wondering if uh, Binzu's going to go for a Sucrose Burst here, or if we're going to see a swap back to Shanna for her skill. Um, Binzu does have, does use the Paimon for double Omni, and then also has two toss-ups in hand. That's actually <laughs> really great for avoiding uh, bad what dice rolls. Turn. Yes. Yeah, what we're probably going to see from Binzu here is going to be just a skill. Yep, yeah. and he's going to see if Vesta chooses uh, to swap back onto Hu Tao, which he probably won't do because that would put that Hu Tao would be very tragic. Range. And also, the thing is, if you know the swap back does happen, Vinzu is deceivingly sitting on two dice, but has a woven in mm -hmm. hand. So uh, Hu Tao would be in lethal range. Would not be smart to swap back to her right now. Yeah, but you know, Hu Tao may not be the most important one. Looks like yeah, gonna stay on Bennett, but this might give Vinzu an opening to deploy the Sucrose first. Ooh, oh, double, double Akila. 
It could be a little bit... I don't think uh, you have time uh, in this matchup to deploy a Quill of Favona. I've fallen into that trap many times. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like a very good card, but uh, if your characters die before you get to trigger it one or two times, then you're actually really down on dice. So we might not see Vesta actually choose to use Aquila in this matchup specifically. Or it looks like he's hovering over it. Might be worth it for him at least, I mean... Yeah, maybe after the swap to Shenha, this makes a lot more sense. Adventurer's Bandana also going down, and then I think Vesta... Vanarana instead, maybe? Probably Vanarana is better, yeah, because you can save the Adventurer's Bandana for a surprise on a future turn. There's no reason to use it here now. Also, you know, uh, it's a Pyrodyne being carried over, which uh -huh. is very useful, especially if you don't have a lot of dice fixers in hand. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, interesting, Binzu. Okay, so choosing to use the Shenhei skill there because he's used up all of the stat, uh, the charges already on Swells. Uh, Vesta's team is very low. That Hu Tao is going to die to a Swell. If Binzu can draw a quick swap, um, I think that's going to be pretty key. He does not get it. But, but Binzu has double Ito again, despite discarding it in the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe, maybe something he would want to do is let the character fall and then... Mm -hmm. He can choose who to swap to and... Yeah, sacrificing Sucrose here probably is a fine play. Again, he may not be looking to Sucrose burst anyway because he knows about Sendoff. And I, I think Vest is still holding on to it in his hand. So he might just be playing around Sendoff here uh, by not using Sucrose burst at all. Because if it does get sent off, it's a very inefficient use of your dice and your energy. So you're better off not using it entirely. Oh, Pyro Res would be so good here for Vesta. Yeah, yeah, but... You know, Bennett with Aquila is going to be tricky. One thing that you can do in this, so the way Aquila works is you only get the healing if after the skill is used, you end on the same character. So the trick you can use, especially with characters like Sucrose, is if you swirl them and move them off of Bennett, uh, they actually don't get the heal. Shana's burst is uh, coming out, and I think mm -hmm. we're going to see Shana fall here. I wonder if we'll even see swap to Xiao and then his burst instead of to Sucrose. What do you think? Uh, with double, yeah, with the double Ito card, it might be coming up, but the Bennett Burst coming down with Aquila makes me kind of want to use Sucrosia just to... Shao, Shao immediately coming out. Okay. I, I do agree. Like, I, I think you could have played Sucrose as a line here. Mm -hmm. Um, the Swirl would have been deadly on the Hu Tao, right? So... Yeah, I mean, this will kill the Hu Tao anyway. Um, I think the Lee will leave the Mona on one, unfortunately, but it's gonna go down to another Oh, man, player. minus three across the board. Mona is at one HP right now. Yeah, but we could see a send-off, uh with maybe some tuning going off on that uh, uh, Shenhei skill. I think that's a good time to use it. That denies all other cryo application uh, on Bennett. And if you can keep Bennett alive in the next turn and going first, you do get the extra heal. I think we're gonna see Binzu tune two cards just to get that send off because I think it's very key. Yeah, I think I think uh, Vesta doesn't really need the second no, Vanarana, right? So really I, I think sending off uh, Yep. Shenha's burst is the thing to do here. Yeah, and this is this is a really critical play here. You know, I think he needs to do this in order to stay in the game. He's still very open to another Xiao skill here. We might just see, yeah, four damage. Oh, it's so painful. Both characters at one HP. I don't know if that burst is going to be enough. Uh, really, well, so, really fast game. So if uh, Bennett, so if he can draw a Lotus Crisp here to protect Bennett uh, with the adventure, oh, and he does with the Adventures of Bandana, he can get Bennett up to five health with a Lotus Crisp off the Lotus Crisp, Adventures Bandana, yep. Bennett burst, mm -hmm. it all stacks, and then also the plus one from the pizza. So. Yep. Uh, Actually, that's gonna be actually a very good turn fester because it's gonna be two Kilo, normal attacks. Kilo Favonia as well on that Bennett. Yes, exactly. Um, although if if uh, Binzu can uh, use Sucrose enough, then we might be able to keep those Aquila Favonia stacks off. But yeah, he's gonna be very surprised by I'm sure by this adventurous <laughs> bandana here. Plus three health coming in for Bennett. Yeah, and the damage is gonna add up very Plus quickly one? here. You know, those Plus normal two. attacks will start doing a ton of damage. Um, and very dice efficient too, requiring only one pyro, and he has one more up his sleeve. So Binzu calculating now whether he can win toss up coming in. with three. Very bad dice right now for Binzu. Thankfully, yeah. he has toss-up right now. Yeah, I think he might have enough if he can get his dice rolls in line, because what he can do, he probably wants to wait a turn, uh, otherwise and not expose Sucrose, and just stay on Xiao, and then, uh, yeah, so he's... Use the elemental skill on Xiao, knock off that thing, and then do a plunging attack because that burst is still up. <laughs> the, the minus one instantly negated oh, yeah, yeah. by Aquila Favonia. Mm -hmm. So Vesta here using up all of his dice here. I think Binzu Another really... plus one, another plus two. Yep. Oh, the heals are stacking. But I think 
Binzu might actually have enough damage to kill Bennett here between if he can use a shell plunging attack. Not a yeah. Okay, he's, he's gonna burst. use the burst yet again. Yeah, actually, burst into skill here definitely kills Bennett Minus here. Minus five plus one to Aquila. <laughs> yep, four near damage. He's got it down perfectly. Oh, here we go. Interesting choice. Oh, that's actually a really good play there. Using changing shifts, uh, you know, Vesto is down to zero dice, and I think Binzu thought he had the entire turn, but this swap actually changes everything. You know, though, Binzu could play Liban and end first. Binzu could, that probably is his, that, well, even if you do that, though, you will still... Vanarana, Vanarana is going to take the two dice. It doesn't actually work that way, huh? So... Okay. Um... I, he's probably, I mean, with those two dice, he might just hash brown here. So the problem um, now that Binzu is facing is if he actually kills Mona, what ends up happening... <laughs> you see what he said? He realized the same thing we did. You played yep. Liban, but the thing is, the two dice are going to go to Vanarana first because it's first in line, and yep. Liban's not going to see those dice. He even uses a hash brown on Shao to heal him, so Liban's useless. Absolutely yep. useless there. And one of the things <laughs> one of the things to note here, with Mona kind of taking the field, if you kill Mona and it swaps into Bennett uh, <laughs> after that kill, you actually trigger Aquila for Vona. So there's an extra point of healing there. And his burst is ready to back up. You know, Anima has a really hard time uh, fighting against decks uh, when they're down to just one or two characters because you don't get any of that swell damage there. Xiao helps a little bit uh, because he has so much uh, single target damage. But, you know, Bennett, it's still very decked out. I think also the problem is that, you know, Shen have fell. So there's no more cryo application coming from Binzu unless Ooh. you have that swirl, which we do because Mona's the active character. Yeah, swirl we do get one swirl on here. I mean, it, it's not going to matter because swirl doesn't do any act, uh, additional damage to the active character. And you can see yes. that Quillip proc there. That gambler's draw is actually huge because that's going to give him. Tuning pyro. Oh man, look at Vesta's dice. Yeah, they're not very good. He's down. I mean, it might just be enough. I think you have to Bennett burst here. Pizza coming out for another plus yeah. one. Actually, he has the perfect amount of dice to Bennett burst, tune into normal no, attack. Not. Yes, which, you know, Adventure's Bandana might, might be enough to keep alive. And also that cryo application, I mean, it's useless now. Yeah, and it's going to go away. Xiao is going to die to rail attack, but looks like, yeah, he's playing the Tandoori Chicken. That's going to be five damage. So he's going to put Bennett down Minus six, six damage. Plus down one to, to, to one. A tune. I don't think that's enough. Tuning changes. Bennett's, yeah, Bennett's going to attack. Uh, Normal Xiao's gone. Actually, hang on. Does Sucre, so Sucrose, no, there's no element to swell here. Sucrose is one, one short. Plus two. Bennett there, soloing that entire team. Man, wow. Adventure's Bandana <laughs> coming out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Did hidden tech anything? there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think Binzu has a choice here. I mean, I think he's hoping to draw a Lotus Crest, but he can't fight nope. through nope, the nothing. Aquila Favona. Nope. You know, Sucrose is not a good last character uh, to do that. You really want Xiao, but Xiao just couldn't do enough damage. And I think we're going to see Vesta take away that first game in a very close match. You know, it really... It was a very close match. And, like, I, I feel like... I feel like drawing those cards to stack Bennett up is really what... Mm -hmm. Solidified this win for Vesta, right? Yeah. Because um, Binzu was in such a good position before. He was, he was. I, I think... So one of the problems as well with this Double Nemo deck, if your opponent knows how to play against it... And this is one of the things I'm talking about, you know, bringing decks that people are used to. If you play yes, your, you your swaps correctly against a Double Nemo deck, mm -hmm. It's very easy to dodge their swells, and most of the damage does come from that swell. So, a uh, very good job from Vesta. Very a good, very good play. job from Vesta. Uh, I mean, both addition. players played really well. I exactly. Think. Yeah. Uh, it, it was those heals were overwhelming, and mm -hmm. got them off so quickly. I mean, this meta is really fast. The Shenmo deck really picked up so quickly. Yeah. And. The, just, he was just able to get yeah. everything he needed for it. So. I think the key card there was definitely send off. Uh, I think having that send off for the Shenhei burst, uh, you know, you saw how close that game was. Bennett was maybe down to one or two health. In fact, one of the things, the Mona being on one health, if that Shenhei burst had stuck, the you know, swell would have been enough yes, yes. to kill Mona there. And having that extra Mona uh, kind of uh, shield uh, mm -hmm. at the end there made all the difference for Bennett there, made it very awkward for Binzu. You know, I think he wasn't playing around that changing shifts there. He was expecting his opponent to be forced to stay on Bennett, and, and he thought he had the kill on Bennett there. But, you know, really good play there uh, by Vesta at the end to get around the opponent's game plan. And, I mean, Vinzu hasn't had a chance to play yeah. today. This might be a warm-up match for this him. It might be. Uh, first, first game of this best of three is 
going to Vesta. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Vesta can't uh, uh, probably can't use the same deck he, he picked already. So he's down to looks like a Chung, his Chong Yun deck is actually available, so not actually banned. And his Quicken deck, both still very strong options. Oh wait, I guess you know they chose new bands, right? So um, oh, looks like looks like the. Um, like between the quarterfinals and the semifinals, they chose mm -hmm. new bands. So it looks like the Chongyun Razor yeah. Raiden deck made Back it through. Back on the table, okay. Yes. So. so it looks like we can see see them getting to the game now. We'll hopefully switch over to the seat. We can see. What, I, I think I see Nahida there. We're watching from above. <laughs> <laughs> we are the Archons watching we are. the players from above. But here we go, diving into the game. Oh, oh my god, it's almost a mirror matchup. It's almost a mirror matchup. It's a mirror archetype matchup. We it have two is. Quicken. Yeah, I think Fischl is the stronger choice uh, for the Dendro, as well as Nahida. I um, think Nahida is really, really strong. Yeah, it might make all the difference in this matchup. That, that, so basically, you know, Fischl is a slightly stronger version than Yai, I think, and Nahida uh, is a slightly d stronger choice I than Colin. I think it's because, you know, Fischl, when she casts Oz, mm -hmm. applies Electro immediately. Yeah, With Yai, important. you don't have that. I mean, her elemental skill does have an additional usage, so it's more uh, like Electro application over time. Mm -hmm. But Fischl is just ready to do damage quicker, and I think in this meta, it is very important. Also, uh, we affectionately call this deck Quick and Chicken because <laughs> uh, you know we have Jade Plume Terrace Room here. Very rare these days, actually. Very it rare, used yeah. To be, used to be very standard in a Quick and Deck with Kole, Fischl, Jade Plume, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you didn't have that many options before, but yeah, with yeah, yeah. Tignari and, and Nahida both yes. have options now. Um, so, I mean, I wonder if we'll see double Timmy from Vesta. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, this is the best time to draw Timmy. Um, but with how fast both of these decks operate, um, you know, those Timmy's gonna come out in round three, but that's gonna be the very end. So I think Vesta has to craft a game plan around that crucial turn where those Timmy's got up, get off and try and keep Binzu off of uh, anything significant. But Binzu there, you know, doing a very good play. You know, usually your Terra Shroom, once it gets up to three stacks at the end of turn, will lose all its energy. Yes. But because of the order of how summons proc, he's going to get to keep three energy going first into the next <laughs> round. And that's actually really that's, important. That's, that's deadly. Yeah. And you'll see, and one of the things you saw in the previous round, he is uh, uh, used a quick swap, and that was to guarantee him being able to go first yep. in this round. So he's going to be able to snipe off Tignari immediately uh, with the Dendro attack yet, provided he gets the right dice. Binzu using toss up to mm -hmm. guarantee that he's <laughs> actually able to move this round. Oh Ooh. my gosh, even with toss up at four electro, that is painful. I'm so sorry, Binzu. Yeah, I mean, I'm it might still be okay. Omni. It's <laughs> enough to cast the burst, and Tignari will fall to this <laughs> minus eight damage from Jade Plume Terra Shroom. Yeah, this might be playing into that I haven't lost yet pretty significantly, though. Based on the dice, we might see. We might a see Yai, Yai, I haven't lost yet burst, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think about it. Yep. Okay, so guys, active character. Ito comes out, and we do see the burst coming on. Yeah, Minus yeah, five to Jade Plume Terrace Room. Not enough to take him out, but... There was a follow-up damage. The Sealy card also activates. Got yeah. another Sealy card. <laughs> yeah, this puts uh, Bins in an interesting position. He's probably just going to... Yeah, tune... Oh, he's going to tune two cards. That's, that's quite a lot. Losing that Adeptus Temptation... So he's Procking, sacrificing. Procking quick in there. Yeah, he's sacrificing the terror shroom there to the follow-up damage uh, from Yai. Uh, you know, there's no reason to let another character take all of that damage. I think we'll see official come out. Yes. yes. Yeah, with the three electro there, definitely going to be official. Uh, probably just going to be procking. Uh, Oz, another Oz. another Oz with those three electro dies. So. Mm -hmm. um, That's going to put them side, really low. I kind of wonder if we'll see the sumer res. I feel like Vesa does not <laughs> have the best cards in hand right now. Maybe it's just me. It's pretty decent. The food is going to come in very importantly, so we're going to see a changing shift into Kale, probably just a normal attack. Um, I don't think he wants to tune any of the cards in his hand because they're going to be. Yeah, he needs to tune two. Well, actually, Treasure Seeking Sealy might be something you can get rid of. So we might see two tunes, keeping the two foods. Yeah, he's tuning uh, Sumer Resonance instead of playing it. Uh... Deciding Ooh, which food, food. I don't think you want to keep Treasure Seeking yes. Sealy here because you're not going to really have time to deploy it next round potentially. And even if you draw your three cards, you're not going to have the dice at the end of that to use it again. So I think he would have much rather have that Hash Brown. Um, we'll see if that comes into play later. There's a character that that you know is off by about two health to staying alive. Quick that Hash Brown onto Fischl with Yai's summon. Um, honestly. 
both these players are mm -hmm. utilizing their decks very well. Yeah, Quicken doing what it does best, which is piling on damage very fast. Both uh, uh, both sides having very low characters, but those Timmies will come out. And oh I my gosh, you see Bintu's dice? <laughs> Bintu is so unlucky right now. Tried to even, you know, roll some of that Dendro Triple away Gio, yeah. and just got more back and three, three Geo, what are you going to do with that? I mean, he does, he would be able to use Nahida here. Yeah, quick swap um, mm -hmm. into Nahida probably for her five cost skill. Yeah, it's going to have to, although if she, if he uses the five cost, he's going to be left with no other plays for the turn. So he might actually True. opt to go for the three cost, followed up by one or two uh, normal attacks. Because or, I mean, what you could do too, you could do Nahida skill once and then tune for one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely could have done that. I think he's going to opt to uh, take the more considerative route and uh, uh, use the either burst here or another normal attack. Uh, but the hash bar might be pretty important. God, it's so hard. I mean... Yeah, best of playing that treasure seeking Seelie there. We'll see if this actually lasts another round. That's very, uh, very aggressive there, you know, with your opponent uh, almost having enough to kill your other Elemental characters. skill coming out of Kole, and we might see that burst soon. Um, though noticeably, Vesta sitting on two Electro Dice, one Geo, two Omni. We might, you know, with Binzu out of Dice, mm -hmm. we might see a swap back to Yai. Whoever he swaps back to is going to die to Oz at the end of turn. Uh, so let's be very careful about that. Ooh, I'm going to see an Adeptus Ooh. burst. But I mean, Kali, Kali can't eat any more food. Oh, <laughs> I think Vesta also just realizing that uh, that line not available to him. I yeah, think we're so just going to see the normal burst and then, I mean, uh, Yaya's skill. Like her summon and then the summon from Kali's burst is going to be enough to take out Nahida here. Yeah, but maybe, I'm not sure if that's what you want right now. Nahida having deployed uh, the seeds already as well as uh, the burst probably doesn't need to be alive. Um, yeah, we might just see a tune into a normal attack here. I think he would have really loved to have the the hash brown here might have made the difference there. Oh, it's going to be a triple tune into a skill. Just trying to front load as much damage as possible I onto Michelle. Falling here. But I don't... I think because Binzu goes first... No, no quick in, no quick in uh, stacks on Vesta's side right now. So it's going to be one from Yai's skill and then another three. Three, yeah. From it's gonna be one Kale short. Mm -hmm. One short. It's gonna be one short. Kale's gonna go down, and then Binzu is gonna have uh, his own quicken onto Yai. And Nah, nah he does. Uh, first is up. Like at the first <laughs> passive on official. Yeah, I mean it didn't matter because uh, Kale was already uh, very much down. I mean the, the Nahida burst only triggers uh, on a reaction, and that's so true, electro, that's electro true. won't matter. Electro, electro but that matters. is still going to be enough. You know, Binzu calculating the lines there, make, knowing that Vesta couldn't have killed him with the summons there at the end, choosing the right play. You know, I think a lot of players there would have been tempted seeing their five Dendro dice to go for the five cost. Normal attack, then. just normal <laughs> attack going in for the. The win on Vince's side, one to one in the semi-final between yeah, Binzu and up. Vesta. Quicken versus Quicken. I guess yeah, showing hey. the, the chicken version is the superior deck here. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, one of the, the key things there, I think a lot of players will be tempted to use the Nahida five cost skill there when they see their five Dendro dice, but Binzu doing a very uh, heads up play to use only the skill, knowing that he didn't have enough dice to actually make use of that five cost. And that, and I think that really swung the match in his favor. You know, if he just used a five cost skill there, he wouldn't have won the match, but having seen that line, it really made all the difference. I mean, the other thing too is, you know, Binzu was sitting on, what, two Geo and then a couple Omni, basically uh -huh. five Dendro, two Geo at that time. And so one thing you can do with Nahida, instead of using the five cost skill from Nahida, you could do three and then three mm -hmm. uh, if Just you want it. And like starting with three leaves your options open right. for that. And once you use Nahida's um, elemental skill onto a character that already has the seeds activated, uh -huh. it will spread it to your other characters anyway. Yep. So, I mean, it's basically the same thing as doing a five cost skill, except it's broken into right. two two turns and it just opens more options. You know, it's just yep. one dice extra and one turn extra. So. Yeah, and I think, but I think that that extra dice, you know, every dice counts yes. in, in TCG and, you know, you really have to plan your turns ahead and know what you're going to need before you even need them. Yes. Um, so I think that was very calculated from Binzu. You know, it I was a very good showing of both sides using the Quicken deck. That you saw the power of it, right? Like it put, mm -hmm. it put. Uh, we we saw official go down to one, and one is really the difference between, you know, 
your opponent swapping off of quicken to you know delay your quicken trigger by a turn and you know someone who doesn't know how to do that and and so like at this high level like every decision matters every swap matters and i'm really excited to see what decks the players will bring in their game three looks also, like we can see right now their options you know what Binsu gave me bingo before the shinamo <laughs> gave me bingo it looks like we're going into game three. I wonder Ooh. what decks these players chose this time. This it, is the last match Sucros of the semifinals. Talent. So Duel? it is, yeah, it is Shenomo on top. Uh, bottom is a Dendro. Probably Duel, the quicker double, deck again. Double woven. Yeah, yeah, yeah quicken Duel once again Duel. showing on Vesta side. So yeah, choosing to use the same deck. Both these decks are very fast. Mm -hmm. Both these decks are very very fast. Um, we don't have the same healing that Bennett's right showed in uh in the vape deck. Yep. So. I, I, I feel like Binzu could have an edge here. Yeah, the matchup is definitely uh, pretty favorable. We saw Binzu also throw away the Sucrose talent. Um, I, I wonder if that's because Vesta does have send off in this list. If so, it's a very heads up decision. You know, you don't want to keep a, an, on that card and rely on Sucrose if you know your opponent can just get rid of the two. Even if they don't draw it, you never know what they might draw. And, and you know, you really have to be sure about these things. Treasure Seeking Seelie coming out. I think we're going to see a... Yeah. Whoa. Double, Wait, double, double, double Sealy? Oh double my Sealy. gosh. Okay. And then, of course, Shenna's skill. Yeah, and we probably, we might even see a follow up Shenhe skill or a swap into Varanara to set up for the next you turn. No. There might be a slow swap on the Sucrose, and then Binzu will be at two dice, and it's like a mind game. And then use Maybe. the Wolven with the skill. Okay, no. Just, just using the skill. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking too hard. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, Choosing really to charge up that Shenhei burst early. Um, one of the things he doesn't have right now is a way to quick swap. So I think his plan right now is to try and trigger those treasure seeking sealies next turn after using Shenhei burst and then hoping he gets a quick swap. Because um, with quick swap, he'll be able to start swelling with that Shenhei burst up. It's going to do a tremendous amount of damage. You know, it's going to be three off fill damage. It's going to get rid of Yai very quickly. Choosing to use Sprawling Greenery. Wow. Uh, one of those woven going towards him. Noticeably, Vesta is sitting on a star signs, which could be lethal for Binzu uh, with Tignari's burst. Oh, and Adeptus. Adeptus, Adeptus well. Tignari burst with Quicken Stacks. <laughs> that is a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, I think the game might end uh, before Shenhei's burst runs out without a, a send off. So we will probably see Binzu. <laughs> oh, all those oh, animal dice. dice. Wow, we are high rolling today. We are high rolling. Yeah, well, I think he wanted Cryo, though. So, he, yeah, he's going to tune Varanara here. Probably not going to come into play uh, on this turn. He's, he really he wants to get He has to get, get rid that. of some cards anyway, because he's about to get six cards from those Seelies. Yeah. I think, you know, I think he's fine with <laughs> Shenhei so cool. dying to take Nari here, because that lets him basically do a fast swap into one of his Anemo characters. But we're going to see six cards. Six cards come in. He was already handled... Uh, he already had four in his hand. So, basically... He's at the maximum amount of cards in his hand right now. He, he calculated that. You can't go over 10. It just burns them. Yeah. So. Very well calculated. <laughs> Very <Binzu>. well calculated. <laughs> I mean, he definitely had the option of, you know, using that woven uh, before that happened to to get rid of it. So, if, But definitely remembering to keep that down. And wow, putting Shenhei down to... So, yeah, Vesta choosing not to kill Shenhei here because, again, that would actually give Binzu the free swap into one of the Nemo characters. But luckily, he drew into a Nemo resident. Yes, so he can swap anyway. Yeah, one of my favorite cards uh, in TCG. You know, it, it's both quick swap uh, and uh, the, a free swap as well. And we're definitely seeing him there. Yeah, also, into all Sucrose. those animal dice. Five animal dice. Yeah, he's got a lot to work with. Uh, I think he has one more woven, so he actually has another Sucrose squirrel. skill. And with Shenna's burst and... There's just so much damage from you. Yeah, putting on to Yae, uh, and this is what you want, because Yae is the weakest character right now, having already deployed, but we might see a star, uh, star science into Adeptus Burst. I oh, don't, not Adeptus I don't, Burst, just not regular Burst. Burst. Not enough dice for that. Um, maybe maybe if uh, Vesta still had the one woven, but I, um, I wonder. So the problem with not taking that line, uh, I think swapping into one of the other Dendro characters might be fine uh, here because you see our opponents on two dice. You do have to play around the Woven, and I think we are going to see uh, a Woven into Sucro skill again. I also think so, yes. But you see here, you know, Vesta doing the same play as before. When you're facing a Nemo opponent, and this is a really good tip for any players out there, if you're facing a Nemo deck, if you're not sure what to do, just swap to the character that doesn't have any elements on them, and it really weakens the deck significantly. But I don't yeah, think it'll yeah, matter Yeah, because you see, case. you don't see the minus three across mm -hmm. the board from uh, the Swirl, because there's no elements applied to Tignari. So, a very, very good point. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to actually see a Woven. Star Signs? Yeah, we're going to see the star, star Signs burst because his opponents are no cards. 
So it's a lot to invest into Two this buff. For the burst. But I believe doing this will no, cool. kill yeah, Sucrose because it'll put Sucrose down to two and then the uh, Tignari summon will finish her off and trigger Quicken. So this might be the best play possible here, denying that Sucrose burst, although at this point in the game, it's probably a little late to be using that anyway. Because you only want to have that trigger on early turns. And Sucrose is definitely a goner. I mean, we might see, I'm kind of wondering if we're going to see uh, OTK here. One That's one turn kill from Xiao. Mm -hmm. uh, Binzu's noticeably sitting on two gamblers here with toss-up and also some food. So I, I feel like, I, I really feel like he has everything he needs to pull that off. Yeah. Right now. Another Woven coming out as well. Vest is actually in a really tough spot. You know, both the characters dying end of turn, it means that I haven't lost yet. The Ido card isn't usable because your characters didn't die yes. during the round. So those are stuck in his hand. They're very powerful, but he would love to have those be used on Tignari instead of Kole uh, in this time. So he has the wrong characters low on health right now. And Tignari is going to really die to like a stiff breeze, so to speak. Binzu acts first. Uh, that swirl comes in to take yes. out Tignari. Gamblers giving Shao another two Omni. Yeah, so it's gonna. Uh, I it's haven't lost yet coming down. Both we're of them. See probably, Lotus Crisp. probably for yeah, Lotus Crisp and then. But Kali Burst first. without reaction isn't very strong. You know, you'd much rather have Tignari here. Um, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Shao has two more attacks. It's definitely not enough. I think Binzu just wins. Yeah, Binzu definitely wins this round, I think, even through um through the Lotus Crisp, just because, yeah, Kale can't pile on the damage fast enough. You know, if, if Kale had been able to use Adeptus and Lotus Crisp, maybe something would have happened, but losing Tignari there uh, was very key. Yeah, so, you know, it costs three to do either Xiao's uh, normal attack or skill. You want to hit through the Lotus once, and then um, his skill should do another four, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then he has Woven and uh, the skill's only going to do three because Xiao's burst is not yet up, but that Shenhei uh, summon at the end oh, yeah, is going to be able to true, do yeah. it. And Kale is already full on foods. So there's no way that she can prevent uh, that one point of damage. So I think Binzu has this. You know, Vesta's hoping that Binzu doesn't have the extra dice, but we see that woven in his hand. He's going to play it. Vesta's going to know the writing is on the wall. Elemental burst you know, He's out. doing the math right now. You can see it. That's three damage coming. Oh, actually, four damage yeah, it's already. Four. Minus four. Okay. GG Bintu! Bintu advances to the finals, actually. That was yes. our first semi-finals already down. Oh, man. What a twist! <laughs> yeah, we can see, you know, Bintu did get a buy, but he is nothing, you know, not a weak player by any means. A good handshake there, finishing it off. Oh, what a wonderful match. So, I mean... Looks like we might throw back to our MCs yeah. very soon for the play interviews, but, you know, that was very well played on both sides. Uh, I think Vesta had a very strong showing in the first show match as well as the second one. Nice so we get to there. see a lot. Thank of you so much uh, to our wonderful casters, Binzu. Holy moly, that game one was uh, looking a little, little rough there. First time on the stage there, huh? What happened in game one? A little bit of nerves? Uh, I think it was just some misplays and mm. like a little bit miscalculation. Mm. So I hope that get fixed in the finals, but I hope <laughs> it has to. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations, by the way, on making it to our finals here. Pretty exciting stuff there. Uh, I gotta admit, game two, that was the forbidden dick, the deck. That was the Electro Dendro Quicken Chicken. What gave you the uh, strength to bring out that bad boy there? Uh, I just knew it's gonna be a Quicken matchup uh. because I knew he's gonna bring Quicken, so I had three decks to choose from. Mm -hmm. And I thought the chicken variant is stronger in the matchup, so I brought it and could like could live on one HP and <laughs> win there. Yeah, it, was, uh, it got a little dicey there, if you don't mind me saying. Speaking about dice there, round three, good dice rolls, but more importantly, the six card draw, that was unbelievable. That was planned, I, I am assuming, perfectly, or it, did it just happen to luck out where you got the perfect amount of card draw? Uh, I wanted like a few quick swaps or something in my studying, <laughs> but six cards to draw are obviously also really nice. Yes, absolutely. Well, we are so uh, proud to see you make it to our grand finals. Thank you so Thank much. You. But it's time for us to find the competition here to our boy Binzu. So we are going to throw it back to the casters, have a little bit of talk about that incredible match, and we'll see you soon for the next semifinal. 
Thanks so much, Slacks. And so we're back. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about these games real quick, because, you know, now that we're in the semis, we can kind of take our time and break down what's happened in these matches. We're not bouncing back and forth like we did in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So uh, in this best of three, we saw Vesta play his Bennett vape deck once, and then Quicken, Yai yeah, Quicken twice, mm -hmm. and then Binzu played Shenamo twice and Quicken once. Yes. And we have some highlights here. Yeah, and I'm really excited, you know, I'm really happy, I guess, to finally see the, the Anima Deku in action. You were, you were really waiting for that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, not to play favorites, but, you know, Double Nemo is always going to be my pet deck. And we saw, I mean, we sort of get very much, and we, that's one of the weaknesses of the deck, is that it's very bad at fighting the, you know, big boss uh, healing uh, decks, like only Ocean did, like this Bennett uh, Favela healing deck that we saw as well. And this match, that match mm -hmm. before, was really well played by Vesta, you know, with yeah. Bennett healing, just overwhelming yeah that that's kind of the main weakness of the deck so that was a very bad matchup i'm not surprised that vessel was able to take that uh and beat the anemo deck but this quicken mirror you know like i said binzu had the slightly better cards yes, i i i think he had the better <laughs> cards he had the better characters mm -hmm. chosen i just think yeah for the mirror match definitely yeah. and that made all the difference down to one health Quicken chicken there you know the tiniest of edges can matter he did actually roll pretty bad in that so he managed to uh circumvent yep. that detriment but yeah in this game three was a very good example of how powerful the Anemo deck is. Yes, without all that healing, you know, to sustain past it, like, we see the true strength of the mm -hmm. Shenamo deck coming in with Xiao actually able to do what he does best, right? Yeah. So, and Binzu, you know, hadn't had a chance to play on stage <laughs> until the semifinal, and he comes in and goes two to one. Yeah, that that's really impressive. impressive. Yeah, <laughs> really, <Jinx>. really impressive. <laughs> Oh no, wait, I'm casting. You can't jinx me, then then you're on your own. <laughs> okay. I'm that was a bad sorry. that was the worst play I, of the I, match. I apologize. That was I'm a really terrible sorry. play, Leah. I'm sorry. That's okay. I forgive you. I'm I'm ignoring it anyway. But yeah, bit <laughs> the, the Shenamar deck, you know, it, it it's one of it sneaks up on you because, you know, it uses a lot of small passives and small damage bumps to make swells do a lot of damage and you don't think about you know how much damage swell is uh doing but i think we're gonna yeah, we're head to a break yeah, right to a break so, pretty soon so we'll, yeah thanks we'll... so much for this first semi-final we'll catch you guys yeah for round two yeah i'm excited uh i'm very excited for the next round I think definitely we'll see some wild decks i'm sure haven't, haven't seen fufu play it on stage fufu versus quade <laughs> i believe right so yeah. uh I'm gonna don't go anywhere things. don't go anywhere well go somewhere for 10 minutes and then come back <laughs>
travelers, welcome back to the Astra Carnival. Oh, we're having a good time here at the Prince Cup Invitational EU semifinals, my friends. The winner of the next match will be facing off against Binzu in the grand finals. We've had quite a journey here, and we have sent so many competitors home with only a few remaining. Three of the best players in all of EU for Genshin Impact Genius Invocation are in the building today. Hope you've been taking notes, my friends. I know I have. I have seen so many fantastic games and fantastic decks, which I will be using in my own games to defeat those horrible bots who beat me all the time. But anyway, this will be a game to watch and remember, my friends, because we have two of the best still in the building. In fact, our first competitor is the only person to hear that got a 2-0 so far. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please put your hands together for Fufu! Bring them up to the day. Yes, you, you, Boo Boo. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the stage. Unbelievable. The only domination that we've seen so far with the only 2-0. Now, we didn't get to see it on the main stage here, but we are about to see this match. Really excited for this one, Fufu. Can't wait to see how that one turns out. However, your competitor is no pushover. You see our next one, Claude E. Claude his way up from having only one HP, and now he will be clawing his way to the deck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome up, Claudie! Come on, Claudie! Come on! Up to the stage! Look at the swagger, look at the determination. Barely made it, but still here. So, before we get into this uh, match here, I mean, that was a close one. You went all the way to game three with one HP left on one of your characters. You're up against Mr. 2-0 here. How are yeah. we feeling? So, my... Last match was a little bit too close to comfort, <laughs> and seeing how I will face the only one who got a 2-0 will be no easy feat whatsoever. Okay, but okay. Nonetheless, I hope we can have a fun and exciting match against oh. each other. I'm sure it will be both fun and exciting. Now, Fufu. Whew, it's been a, a pleasure watching you so far. I've been with you watching the other competitors. You've had nothing but advice for them, <laughs> nothing but uh, judgments, if I may, about their uh, plays. How you feeling about this so far? Uh, I just got to deal the one extra damage, right? <laughs> that's, that's what's missing. That might be it. Well, are you prepared to do at least one extra damage? I will. I will try as hard as I can. Ah, well, <laughs> I do absolutely believe it. Well, having you both here is an absolute honor, and the winner of this, again, will go to the grand final. So please, a handshake if you could. Oh, there we go. The finesse, the style. To your battle stations and get ready, because we are about to fight here in the honor of Prince, the dual saint of cats. But before you go off and uh, start playing your own games, please don't forget to scan this QR code and give us a little bit of feedback on how we're doing. We love to hear from the community, and we build these shows for you. So tell us if you like it, and tell us if you are here to enjoy our semifinals. Let's go ahead and throw it over to our fantastic casters. And thank you so much again, Slax, for the introduction. Once again, I am Leah, and I'm here with... Blep. Um, Blep? Yeah, very tired from casting all these matches, but I'm really <laughs> excited to continue the, the kind of journey really? here. I, yeah. I have a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to see this match. We have not seen Fufu play yet. We know yeah. that he went 2-0 in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. but we haven't actually seen him play yet. We've seen Claude play very well. Um, I, we actually have the bands in front of us, by the way. So it looks like Claude's double geo kokomi deck was banned mm -hmm. and his uh quicken deck was banned yep meanwhile on fufu's side um oh, the it was the electro cube, cube deck uh, yeah and shenamo so and we won't shenamo. be seeing shenamo again and in fact we spoke to fufu uh during his uh after his quarterfinals match to ask him which decks he 2 would with one of them was the electro cube uh. so uh we're not going to be seeing it in action but i wonder if claude heard about that I was a little bit scared it's a very weird deck it is a very weird deck but apparently it it succeeded, you know. Yeah, it succeeded apparently it has some. I mean, like do. I said, when you bring a really unusual deck uh, that you don't know how to play against, mm -hmm. um, and your opponent knows how to play with, it's very intimidating, and it can make all the difference if you slightly make the wrong play or assume one thing about the deck that's wrong. And I wonder if that ban is just preemptively not really knowing, or just yep. knowing the deck and knowing how strong it is. Yep. 
But yeah, it's sad that we won't see Electro Cube on stream. You know, maybe we'll, slow, we'll slowly root, root for Fufu here just so we can make the finals so we can maybe see that Electro Deck Cube in action. I would love to see it on stream. I mean, it looks like Geoceanid made it through mm -hmm. for Fufu, which, you know, we saw the power of Geoceanid early on in yep. the quarterfinals. We know it's a very strong deck. I mean, while the meta favors faster decks like, you know, Chongyun uh, Melt with Bennett, mm -hmm. Or um, Quicken, Yai Quicken. Yep. I, I feel like Geocean is a very good stall deck that yeah. actually succeeds in this meta. It, it is very, very strong. One of the strongest decks right now. Yeah, so. and it's probably the best defensive deck that we have so far. You know, the, a lot of the healing double Hydro decks have fallen a little bit out of favor. Uh, and this double Geo deck, you know, proving that Rock is is, is still strong. Yes. Um, and, and Do the not power underestimate Zhongni. <laughs> Yeah, he's very strong. I mean, partly because of that new weapon, Vortex Vanquisher, a very yes. powerful weapon card, you know, kind of the linchpin of the deck, and Zhongli being the only one that can really use it effectively. Also, uh, also the new three-cost artifact. Yes, the I tenacity mean, of the Milith, yeah. What we saw earlier, we saw the two-cost helm, yes. which, I mean, it's still good. It's still good in that deck, but normally you take the three-cost card. I mean, it... It's one more dice, but it, it pays for itself immediately. It, it really almost. does pay for itself immediately. Yeah, you gotta it's wait wait small. one turn for that shield. Although if you actually take damage for that shield, you still actually get the dice. But usually you you have the extra turn. But let's jump let's, into yeah. it. We have both decks using something of a melt vape style with bit deck based around Chong Yoon. Looks like Fufu is going to throw away both gamblers and Ito pulls two Sumer cities and we haven't seen that card yet have we do you no, want to talk about it yeah the Sumer city card it's it, it's worded very strangely but basically if you have less dice than the number of cards in hand it gives you an extra dice so it's kind of like a mini Paimon card but it's very tricky to play because you have to be have a lot of dice in your hand and uh, not a lot of dice available it's gonna be tricky having two of them because you know, having to play out two from your hand isn't going to leave you with that many uh, dice left in your hand. I'm actually very surprised that uh, he did put away both copies of Gamblers. I would have thought it would have been pretty good to in this match. one, at least, yeah. especially, you know, how fast this deck gets off. I do like that Fufu takes Agent here. Agent is very good at cleaning the board um, mm -hmm. as, as an anchor for this deck. Yep. You know, the core is Bennett and Chongyun, yep. right? And then Agent will just sweep afterwards yeah and we haven't seen much of agent you know we've saw we basically saw this deck in action a few times already but with dilik instead of that yes. agent uh yes. slot Dilek you know very too. flexible last one but mm -hmm. agent i think is the stronger card here yes um so we'll see what happens here binzu really need to take time you, you need to do the math uh, on those sumeria cities guys yeah, looking to tune one of them maybe right away because having two might just be too much <laughs> Fufu going for the elemental skill, gonna mm -hmm. have uh, Chongyun's Frost Field up for the next two turns. Meanwhile, look at Claude's deck, very interesting. It's a rainbow deck, so we have Freeze, Melt, and Vape in this deck. Yeah. Also, <laughs> kind of a Easter egg, but you know, Hu Tao, Xingqiao, and Chongyun yeah. are all best friends. So. Yeah, they are the Liu Wei super friends deck. <laughs> Did this you come up with, with that? Just with now? Liu Wei Harbor as well, so you know, they can all hang out in the harbor, draw some extra cards. Uh, it's a, it seems to be pretty strong. He has some, Claude has some very interesting choices here. You see that Vermilion here after yes. one of the new things. It buffs your normal attacks by one, which also your, the Chong Yun uh, skill Chong -Yun card talent. does as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we're probably going to see him rush to Xing Chu burst, and once pretty he has that, opening. yep. Once he has that set up, switch over to Chong Yun, apply the Frost Field, then equip the artifact and start normal attacking with either Chong Yun or Hu Tao for a lot of damage. I feel like we'll see Chong Yun come out first for the for the skill, and I mean also his talent card is probably mm -hmm. gonna be played instead. I wonder if we'll see Worf here or if Claudia will put on that artifact onto a character. I think Worf is probably better. You can draw into some of your uh, dice fixing cards. You know, the equipped artifact can be done at any time, but Worf, you really want to lay down early and get those cards in your hand as quickly as possible. Yeah, but Worf does come down, so it's going to be two cards over two turns. Yeah, and Binz is having a tough choice already. Does he tune one card to go for the uh, Bennett skill for extra damage, or does he just use a normal attack and save those cards in his hand? You know, that Sumeru City, if he doesn't deploy it this turn, isn't probably going to be very useful, so he might oh. want to front load the damage. He has Paimon. He, 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 has does Paimon. Have, he does have Paimon, but I don't think you want to use the Paimon here. So using, okay, so opting to save the Sumeru City. One thing this will do is that Xingqiu is going to freeze himself with the burst, but I don't think you care about that too much. That's true. Actually, I think 
I mean, you're right, it doesn't matter, because no. after he gets his burst right. off, like, you don't need to be on him anymore. Yep. But it is, like, an added bonus. Like, when, when Sing, uh, Xing Cho casts his skill or his burst, it applies Hydro to mm -hmm. himself. So he has Cryo application on him right now, and so that burst is going to freeze him. Yep. Uh, but like you said, it doesn't actually matter too much because Claude should be looking to switch off of Xing Cho. Yes, and, and that's probably what Fufu identified here, is that that two extra damage on Xing Shu probably doesn't matter, whereas the cards that he has in his hand does. But I'm still really not sure about keeping that Sumeru City there. You know, he did tune one, but it it takes at least two turns for Sumeru City to give you back uh, the dice that uh, you invested into it. And so the later you use it, the less effective it's going to be. Ooh, you so thinking about it. Interesting. He managed healing Shinshu here, so kind of signaling that he wants to keep Shinshu alive. Or maybe he just wanted to use up one of the mushrooms, having uh, pizzas already having two. But a little bit of an unusual choice. Usually Shinshu uh, is someone you throw away once that burst is up, because you can hold on to the burst indefinitely. Um, as long as you don't use normal attacks and you can set up for the rest of the game. Well, the thing I'm thinking of too is, you know, uh, Claude oh is carrying an I haven't lost yet card in his hand. So sacrificing Xing Chou might actually be beneficial in some ways because it would yep. allow you to pick the character you want to swap to and also immediately act and use that Ito mm -hmm. card for the extra Ami and extra burst point. So yep. um, kind of interesting that he's opting for the safer route and uh, feeding Shincho some pizza, mushroom yeah. pizza. Very good, by the way. I must say, Claudin is pretty confident that he can maybe win the long game. And so the longer he can prolong the damage from his opponent, um, you know, the better. Mm -hmm. um, but that Bennett burst coming down, you know, Bennett's still at nine health is going to be a very good life total to be triggering additional points of damage. We'll see what Claude chooses to switch to. He really has the option of Chong Yun or Hu Tao. I have to imagine it goes into Chong Yun for the Frost Field. Doesn't have the greatest dice. I mean, neither mm -hmm. neither of them do. Uh, Claude isn't going to be able to do anything either. Has no woven, especially since it's a rainbow deck. There's just no woven at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, I wonder what the plan is here. Has to equip the artifact, I guess, if he doesn't want to waste. Yeah, I, and I can't. I, I can't quite remember if Sumeru City works after you've used your skill or not. But he could t uh, use the Paimon card here and then deploy Sumeru City. Um, then... Yeah, Fufu's case, so he's sitting on rainbow dice right now. Yeah. Um, it's, okay, so it's the there's Sumer a City. Yeah, Sumer there's City is the wrong wrong play here. You're not going to get your dice back from that. You might actually see him tune Sumer City, because I think the window to use that is gone. Um, so really, that's just a free a card that you don't want anymore. But I think he's debating between Bennett's skill to apply the pyro, uh, or using... Sumer City coming oh, down. Oh, he actually is playing Sumer City. Okay. Thinking against it. Yeah, he's deciding between Sumer City and uh, Bennett skill. Okay, so it looks like he's gonna probably use. Okay, uh, all right. The so Sumer yeah. City makes the thing cheaper, so he can actually use a normal attack. Now he's deciding if he tunes uh, for the skill or, or just, just a normal attack. attack. I mean, normal attack would apply Cryo, which isn't yeah. also, it's not a bad idea because you have two Pyro, you're gonna be yeah. applying Pyro I a think lot. He, yeah. You wanna save that woven, it's gonna be very important. And also that quick swap yes. as well. And as the Lotus, the Lotus they're, all, they're yeah. all very important cards, not something you exactly want to tune. So yeah. I, I don't think this, this was a good line to play, I think. I think it was. Applying the Cryo onto Chongyun yeah. and just, you know, Super City is such a useful card. Yeah, it's it's very good in, in a lot of the aggressive decks because it, 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 it up front gives you the dice very quickly. But, you know, the one thing I'm worried about is that Fufu hasn't really been able to put a ton of pressure onto Claude to execute his plan. You know, he might lose Chong Yun here at the beginning of next turn, but he does still have Hu Tao as a backup. It's one of the strengths of these uh, decks that have three different elements is you can't really kill off a single key character and leave oh. them without reactions. Oh, one turn too late. Bennett! Yeah, you can see Fufu there with a slight grimace there. I think he, he's, he's disappointed he didn't draw that Bennett talent one turn earlier because I think it really would have made a huge difference in this matchup with how low and much damage that both sides can put out. Well, I mean, we might not see any swaps. We we could see a swap back to Chong Yun for his Frost Field again. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Bennett is already one skill point to his burst and could yeah. get his burst off again, you know? He definitely could. I mean... Yeah, this might be the type of deck where you want to heal through it, but Xingqiu, if he is active, does pile on damage pretty quick. So I don't know if you're going to have time necessarily to do a second Bennett Burst, because it doesn't do a lot of damage by itself. Um, and the healing, you really need to take a couple of turns to uh, have that be worth it. So we might 
Yeah, we're going to see the layered Frostfield oh, here. Oh, uh, yeah, freezing Bennett, notably. Talent card, so instead mm -hmm. of two turns, uh, Chongyun's Frostfield will last for three turns, which is very useful in this deck considering that uh, it's a rainbow deck. There's yeah. not double cryo, there's not double hydro. Yeah. Um, we might say quick swap falls, you have no more we go. Yeah. cryo application. Uh, I mean, the field is going to stay up for the rest of the match, so yes. losing Chang here isn't big, but denying that two energy and that fast swap there, I think Claudia wasn't playing around it enough. You know, the Pyro Agent Vaporize plus uh, the uh, Bennett uh, talent there uh, field being just enough to do six damage that does open up I Haven't Lost Yet, so we could see I Haven't Lost Yet into uh, skill uh, for Hu Tao for here. For Hu Tao. I wonder on the Fu Fu side, um, so looking at his dice, he's sitting on two Dendro, one Electro, one Animal. I wonder if we're going to see uh, live in Leben has, in turn. Yeah. or if we'll see... We could see Leben and then a birth. swap. Um, yeah, we'll see. It, I think it does depend on what Claude does. I mean, the freeze here oh. does put Pirate Agent out of commission. Um, one of the the things here is that I know I might have missed it earlier, but Claude did play a uh, an artifact onto Chongyun, which is immediately lost. Yes. So he's already down uh, two dice in this matchup. Yes. And you know, we see, we've seen how close games can be. Every mm -hmm. dice matters, and when you can deny your opponents the uh, use of you know the artifacts and equipments, it it really becomes crucial. So I think Fuhu just needs to kind of play it a little bit safe and make sure that he can uh, survive the Xingqiu burst, because once that's done, I think he's in a significant advantage. I feel like, you know, I feel like Fufu's trying to decide if he applies Lotus and then leave it, or if he just leave and pass, because, like, there's no real point in... I, I don't think you Lotus here. Your opponent's on two cards, and your Pirate Agent isn't going to die this turn to two dice. Uh, so I think you deploy Lieben here just so you have that full turn uh, next turn to burst with Agent. But you know, you might be hoping to draw into Adeptus, Adeptus Temptation uh, to maybe uh, get a, a burst. Unfortunately, there is no Cryo uh, on Hu Tao right now, so it can't get in for the one-turn kill. And Bennett Burst will go away. But yeah, going to play I feel like I feel like, you know, taking Hu Tao down from 10 HP is like <laughs> less important than just getting the burst off because I think Fufu is just in a really good position right now. Like all of his characters are decently healthy above mm -hmm. half HP. Um, and there's only two more Rain Swords left. There so... are. I, actually, I think what Fufu must be thinking about now is does he need to do anything to play around? And I haven't lost yet. And he knows he killed Chongyu this turn. He must be thinking Claude has this card in his hand, so he has one extra yeah, dice still which left. Which is why you know, he could use a Lotus that round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's what he was considering about it. He's opting to save it. I think that's the right play. Um, you know, Lotus is best when it's safe for a critical turn and surprise your opponent. If your opponent sees it coming, they can just not attack. Uh, you know, if he had Lotus this turn, we probably would have seen Favonius Cathedral or uh, Artifact Equip just wasting that Lotus. So this is, the, I think, the better play. Um, playing around, I haven't lost yet. You can see Claude even... Claude is going if I haven't lost yet. It looks like he was thinking about doing Leo Su probably to try yeah. to get another Sinjo Burst up. But um, have, I haven't lost yet comes down and mm -hmm. we'll see... If he tunes cards for Hotel's Burst, what's he going to do with this? What do you think? Yeah, um, he has two options. He can equip the artifact here. I feel like it's a little bit late to make use of the artifact. I probably would have preferred just to use the Hotel skill and just set up for next turn. You know, get get set up with charged yeah. attack uh, with Chongyun. Although, since you already have the Chongyun uh, Frostfield, I don't think you can infuse two elements. And so, I think since you have that already, maybe the Hotel skill isn't the most important. But this does set it up nicely, where if Fufu... Fu chooses to burst uh, Hu Tao down to lower life, it is going to buff up uh, Hu Tao's burst. You know, putting her under six uh, activates that low life part of the burst, which we haven't seen yet. And so this really plays around kind of that pyro agent uh, opening that Fufu has set up. So we'll now, see. Now, the question is, do you think Fufu would be okay with losing agent in this case? Um, you know, I think as long as he can keep one character alive through the Xing Chu burst and Chongyun build, which is quite a lot to ask, uh, he's very much favored uh, in this matchup. And having, you know, drawing that Hash Brown and drawing the Lotus Crisp, very good. You know, he has three characters still alive, so plenty of places to put food. Look at all the Omni, by the way. Yeah, he, ha he has a very good set of I mean, t two of those were from Lieben, our boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lieben's one of those cards that has been in from the beginning of the game, and I don't think anyone's ever played useful. less than two Liebens. He's that beloved both in TCG and in the main game. There's no there's no denying it. I mean, how can you say no to that smile? And he drops in, gives us all free Prima Gem, yeah. some juicy lore exactly. information about the next region. Yeah. and goes on his way, you know? Yeah. So What's not to love? He's, he's great. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Unfortunately, Fufu. Fufu did not draw a Pyro Resonance card, which, you know, I would assume he's carrying double Pyro. Mm -hmm. uh, that would boost the Pyro damage if he did, but he does have a Quick Swap, which could be interesting if he swaps into Chong Yun for the skill and yeah. takes him by surprise. I mean, we're definitely de he's definitely deciding between, you know, the line where he uses Agent and then Quick Swaps into a Chong Yun skill, uh, but that may not be enough if Claude has a healing card, but he's going to go for this line. Your burst coming down. Yeah, Minus five on the Hu Tao. We might see Hu Tao uh, counter with her own burst and heal by two. That's probably the most efficient use of her dice right now. Oh, there's a t l late Tubby in Claudie's hand. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that uh, this deck does run Tubby, but you want to draw that in your opening hand. Tubby's showing up a little bit late right now. Uh, tubby, but... tubby can be pretty useful. Uh, two cost, and then mm -hmm. every turn you get to place a free location card. Yep. So... Uh, you want you ideally want to draw Tubby at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, kind of will use its efficiency being yeah. played this late. Yeah, we're, we're, you know what? We're not going to see Tubby deployed uh, at this point. It's very much more useful to tune it. I think Claude is really thinking: Does he want to burst or does he want a charge attack? I think a charge attack does it will freeze the pyro agent, but that might be what Fufu wants. Pyro agents already use the burst. It's not going to be that useful. Uh, anymore, you uh, might just want to go ahead and use the burst. Here. It's really unfortunate too that Hu Tao's skill isn't up yet. Yep. So, um, I mean, with Chong Yun's trust field and then yep. Hu Tao's skill, it could be, and also uh, Shinto Rain Sword yeah. it could be a really deadly combination. But yeah, I mean, I think I think the freeze is going to be more important in this matchup anyway. Um, so I think I would prefer that uh, to the extra damage from Hu Tao's skill. But yeah, going with the burst there, getting maximum efficiency out of his turns, healing up Hu Tao back up to nine, really negating that entire turn from Pyro Agent as well. You know, both sides yeah, swapping bursts that's right some, here. That's some healing. It's really unfortunate for Fufu. He's running out of time here. The timer ticking. What's he going to do? Oh, Opting last for second. A normal attack. Yeah, the normal attack there, reduced cost by the super. I think he wants to sacrifice Pyro Agent yes, here. Yes, yes. Uh, forcing, because really, Hu Tao doesn't have any way to kill Pyro Agent aside from with a regular attack. And so by staying on Pyro Agent, I think Fu is saying, you know, in order to kill this 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 guy, you have to use up one of those Shinchu stacks. And as I said, if he can weather all of those stacks uh, throughout the next couple of turns, in a really good spot. Because once those Shinchu Rain Swords go down, I think uh, there's not much else that Claude's deck is going to do. Yep. Um, and I mean, there's no there's no gamblers or anything on no. Claude's side, so there's not going to be any dice refresh. Uh, it does have a charge attack yeah. open, so it's only going to be two dice to attack with Hutal right now. But the thing is, um, if Agent falls, I get the feeling we're going to see... Oh, interesting, a swap into Xingqiu. Yeah, I think I like this play. You know, Xingqiu's not in any danger right now, although Fast Swap here is going to kill him. We might actually see a Fast Swap Gambler, uh, Chong Yun, to kill the Xingqiu. Yep, yep. Um, it's the last opportunity to use Gamblers. That is going to put him... Let's see, that should be enough dice. Oh, swap, to swap to Bennett, Bennett. instead. I think Fufu might be looking to use his burst talent card too. Yeah, trying to maybe set up another Bennett burst. That's pretty risky. Um, given how low his characters are, he is susceptible uh, to, you know... Being frozen right yeah, now. Yeah, being I frozen. Mean, the slow swap. Mm -hmm. Freeze could be a pretty big deal here. I mean, we probably will just see a normal attack uh, to bring Xin Chu up or, or a rain screen. Ooh, so that that nullifies the the, mm -hmm. the pyro application on Xin Chu. Um, does not take any damage from the vaporize. Uh, now has no elements on him. It's really interesting from Fufu's side, like if you think about it, like into this rainbow deck, you have to avoid so many different elemental reactions. Mm -hmm. It must be really hard to figure out what to do in this moment. Like I know to the audience, just kind of watching these players take their sweet time yeah. figuring out what to do, but like they really have to think or else you know, one misplay could mean the entire game when players are this mm -hmm. familiar with how the game works. Yeah, really funny. What So what Fufu just did, his timer was running out. So in order to get himself more time to think, he played a Lieben. I don't yeah. think he's uh, <laughs> looking to actually use it this turn, uh, potentially, because oh, he's yeah, eyeing it over. It resets the timer. Yeah, it does reset the timer. You know, time is a resource in these high-level matches. It really is. There's so many different lines, uh, you know, and there's lines that you, you know, we as the casters and the players don't even realize that are going through these players' heads. But it looks like Lieben is going to be active. Mm. He's potentially sacrificing Bennett here. I think he wants to go uh, I think he wants for to go first. Chong Yun. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have ah. a very hard time fighting through that Xing Chu. What we might see here Pyra. is a uh, Lotus Crisp equipped on Bennett, uh, followed by maybe a skill into Burst. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the Burst is probably going to be too late right now. 
Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure like what Fufu's plan here is. Obviously he's thinking of something. Um, oh there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Yeah. I mean it's it's gonna be important, but it's not quite gonna come up just yet, right? With the Pyro Resonance card, he probably isn't gonna go for a Bennett Burst here. But Xingqiu is very tanky, and he's gonna at least eat up some of your dice and want to do anything, so this still is pretty tough. Oh my god, it's there. The Pyro Res. Yeah, this is really, Let's really save the close. Game. You know, I think I think Fufu was maybe hoping to draw, and I haven't lost yet um, by now, because I think having that extra energy for Chong Yun uh, and the extra dice to be able to burst would be the way you kill Hu Tao. But he hasn't drawn that yet. He still has a handful of food, so I think he needs to start deploying his food immediately. You can see him kind of mousing around, making calculations of how he wants to spend his dice and what matters. It was really smart for Claude to swap to Xingqiu here and to have Xingqiu be the active character because like you don't want to blow all of your dice onto Xingqiu when Hu Tao is the threat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and this this could be a very decisive turn. There's only one turn left on Chong Yun's Frost Field, for example. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if Fufu is actually trying to bait uh, the normal attack here because normal attack will kill Bennett, uh, but then he gets a free swap into either Chong Yun or Pyro Agent, probably Chong Yun there. Um, and that leaves him with only Hu Tao, who hasn't yet charged up her skill. That's also true. Yeah, so, and that le does leave him open to, uh, you know, a, a burst out of Chong Yun. But yeah, it'll be, and Chong Yun does have gamblers already <laughs> equipped. Yeah, we're gonna see the normal attack. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the unfortunate thing here is that Rain Swords hasn't mm -hmm. applied yet. It was minus yeah. four to Bennett's uh, cryo damage only. So we, Fufu has to, decide who, who's gonna take their rain swords and yeah. i think if it's fatui agent fatui agent falls i don't know if he wants that yeah i wonder if there was a slight miscalculation there i mean it was four damage uh there was an extra one damage coming from chong yun's talent con but even then i think he would have known that it, bennett would have died to a normal attack um i think he really has to prevent that another burst so whoever he swaps to he ha i think it has to be chong yun here because pyro agent can't kill well, uh, Xingqiu, uh from two health i'm just thinking so who taught does that pyro apply to her already uh that is probably something fufu is considering um it might be okay to yeah. let chong yun stay healthy yeah i was uh, i was thinking about this line of play you know sacrificing the pyro agent to tank the rain swords killing Xingqiu here denies your opponent any bonus. reactions next turn yeah, putting on the Lotus Crisp uh, preemptively, although that probably won't... Uh, well, you have so much food that you should be just using it anyway. Yes. Gambles is already on Chong Yun, so this will refund two dice, puts him back up to five dice. And then he has a Woven in hand, so he actually has six dice this turn to use. Which now the problem, mm -hmm. by the way, is that Hu Tao's about to freeze Chong Yun. That's very much true. Yeah, with a normal attack, the freeze... That's probably... Yeah, I think Claude, that's his best line of play. He's already lined up the normal attack. It will freeze him, and then he'll have, uh, I think, go, put Chang Yun down to four. And then Fufu does get to go first next turn, but he's going to have a very inefficient dice turn. I feel so bad. Do you see all those dice? There's six dice, three of them are Omni, and he has a, it's a woven in hand, too. Like, it. Yeah. Fufu, everything's set up for Fufu, except for the fact that Chang Yun is about to be frozen. Yeah, I wonder uh. if... I wonder if that would have been a better play not to sacrifice the Pyro Agent there, just so he had another character to swap off of. Um, and uh, after Chong Yun is done, because he's going to end this turn with so few dice uh, used. Now, the good thing about this, you know, if Chong Yun survives this, mm -hmm. there's no more Rain Swords and there's no more Frost Field. It's purely Hu Tao, who does not have her skill activated. She's one point away from her burst. Um, Fufu might have the edge here if he can just go for his next round, you know? Yeah, what he's crucially missing is one extra energy on Chong Yun. He doesn't have, uh, you know, that I haven't lost yet this round. And I think that would have made the, the key difference. If he had that this mm -hmm. round, charged up the energy, you know, going first, the Chong Yun burst would have taken Hu Tan down all the way from eight. It's such a powerful burst here. But I don't think this deck has any way to generate that last energy before Claude gets a turn. So I think, I think Fufu's plan next round is to uh, just build up that last point of energy, uh, trigger the melt and then equip his own Lotus Crisp and then hope that the burst after that is going to be enough. Um, but we know that Claude has his own Lotus Crisp and I think with that, with the uh, Favonius Cathedral, is going to be put him out of range. So I think he needs to deploy Favonius Cathedral now, give himself more of a health buffer, not worry so much about Chong Yun. Oh, okay. It's Going not a shatter attack. because it's cryo damage. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. It's not okay. a shatter because it's cryo damage. Oh my gosh. 
That might not actually... Well, no, the Hutal's Burst might actually be enough here anyway. Oh, get in the Pyrus now! We don't need it! I mean, we need one of them. We need one. So that's <laughs> three, six... Yeah, I don't think that's enough, because I think the Hutal Burst is going to kill Chong Yun through... Um, through Lotus. Through Lotus. Through the Lotus, yeah. And I'm wondering if Fufu would have been better off there not actually sacrificing the Pyro Agent, just letting Chong Yun take that Hydro, and then letting Pyro Agent have another attack. But he's gonna do his best. He you is know, give us a show. Best. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, it's possible Claude rolled so bad uh, that he literally cannot use any skills. Minus One no! shot. One oh, all. Yeah. This is so painful. I mean, Claude is not. You know, has tons of cards tuned yeah. for that burst. Well, you know what they said at the beginning of the match. You know, Claude survived the last Minus round one. on one health, and Fufu he said he all he needed to do was that one extra point of damage, <laughs> and he didn't get that. He didn't get that. Oh my gosh, that's. <laughs> he predicted his own defeat there. You know, uh, just he needed to find that one point of damage, and he did not find it. You know, a lot of that was down to the cards. Again, if he had drawn that, I haven't lost oh, yet earlier. Man gotten that extra energy on Chong Yun, he would have been the one mm -hmm. to survive on one health yeah. and kill Hu Tao. So it was both of them on the razor's edge down to the cards. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get it, sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. I feel like there are cases where games go poorly due to the card draw. Oh, yeah. Games that go poorly due to the dice mm -hmm. rolls. And then games that go poorly, even if you have everything perfect <laughs> and it's just due to, you know, like the match actual things, the yeah. matchup and like how the players play things. There's so many different variables that go into this match. And I think what we just watched, by the way, is a good example of a classic game of Genius Invocation. Yeah. It was a much more slower game than what we've seen so far, mm -hmm. um, which is what yeah, we're used to casting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We're used to things drawing out like this. And it's not like either of them were playing stall decks either. Right. Um, but it was just very interesting seeing like those players think about what to do next, you know? Yeah, and I think that really showed, you know, Xingqiu did get an adjustment as well in a recent patch, you know, his burst was slightly reduced in damage instead uh -huh. of dealing two, they only deal one. But we see that showcased power there that he's still a very strong choice for elemental reaction. Yes. Exactly. And the damage never really mattered for Xingqiu. I mean, Im this is him at like 80% power. Imagine what he was at back at 100% power when oh, he's still yeah. doing two damage with rain swords. I mean, it came down to one damage at the end, you know, without that nerf to his rain swords, it would have been over already for Fufu, but he did have a couple of outs in his deck. He didn't draw them uh, right at the end there, which is very unfortunate, but you know, that's sometimes how it goes. And yeah, I'm excited to see what they bring into the next round. I am also excited to see what they bring into the next round. So if we look at well, their options. Oh, I guess we're going right into it, actually. Oh, I see Abyssal Rana Summons. And Paimon right off the bat. Abyssal Summons. Oh, Geoshinid. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> a little bit hyped for Geoshinid, okay. Yeah, we, we'll hopefully see Joshin at full power here against also another very aggressive deck. Oh, and he Four does. Decks, okay, so the setup is there. The one thing is missing is Tenshukaku, but he does have a Paimon there to ramp. And also uh, Claudius, Tenacity the Mollusk. Yeah, Claudius Hand very smartly putting away that Gamblers. Gamblers isn't kind of the kind of card you want against a Joshin deck because they're very happy to sacrifice their characters as long as Zongli uh, can stay alive. So you'd much rather be putting pressure on them early and applying a lot of different elemental reactions. And interestingly, we see uh, Claude with the center overload deck. Have mm -hmm. we seen this played yet, this one? No, no, this is definitely new. Um, and also, this is not one that many players have uh, brought either. And notably, you, we see there's a, a Klee talent card in his hand as well, that Humpty Dumpty, uh, very <laughs> unusual there. So, you know, this might have an advantage of just, you know, Claude probably knows about this Oceana deck and knows what's important, uh, which is to apply pressure yes. and keep them off of their equipment. Whereas Fufu probably has no idea what is important there. I mean, I'm going to guess that Fischl and Klee will see a lot in the beginning. And then if those are not to hang up, we might uh, we might see Sino and Zongling go toe to toe. Who do you think will win in that matchup? Like, who who's your favorite if it was Sino versus Zongli? Who are you rooting for? <laughs> Why are you asking me such hard questions? My personal bias we, we is are here to root to for Sino, okay? okay. And like, I, I would imagine that Quade brings Monsat Resonance in this deck because oh, yes. both Fischl and Klee mm -hmm. um, could actually be a very, very strong deck. And we have yet to see its potential, right? This is a very unusual build. Yeah, yeah. Um, Geoshin is just meta, it's just strong. I feel like it really loses if Jungli gets going. So I, yep. I think when it comes down to who might win in practice, um, mm -hmm. it will depend on the execution and if Claude can get that damage off quickly with the Overload. Yeah, I think Fufu actually has the ex a, a perfect start here. We're probably going to see him deploy Paimon with three Geodice and then save two extra dice with Varanara there. Really, you know, doing his maximum to ramp uh, into the next turns. 
yeah, and letting Oceanid take the brunt of the attack. And this is kind of how this deck plays out. You start on Oceanid, get your summons down. Once your summons are down and Hydro has been applied, you switch to Lava Churl and start beating them in the face with uh, <laughs> giant chunks of damage. And then finally, after slogging through two monsters, you get to Zhongli here, who hopefully will have all of his equipment up. And that Varnara is going to go a long way, you know. Uh, there wasn't really anything else he could have done with the dice on this turn, yes. but that Varnara is going to give him a very efficient round two. And it's like, in this case, you don't really have to tune everything when you have Varnara. Right. You can just send it and, and like... Yeah, it's a strong for example, you, right. see, you see Vortex Vanquisher, like if you have like three dead or dice that are totally mm -hmm. useless from stacking up Vanarana over a couple turns, just yeah. throw it on Zhongli, like you can't use them anyway, right? So, yeah. uh, the ramp coming in for Fufu is going to be really crucial next round. Mm -hmm. As for Claude, I feel like starting with um, Fischl is very standard. Like if you it run is. any decks with Fischl, she normally comes out first to throw out Oz, and then you switch into your other elemental character, in this case, mm -hmm. Queen, which is what we've seen happening. Yeah, but I think the dice didn't quite line up with it. You know, you would have loved to start with uh, Fischl and then use Klee immediately. In fact, forcing your opponent, you know, off onto Lawa a little bit earlier, but he didn't quite have the dice, so a normal attack had to come out from Fischl there. So you can see her there on two energy. So not the strongest aggressive start, unfortunately, for Claude, but maybe we can turn these things around with that Klee skill card again, something you don't see very often, so the players might not be thinking about the extra damage that it adds. Yes. And it looks like we're going to see another summon from Oceanid. Uh, Seely getting one tick, yeah. two more. We get three cards on Fufu's side. He needs it. Look at that. Yeah, and Fufu, you know, one dice short of being able to uh, use uh, the five cost Oceanid there. But I think this will work out for him. We're probably going to see a switch over either onto Lawa Chol uh, or Zhongli, and then uh, followed by a quip on the Vanquisher there. So starting his setup, he's still a very comfy life total. In fact, if. If he gets an overload here, he'll get a free switch into Lao Chao, which might be exactly what he wants. So if Claude yeah. deploys the Klee Burst here, he might be playing to the hands. And yeah, I was thinking he might want to play Lotus Crypt here because he knows that he's going to go into Lao Chao. And I'm Klee? just wondering, like, what else do you do here, right? Like, you yeah. have to use Klee. You have to use Klee. You know, I don't think that's an option, one but... One HP. Yeah. Um, and Ocean of Being on one is also perfect because it will take an extra attack at some point. Um, Hopefully they get it with the uh, official summon, but maybe not. I was in Bingzu there. You know, who's going to be playing the winner of this match? Oh, yeah. Look, look at them just focusing on on these plays and, like, how each player plays a deck. I mean, this is really cool just to be able to, like, see how your opponents play these decks so you know what decks they're good at playing. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many different strategies to think about here. But yeah, they here we go. They also get to choose their bands, right? They do, they do. I, I feel like the play here for Fufu, by the way, is to actually equip Vortex Finquisher first to use that Omni die. Uh, I mean, provided he, you, yeah, he's probably going. To, he's going to tune. What? Me. That's interesting. He should be Fufu. trying to use it. Fufu. Interesting choice. Okay. I, it won't matter in the end. It doesn't matter because you know he's sending yeah. two to Vanarana regardless. Exactly. Otherwise, he yeah. would have ended on three. It's, it's, a, the it's same equivalent, thing. but you know it's. Bad form. It's Come bad on. for me. I don't <laughs> like seeing wovens being tuned. <laughs> that's true. That's very unusual. But sometimes you got to do that. You know, sometimes that's the right play. Um, but in this case, I don't think it matters either it way. Does, it didn't matter. We're gonna have way. two Varana. We're gonna have a really good turn <laughs> coming out from Fufu next round. You know, the two summons are gonna be hitting uh, whoever is left on field pretty hard. I can't imagine you want Klee to take that damage. Uh, we might see Claude use a charge attack and then swap off into Fischl. Uh, other lines, you know, I think he might also be thinking, does he want to use swap to Fischl, refresh the talent, or use an attack, just so he has burst? Because the piercing damage is going to come in very important. Yes. Because uh, you want to damage only as much as possible. Before as he gets all those shields. Correct. Because, I mean, basically, the way that Geoshinid works, and by the way, if you've never, if you're not familiar with the name Geoshinid, it's because it's double Geo and then Oceanid. So, Geoshinid. Um, the Rolls way that this. <laughs> If someone's trying to join, hey, we're in the middle of something. <laughs> but the way this deck works is that you stack up all of your equipment onto Zhongli, and you're basically <laughs> you're basically trying to stall um, until he's all powerful and stuff. And you bring Geo Resonance, which boosts the amount of shields you get when you use yes um, something that generates shields. Yeah, it's a very so. powerful deck right now, you know, very strong. And, you know, Fufu has one piece of the puzzle here. It hasn't drawn Tenacity of the Milithair, but he may not need it. 
just because he's been so good at, at surviving the skill. But I think Claude's switch into Fischl is very heads up. Uh, what we're going to see here next round is official burst with Gamblers to kill off Oceanid, get those two dice back, and then continue the damage rolling. You know, Sino is going to be... Oh, interesting. Maybe we'll see a burst this round. That would be pretty aggressive. I, I think we are going to see. I think Oceanid's going to fall. Yes. Oh, I'm not sure how much I like this because you don't use the gamblers and it's not that important for it's, you to burst this turn. It's not really that important because I mean Ocean Falling is whatever like she already has summons with two usages on the board and also Abyssal Summons will basically replace her utility right if, right. if he pulls Abyssal Summons. Right and Fischl so. would have still survived at the end of that turn um, through, oh, through uh, the Lawa Chill skill. So there was no danger, I think. Um, you know, I don't think your opponent is, you can see that Liz, they're, they're not gonna be running Tandoori Chicken uh, to be able to surprise kill you uh, with anything. So I think you're pretty safe to just pass the turn and then rely on, get that Gambler's proc. Uh, because that Gambler proc is one less dice now mm -hmm. that Claude has to work with. And every dice here in this matchup is so important. Yes. Because the other deck is so good at mitigating damage that you really need to be operating at maximum efficiency. So we might actually see that matter as Zongli is getting very set up here and very comfy. Uh, yeah, and Law Troll's in a great position here with three yeah. Omni, two Geo. Uh, I don't know if you saw Fufu's rolls. There was like a million Pyro. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's definitely not has have very good dice, you know, later on, because uh, we can see that up the top, he only has two Geo and three Raylons. Interesting switching over to Zongli. I think we're going to see a five cost Zhongli skill. Yeah, that's probably a good time to uh, to use it. Unfortunately, you won't be able to do that and use the Geo Resonance. Yes, uh, but I think I think it's fine mm -hmm. um, because he does have four text Vanquisher equipped, and also it will summon uh, his uh, Stone Seal. Yep. So that will apply um, Crystallize at the yeah. end of the round summons. Yeah, I think if I was in Clodo's seat here, I think I might consider switching off official. Um, although your opponent has 11 dice, you can't, you know, we know here that Fufu's dice aren't very good, so you can't actually apply a lot of uh, pressure with his skills. But seeing that 12 dice maybe is making me a little bit nervous of, about of Zonli follow up with Lao Chao. But, uh, you know, I think having swapped off of Lao Chao, um, it pr probably signals to me that the opponent doesn't have very good dice, because otherwise I would have led probably on Lao Chao's skill, get that Geo Resonance up and not worry too much about exposing Zonli. Because this does open him up to that elemental uh, reaction from Klee later. So we're gonna see here. We might see. Okay, we might see a regular skill uh, using the is crystallize he here. Is he gonna use GRS? Is he gonna use GRS? I think you really need to, because your goal is to s survive as much as possible. And with Vortex Vanquisher, this gives you four shields already uh, for only three dice. And you do want to deploy Tenshikaku. Oh, and the, the Treasure Seeking Ceiling is going to trigger here, so having go down to one hand... Five shield points! Jungle at a nice 12 HP. Double yeah. Ten Shikaku and Abyssal Summons. It's going to be really good for using up that useless dice, and also Liban. That's kind of kind of perfect, actually, for Fufu, I think. Yeah, but one thing to be aware of, that Sino uh, slowly been ticking up in the corner there. You know, if the game <laughs> stalls out for another turn, we might see Sino be able to clean up the rest of the characters. Lava Shell's already lost all of his shields. Um, well, so, so Sino's at two stacks right now, so mm -hmm. his normal attacks will apply Electro now. He gets another damage bonus at four stacks, and it goes up one per turn. So we would have to wait, unless he gets his burst off, we'd have to wait not to the end of this turn, but the end of next turn for mm -hmm. him to automatically be in his uh, Pax form, Path Clear form. Yeah, but we'll see what Cla both Claude's other characters are very low health. Okay, so opting switch to Sino. I feel like Klee really needs to take the field sooner rather than later. Um, it looks like he's trying to play around uh, Klee yeah, being killed uh, by a five cost stone seal. Um, obviously we know that, you know, Fufu does not have the dice to do that, but uh, Klee going down would be pretty disastrous for him right now. But without overload, you know, you're not going to outrace the uh, Geo deck uh, and how quickly they are able to generate uh, shields. Yeah, Sino on his own right now is not really going to do much damage to Zhongli. I don't even think mm -hmm. he can break through the shields with one normal or skill no. right now. The, the shields are already stacked way too high. I almost wonder if you don't even attack here, just swap back onto Lao Chell and then deploy Lieben and Tenshikaku, Tenshikaku Abyssal uh, and like Abyssal use, Summons. Use your cards in your hand, yeah. Yeah, using... You, so putting down Abyssal Summons here guarantees an elemental uh, application on the yes. other character. And if you go first, 
you can trigger the shield right away. So I like this the play element a lot. Gotcha. What's it gonna be? It is like the top hand. Yeah. It almost doesn't matter. It doesn't um, matter actually, because once the yeah, around. once the summons go down, I mean, you want the whole point is crystallize. Aww. Yeah, we're gonna see Lieben here. I think this is the right play. You know, I'm actually not, uh, hopefully Varanara is smart enough uh, to take <laughs> dice. <laughs> Uh, take the Omni, please. Take the Omni. Yeah, I think I, I hope it takes the Omni and the Dendro and then doesn't leave Lieben stranded uh, with two. I'm actually not sure how that works. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out uh, at the end of this round. I'm sure Fuhu knows that it works and that's why he's played it. But Tenchu Kaku is probably just going to get tuned. You know, now is not the right time to play it. I think we are reaching the end game. Yeah, uh, Fufu ended, so, you know, ending on yeah. five dice might seem bizarre, but two of them are gonna go to Vanarana, and then three are gonna go to Liban, and it's very important that he doesn't play Tenshikaku or anything, because those dice need to go to Liban to proc it. Mm -hmm. And it won't if you play something else, because Vanarana will trigger first. Yeah, so. and going first next round is actually super important, because what yes. we're gonna see here, Sino is actually gonna go down immediately, probably to a Zongli uh, a skill. Mm -hmm. um, and getting rid of... Getting rid of Sino is he's the only real threat left on the other team because you don't want to get him to that fourth stack. Yeah, he, he's the cleanup crew yeah. and he's not going to get his chance to shine. Yeah, that's why I was yeah a little bit confused why Claude decided to end his turn on uh, uh, on Sino there because I think he really needed him to have a chance in order to fight through all of the shields. Oh, a second Another abyssal, abyssal summons. Abyssal summons. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't bode well uh, for Claude here. You know, already he's going to be struggling a lot to fight through this. Yeah, we're going to see if he has a choice. He can, if he five cost pillars here, uh, it does kill Sino. But I think he's thinking about cards like I haven't lost yet. You know, whether he can afford to spend five Geo dice and yes. what he's going to do with the rest of his turn. I mean, five cost Zhongli skill will beef him up a lot though. So. Mm -hmm. um, it could be it could be worth it to play that line. The the thing is like five cost skills in Genius Invocation are very good, but they're also situational. You don't want to do them every time because sometimes you need the extra dice. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need the extra time to figure out what to do. Yeah. If you use all of your dice at the beginning of the round, it can be kind of painful later on if mm -hmm. your opponent pulls a fast one on you. You don't have the resources to respond, right? So yeah. I think Fufu has to consider this. Looks like we might see a swap to Law mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I like this play. Now, Zongli isn't very good at finishing off characters because his skills you know, his three cost pillar only does one damage uh, and uh, two two with the weapon and Chris, three with Crystallize, but still not enough to kill Sino here. But Lava Chill skill is going to do it. Um, so this probably is fine. You know, at this point, as if I'm Fufu, I'm not worried about losing Lava Chill at all. All I need to do is just, you know, keep the dice rolling, uh, keep Zonli's shields up. That second Abyssal Summons might even come down um, at the end of this turn uh, to maybe hope for a reaction. Uh, with the second one, but we'll probably see him save it. You know, the Geo yeah. definitely playing for the long game. There's no need to rush. Your opponents are the ones that are on a clock. I think the thing is, Fufu has a lot of options here. He does. And, and you know, sometimes it takes a while for players to decide what to do because they have so many options, because they have so many cards in their hand, they have the perfect dice. Yeah. Sometimes that can actually be detrimental. You don't know the line to play, like, and you can make the wrong mm -hmm. mistake, you know? So, Claude's side, all of his characters are four across the board. Yeah. As we talked about earlier, you know, Sino is at three stacks. At the end of this round, he'll be at four mm -hmm. stacks and in his Pax Sworn Path clear form. Unfortunately, it might be too little too late because he is mm -hmm. set to kind of fall here. Opting okay. did not switch off. Uh, I guess official and clear are more valuable in the long run. So. Yeah, and here the Lava Child not actually able to kill. So I don't know if that was a miscalculation here. You know, with the shield on Lava Child down, uh, his skill no longer does geo damage, and so you don't get that additional damage from Crystallize that you normally would. I, I think it's still okay though, because you know you do something you can do like a normal attack to use mm -hmm. some of the useless dice. It's not going to kill anyway, so you're safe to do that. And then Lava Child's burst will be up and also threatening. Yeah. You know. The yeah, the burst is, is still very threatening because it will kill off anything. But we, you know, Claudia does have that Lotus Crisp. So he might think this time to set up either the Lotus Crisp on Sino right now uh, or switch over to Klee. I mean, that Klee has that Talon card and the charge attack for so long that we haven't seen it used. I know, Sino's been the active character and he's just not ready yet. <laughs> he's not ready. Came out too, a little too soon, a little too early. He's too excited about GITCG and he just wanted to, <laughs> to jump into the field. You heard that I people were playing card Sino. games. He came I for card him. games and instead found combat. That's not who he was ready for. <laughs> Oh, was that Vanarana being tuned? Yeah, Vanarana being tuned. I yeah. mean, you, don't, you probably don't need the second one. 
So getting rid of all the shields there, uh, still not a very efficient use of damage not and very dice efficient at all. out of Claude here. Getting that second, it's that second uh, energy on Sino when he's already at two doesn't really make sense. I think he must be baiting the kill here, uh, hoping a, for a swap. Um, a free swap into Klee. Fufu, Fufu could swap and totally throw off those plans though. Slow swap over to Zhongli yeah. and I think that's what he's gonna do. And now Sino be forced to act. Yeah, yeah, Fufu very heads up. I, I think Clode is presenting kind of, uh, and I haven't lost yet, you know, he might be trying to use that into a Klee burst. Because I think Klee burst is one of the things that might be able to change the math here significantly. Um, you know, it, it does a significant amount of damage up front, but it also allows the, you know, every time the opponent does something, it uh, does pyro damage to them. So it allows you to continually uh, apply pyro even while you and your opponent are taking turns. Yeah, definitely looking to keep Klee alive there. I think she's going to be the linchpin, but it might just be too little too late. The Geoshina deck has so long to set up already. I think we are going to see the five cost skill from uh, Zhongli here. It probably would just be a normal attack. I think, I don't, I think you just want to threaten all the characters dying to pillars and then, <laughs> yeah, leading. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. the slow, the slow. If death. you didn't, if you didn't kill Sino earlier uh, with the skill, I don't think you want to kill Fischl here. So I think I'm gonna see a refresh you pillar. Yeah, here we go. So the pillar refreshing there. This is so painful <laughs> to watch. For yeah. Poor Claudie. Although the order here doesn't quite work out because you're not gonna get that crystallize at end of turn, but you know, only is set up to crystallize whatever the next. Uh, hit is. I mean, we could also see like Vanarana taking on the two Omni and then maybe an Abyssal summons from Fufu we or could, Tenshikaku yeah. even. It's too, too sitting in his hand, hasn't been played. I mean, no, the Tenshikaku definitely are going to be there to be tuned, you know. Oh, that's a really strange play. I think we're going to see uh, Abyssal summons and pass uh, potentially here. Swapping back to Lao Interesting. I mean, we're definitely not going to see anything that pops the Lotus Crisp there. I think the reason for this is because, you know, you don't want Zhongli to die under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. And Claude will go first. You don't really know what Claude has up his sleeve yep. to end that early Lotus onto Fischl. And it's basically useless to do anything to Fischl with that Lotus, right? So yep. the only thing you can really do is protect your Zhongli. Um, Lotrel is being <laughs> sacrificed at this point. Yeah, long outlived its usefulness. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about this line of play, you know, if he was playing around I haven't lost yet, it's still a very much an option on Claude's side, so he might be able to get a surprise Klee burst out here. He hasn't. He does have an Electro Resonance card uh, as well for that extra energy, mm -hmm. so he probably needs to make something happen this turn, because Zhongli is, you know, at such a comfortable life total, he has his Vortex Vanquisher, he has summons out on the field. Um, the dice rolls are not very good for Claude right now. They're they're okay for Fufu, I think. They're okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but Claude, only too usable to, I mean, Electro is usable, but... Electro is usable, but I think he's definitely looking this turn to bring Clea in. Okay, so oh, that's, that's a little that's a bit, bit better. better. That is a bit better, yes. Yeah, luckily he has plenty of cards. Oh, he has a also, he Monstat Resonance. Monstat Resonance, also I see uh, Knights of Vivonius Library and also Paimon in his hand if he does need the Dice Fixer, so... Yeah, so he's set on this turn, yeah, so here we go. We're gonna see a quick swap into Clea. Charge attack with Monstat Resonance, equipping maybe, maybe gamblers, gamblers as well. Yes, gamblers should go on yeah. to Klee. Uh, Lautra will fall, does it's not big to turn. use his burst to and do Omni Dice to Claude. Most importantly, Klee does not have any elements applied to her right now. So Zhongli is not going to be able to trigger Crystallize, which is going to be a really big deal. Um, will we see Monstat Resonance played right now, actually? Uh, depends on the... I don't think he has the dice to do it, because if he plays Monstat Resonance... Oh no, with a charge attack... Oh no, but if he Gamblers. plays Monstat... Res oh, yeah, gamblers. Okay. So I think that's enough. So he's going to do this. It's not going to be a charged attack. So we might just see. Uh, no, it'll Could still be use a either attack. Lotus or. Um, yeah, Library Lotus might or make resonance. sense. Uh, or, yeah, Electro Resonance might. I think Electro Resonance is a good play here. Because then he can use the charge attack, go back up to four dice. And then do burst. And do another. Do a burst or another charge attack. But I think I like that line the best. You know, it really puts a lot of pressure on Zhongli here without any application from Klee. We might actually see Claude be able to work around the defensiveness of the Geoshina deck. You know, Fufu does have a lot of dice, but Zhongli by himself, when he doesn't have Tenacity of the Millith, and there isn't any Not elemental Not another Geo Resonance card in hand. Yeah, Klee looks kind of shaky at six, but he, she's actually very doing very well Lotus right now. Down. Yeah, here we go. No. Oh no, he did play Monsat Resonance, I yes, think. Yes, played Monsat yeah. Resonance and then also played Lotus to protect clean. Also, you know, yep. uh, activate the charge attack. 
So we might see Electro into the burst for Klee right now. Um, Electro, yep. Electro Resonance coming yeah. down for the last energy point. I don't think Klee is very burst. much in danger here. So this is a very good play. Now oh, Fufu is in a tough spot. Um, so Claude is out of things to do. Yeah, so your yeah. opponent's on zero. You know, I think the first thing you have to do is remove um, the Lotus Crisp with a, a Stone Seal. Um, the really unfortunate thing is you don't you don't have a way... If you refresh your totem, or because your totem is there right now, the Abyssal Summons can't actually give you... Um, can't actually give you the Crystallized Reaction, and you really need that shield. I mean, you're going to have Pizza here, which will do a lot. But we're I'm kind see... of wondering, like, if you would favor going first at, if you were Fufu in this case. Like, would you play a bunch of support cards? Like, Tenshikaku could generate Omni Dice next turn. That's, like, you, you know, you're losing, you... you're losing two, uh, every piece of damage matters right now because we're getting to the end turns. You don't want to be using two dice just to get another one next turn. We might see Baranara get played. Because there's Abyssal Summons as well. Like, Abyssal Summons could do some, do something. Yeah, actually, that's true. We, what we might see is, yeah, is he going to play around? Oh, he's not? Okay. He's carefully choosing his dice. Very, very no auto dice. Auto, dice. <laughs> no auto dice. auto dice allowed. He's calculating. So we've got five dice going over to Vanarana and Liban. Will drop Tenshikaku. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you called it right there. Yeah, he's, he's going to go first next turn just so he can guarantee uh, a kill on Klee immediately. Absolutely Sazing perfect, by the way. Absolutely perfect. Was able to use like everything <laughs> you need to. So the Mushroom Pizza was one, Abyssal Summons, another two, Tenshikaku, another two, and then he has five left to feed to Vanarana and Liven. Mm -hmm. um, so he goes first, and he could shield to prevent... I mean, we'll definitely see the shield come out first, but the trouble is, Sino's at full stacks right now. We also have Klee's passive there. Even if Klee goes down, that's not... Oh, oh, oh Lotus Crisp. Oh, and shield and resonance. Oh that's actually God. a huge draw. That's six oh extra health for Zonli. Claudia could not be playing... I mean, maybe he's thinking about it, but you cannot Look be expecting that. Oh. Look at the Omni Ice. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is going to be really close. Um, Claudia might not be able to fight through that much heat. Oh, the Millifet is a little oh, bit late. It's too late. We're not going to see, late. It. Yeah. Not gonna see it. It does not factor in here. Tenshikaku is giving Omni. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so... I think we're going to see Geo Resonance into Zhongli Pillar. What do you think? Uh, I mean, it has to be Zhongli Pillar. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to kill Klee here, which actually is going to be pretty huge. Um, because if you don't kill Klee here, then she gets to, you know, basically tank another shot from Zhongli. You know, Zhongli isn't super efficient doing damage, but I, I can't see any other line that makes sense. You have to use um, the Resonance card here. You have to Pillar. I'm surprised he's not... One HP across the board, it's so painful. Yeah, I think he's thinking if he wants to start with the regular skill. Yeah, I think you have to use... Lotus will eat Lotus up the Crisp. minus two from Correct. Lee's burst. But you still have that Pyre application on you. You know, that's going to leave you... Let's see, with 11 dice, I think you do use only oh, skill. God. That leaves you three and three left for the rest of the turn. That might be just enough, um, but it really depends on what Claudia has. Luckily for, for <laughs> Fufu here, Claude's hand isn't super aggressive, but he does have that one extra <sighs> woven, uh, which will let him use three different skills this turn. And I think that might actually be enough. I'm just, look, look at those shields, you know, Lotus, you know. Look, it's a, it's a lot, but you know, think about the fact that Claude has three characters to go through and um, it's actually the enough dice. In Fufu's favor that Klee is left on one because there's no quick swaps to either, you know, someone who to play overload, do more damage, like basically stuck on Klee right now. That's true, actually. But, you know, but Fufu doesn't really have the option of passing, right? Like you can't just pass without being able to swap to a character. So yes. once Claude acts here, he will be forced to either kill Klee. Oh, with a preemptive swap. Interesting. That's a little bit unexpected. I, I would have probably sacrificed Klee here and just let her do a charge attack. Uh, to do extra damage. I, I think this is over. I, I feel like, you know, all the Zhongli has to do is normal twice and two characters are gone and then you have uh, the summons to finish the game. I, I think it's over. I think you want to tune here just so you can crystallize that Electro. So throw away that Tenshikaku. Yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you have enough cards in your hand to do that. Uh, yeah, you have at least three cards remaining. Let your summons clean up, but you need every point of damage matters here. That crystallize going down. It is going to hit Zhongli for two, but it wastes that Pyro application, which is so, so crucial. 
Yeah, so Klee's burst is no longer relevant. It's going to need two shield points, so she only, only has five. <laughs> only. Only. <laughs> so Claudia with a tough choice here. Does he swap to Klee or Sino? It might not matter. Um, I, I think, think Sino is probably the choice, just so you can use up that Pyro aura. Um, it looks like Klee's burst does have one. Oh, no, it hasn't triggered yet, because we're still waiting on Claudia to swap. So pretty soon, we're going to see that Klee burst trigger, which will leave uh, all of the reactions off the table. But I, I'm really yeah, surprised about so. that swap there because, you know, you had eight dice um, and with the woven, nine will get, let you use a skill three times exactly. If you make a swap there, you lose your ability to use three skills in one turn. And that probably is your only shot of killings only here. Um, with things that they are, I mean, Klee is going to go down. We're probably going to see three more uh, one more tune into a normal attack. You know, there's no reason to crystallize here. Okay, so... Okay, so it works out anyway, because clear you, with the Woven, you're able to go back up to eight and do a charged attack here. Hmm. So Sino still has two hits left. That's actually quite a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage, and because Zhongli did the... So I wonder, I think you just end turn here, because if you kill Klee, uh, Sino is going to get two attacks in, and that's going to be enough to kill off Zhongli. But and the thing is, if you yeah, if you end turn here, then Claude has to slow swap and slow it uses swap and dice use up and an extra dice. You can Correct. only attack once as Claude. So um, I actually agree with you. That is the play. That would be the play. That's what I would do. Yeah, I, I think that makes the most sense because there's really, I mean, killing Klee here doesn't achieve anything. Shield's going to die to the pillars, and if you go first next round, Sino is guaranteed to to die. I mean. I think Fufu's rethinking rethinking his strategy here because I think maybe he's coming. No, maybe he's gonna put the artifact on him. Oh, actually, that <laughs> I no, mean, no, matter. I, think, I think that's correct. <laughs> yes, no, that's correct. Because if you live this turn, you just need to survive oh, next turn. Yeah, this is the correct play. You know, it's very tempting to go from the normal attack there, but I think a normal attack or any other skill that kills Klee loses you the game. But Claude here without another woven, and I think that swap. That slow swap that slow off of swap official, is what's gonna do it. That extra dice, if he had that extra dice here, he could slow swap into Sino, use the woven, go into three different attacks. But now he's forced to use only a single attack. That's not enough to kill Zhongli. And the next time that Tenacity of the Millith is gonna come in and Zhongli's gonna be sitting pretty. Like he's gonna go down pretty low now, but next turn he's not gonna be touchable. I mean, I think the problem too is that Sino has Electro on him, so that Superconduct so could come in and just. Oh, end actually, the yeah, game he's just. If we doesn't swap back. Oh, and down to one. Oh, oh my god. With the burst there, but that is all. But I think you're right there. Oh. No matter what, the game ends here. Both oh games going god. down to one health. Jeez. Very well played by Fufu oh, there. Jungle. Killing off two characters with a summon they came. That was such a great game. That was such a good game. Yeah. Jungle living with one HP there. And like, oh my god. Yeah, Literally, I, it was that slow swap that it did was, it. It was, it was. I think if Claude goes goes back and watches that game, I think if he hadn't swapped off of Klee there, let Klee die. You know, oh, you have man. official, you know, normal attack, um, and then two skills out of uh of Sino would have done it because Sino does do a lot of damage there but <laughs> the slightly incorrect uh you know math there you know going being off by one makes all all the difference and Fufu saw it coming yeah you know we saw him tuning stuff we're like no 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 don't use your skill and then he puts the artifact on Zhang yeah. and said it was it was the thing to do he did the right thing yeah it's, it's you know this is this is why I love these high level things because you know I think a lot of players out there you know, the obvious thing to do is just to you know kill kill off the clean and hope for the best and yeah. you know, what happens it happens but you really have to see these lines where sometimes killing your opponent's character is the wrong play yeah sometimes, that's really unintuitive sometimes it's just swapping yeah. slowly is the right play like you or have to consider one, yeah. or the wrong one so you have to consider <laughs> all of these things like, there's yeah. a lot that but, goes on this game. i mean honestly that was a much tougher match for the geo in a deck than i was expecting oh you know, yeah it's me a really too. strong choice i mean you saw the very much the power of Klee bennett sino i think claude did he played very well up until to that point to get him into the position where he pro uh, probably could have won. Um, but it just, the cards didn't turn out in his favor. You know, I think he must have also been thinking with so many cards and dice left uh, on uh, Fufu's side, maybe he had something in there, like a second residence card, something to kind of tip the scales. And so he needed to try and fight through. But because he was dead at the end of that turn, it, it, you know, he really needed to push it through. And he, yeah, Whoa, Claude is really that same, same deck, deck again. Yeah, he's using it again. He wants to go again. I, he, he, did a really good job. Yeah, yeah. It was a fun match to watch. And we see Fufu is actually on Yai Quicken. 
Mm -hmm. Yaiko again, and running Rana, surprisingly. We haven't wow. seen Rana on uh, on stage yet, so she's one of the new cards yes, uh, being 3. added. Yes, in 3.7. And the way she works is if she basically leaves you dice, but the thing is she gives you the dice of the next active character, which actually, you know, I talked to some of these yes. players. The reason why you run this quicken deck is that the plays are very straightforward, where you start on Yai, use a skill, and then you move to a Dendro character. It's almost the same play every time, and Rana fits into that playstyle perfectly, provided you get the right dice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so... He needs to run one Electro! Have okay. the right dice? He just needs to run one Electro, and Claudia's dice have... isn't too bad either. He has some Pyro and Electro in there. If he has any ramp cards, okay, so he has a wharf to use those two geos. So he's got a he's got a pretty good start as well. I'm noting here that Fufu brings Nahida in this deck. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I feel like it's a very strong third dendro. Uh, yep. normally the core here More is Yae Tignari, but Nahida is good in her own right, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That last slot, you know, can be Nahida, can be Terra Shroom. Uh, we've also seen Kale as well. I think Nahida definitely is the strongest choice um, out of them, so I'm really Really excited to see how she plays in this matchup. But again, it's a very fast matchup. So, you know, anything can happen here. We're probably gonna see Rana played with a Yai skill. There's really nothing else you want to be doing with this deck um, other than that. I think he's only thing to consider here is do you do you have enough dice to play the treasure Sealy? Uh, and do you need to worry about anything like Lotus Curse? I'm looking and I feel like the thing to do here would be Yai skill. So that would do it would be two Omni, one Electro, right? Yeah, um, I think I think you have you should have enough to deploy the Sealy, mm -hmm. use Rana, get your refund on. Oh, he's gonna tune Treasure Sealy. And I feel like you can do oh, live no. into. Interesting. Why are you tuning? Not the Treasure Sealy. Maybe he wants to use Nahida skill. He might or not have enough to act. Oh no, wait. He doesn't. Three, two. I think he doesn't have enough to actually swap to a Dendro character yeah, he's, and he's use woven. both skills. He's woven, so... He might want to save woven for a future turn, though, because his dice already is good enough for Dendro. I don't yeah. think it's worth <laughs> using up the woven here. Yeah, so this gives him perfect dice. Uh, you know, when you're playing at this high level, it really matters how each of your dice use. So he's identifying there that Treasure Sealy would have been a good card, but he doesn't have enough dice to use it and uh, do the more important thing in the deck, which is to trigger Quicken. This is an interesting start. So I feel like, you know, Fufu sitting at four Dendro dice uh, can swap to either uh, Tignari or Nahida and use their three cost skill mm -hmm. without without using up the Woven. Yes, yes. This is definitely the play here. You know, so you're, it's basically, do you want to use Woven uh, to... Uh, put down the treasure seal. I kind of think it's worth it. You know, you're spending one card to potentially draw three later on. Um, but you know, these players probably know better than I do. Uh, so we'll see here what happens. So Kui here getting her skill off again, which is going to put a lot of pressure, I think, on Fufu because that skill does add up. We didn't see it used to full effect in the last round because it was a much more defensive matchup. But Klee's going to be much happier taking the field here. And unfortunately, though, she is going to have to stay on field if Claude wants to deploy Liyue Harbor this turn. So we're gonna, we might see a swap off of Klee and equip Gamblers instead of Liyue Harbor here. Cause I don't think you can allow Klee to take that much damage. I could also go for a charge shot and then uh, overload from Oz onto Tignari is gonna be kind of oof yeah. for Nahida, but it looks like Dwarf does go down. Uh, the overload will still come into play, but it won't be as lethal for Nahida. No. Uh, she's at, a nice 4 HP. <laughs> I think Nahida and Tignari are pretty interchangeable here. Yes. But your opponent did use up a lot of the elemental application here already. And so yeah, I think you're pretty happy with that exchange. Um, Klee is very low. Uh, not low enough to, to go down just from a single uh, skill from Tignari, unfortunately. But yeah, ooh. Got the Electro Dice in your Got the Electro Dice. You don't really <laughs> want Electro Dice anymore. And I, I think, know. you know, I think this is why uh, Fufu was saving that Woven. Uh, because it's so much more important to have Dendro dice at this point in the game. You don't need Electro yes. anymore. Uh, so making that a priority here. But Claudia has excellent dice rolls on his side. So he's he's going to execute whatever he wants this turn. The double Lotus Crisp also. Uh, probably going to see one of those this turn. Yeah, having to reroll all of those dice. Ooh. Oh, man. That is the wrong... Wrong. Pyro, no. <laughs> Go away. So... But yeah, luckily Fufu has... Uh, sorry, Claudia has very good dice. We might just see opening with a charge attack here. Um, Could very well be. So charge attacks happen when you are at even elemental mm -hmm. dice, and it basically removes yeah. one dice requirement. So normally a normal attack is mm -hmm. three dice with if a charge attack. If you charge attack here, I think you definitely want to Lotus, because you're going to take three damage from a Tignari shot at some point. 
you know, and with two Lotuses in hand, you can't use them on the same character anyway. So I think this makes sense. You want your Klee to be healthy because she's really going to be doing the majority of the damage here. Although this does put you off of... Uh, okay, so he's going to Woven probably back up to eight dice yep. to charge attack. Or equip Gamblers. Or, I mean, yeah, we see that Gamblers there. Or Favonius Library. I think there's lots of good options. The Woven does come out. Mm -hmm. So we see a charge attack onto Tignari. Uh, one, one point off of Klee's burst, which we saw last round, is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary when it gets off, you know. Yeah, I, I actually think I would have liked, you know, to save that Woven for a different turn and instead just mm -hmm. put down Cathedral um, to enable that charge attack. But, you know, this, this line is fine as well. We're probably going to see interesting... We're going to swap to Nahida. So maybe setting up Nahida to just take damage now and, and making sure that Tignari stays at a healthy life total. I think part of this is, well, I mean, Fufu's dice are really, really bad. Yeah. But also, like, um, you don't really know what your opponent's going to try to do or if he has quick swap or something. So, mm -hmm. you know, Tignari is sitting there with Pyro application. Yaimi goes there with Electro application. So uh, Fufu could partially be trying to avoid elemental reactions. And maybe we will see a tune or even Dedra Woven into Nahida's skill on Klee again to spread those seeds mm -hmm. to the other character. It's very possible. It's very many, a lot of resources used uh, for that turn, but it could be worth it uh, on this thing. But we'll see. Yeah, clean with a normal attack there. And, you know, against the Overload decks, having characters on low life uh, is actually very good for you because it takes, uh, you know, it takes so much effort to kind of kill your characters anyway. Um, you're not really that upset by losing a character like that to Overload. I feel like we might see um, Leave It To Me tuned here for Nahida skill. Uh, that or the Dendro dice being used, but I think doing the math, you might... He's definitely planning on using Lieben. Yes. So Lieben is going to be three dice down. Um, probably going to tune Leave It To Me. Yeah, although Leave It To Me might come in really important later when you need to snipe off a key character with either Yai Burst uh, or Tignari. You could even, yeah, you could Lotus on Nahida and protect her from the next attack, basically having to mm -hmm. eat up dice to kill her. So. Yeah, but Klee is ready oh to God. burst here. So that's actually going to put... Uh, Fufu in a really tough spot, because uh, once Klee's burst goes off, it's going to be a lot of damage coming in on both Yai and Tignari. And I have to imagine that Claude here is pretty comfortable just doing the burst. You know, Klee already has a lot of uh, utility already used by doing Humpty Dumpty and doing the two charge attacks, applying so much prior here. Yeah, the burst makes sense here. You don't want to lose her unexpectedly uh, in the next round. Um, so putting the burst here is very proactive. I wonder if we'll see a hash brown just just to use it to get the the last, you know, there's mm -hmm. four dice there. You yeah, I mean, the, the, the question really is who to hash brown. I think you should hash brown Tignari here. Yes. He's probably the most important character. Well, also, hash brown heals for two, so mm -hmm. going into Yaimiko is going to half the value. So. True, yeah. Well, I, I mean, there is an option of actually hash browning on Nahida. Oh, maybe tuning the lead in. Well, you can't hash brown Nahida because... Oh, she's already eaten, yeah. Yes. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what, though? I think, I think the idea is to uh, let Nahida eat one of the one of one of the charges from Klee's burst, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to Yai Miko, maybe. Yeah, it would be Yai Miko because you definitely want uh, the Oz. Oz to not trigger another Electra. Yes. Yeah, very, very expensive tune there, getting rid of Lieben and uh, using one of the woven dice to trigger that thing. But this will power up any further reactions uh, from uh, Fufu's side, basically for the rest of the game. But he still has that one extra stack I know. Should, should give it to Tignari. <laughs> well, um, the hash brown. Give oh, the, hash the hash brown to Tignari, and then ideally you'd want to use, like, not use. You'd want the Klee burst mm -hmm. passive to fall into Tignari because he already has Pyro on him, as opposed to Yayamiko. If she does something, she's going to eat right. Overload. It's going to be a lot of damage. Oh. Yeah, using that Itoka just to fill that energy, you know, I think Claude is thinking that he may not get a chance to use it again. Um, and official burst here is pretty threatening uh, because the character is already pretty low because we have to account for that Klee burst already. Yeah, just trying to use up all of his skills. Both sides running very low on cards, but Claude does have one more usage of Lue Wolf. Fufu's going to come down oh, to no cards. Ending, not using the Hash Brown. It must be thinking to use the Hash Brown on 
uh, Yai there, otherwise I don't see why you would use not use up that last dice. Very interesting. Ooh. Oh, not not the best draws, I think. It's not the best draw, but I mean, it could be situationally acceptable. You know, quick swap and also changing shifts to reduce the Ooh, cost. Okay, very good dice. Well, yeah, but one of the, the the trouble with running so low on cards at this point is you're very open to your dice rolls. But luckily, Fufu has some pretty good dice rolls there. Claudia having some trouble, but the Favonius Library is coming into play, letting him reroll, and looks like still not great. But he has another one. Mhm. Mm oh no, he tuned that one away, so he doesn't have another one. When he drew a Mondstadt Resonance, that I, might actually change this game significantly. I feel bad for Claudia's dice right now. Yeah, yeah, they're not the best, but I think he can make it work. I guess his two cards off War Wharf didn't give him enough uh, to work with, but we're probably going to have to see... I'm going to have to say a normal attack. Like, there's no way you can afford to use Fischl's, uh Yeah, We could also... Playing Sealy. Very late to be playing Sealy, but he's gonna have to decide between Oz and Normal Attack. I think you have to Normal Attack here, yeah. Oz is just too many, with such a bad roll, you can't afford to use them all up on Oz. Yes. And here you're still threatening the Fischl Burst. No point in playing Monsai Resonance right now, only at, you know, four dice. No, I think if you're sitting in Fufu Seat, you can kind of see that your opponent uh, probably won't be able to kill you this turn. Um, and if you stay on Yai, that gives you the best chance of surviving. We might actually just see a refresh, yeah. Yeah, Very unusual. Her skill, she's gonna take that four damage and it's gonna go to Tignari. Ooh, but this is the overload is gonna yeah force a swap. I wonder if he was accounting for that because I think definitely we'll see a, a tune into burst. Into right? burst. That is six damage on uh, Sino, and then Yai will go down uh, after that. So I th and with yeah, I, I I don't like the odds here for Fufu. I don't think he can has enough damage left to kill Sino. Um, yeah, especially not through this Lotus. He definitely ran out of steam there with the cards. I think this is this is gonna seal it um, for him. There is just not enough there. <laughs> oh, that was a really bad mana swap there. The Overlord swapping over to a Yai at zero health, who was already dead. I I think the writing is here. And um, you no, know, Claudia's sitting on Monstad Resonance mm -hmm. for next turn. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, Monster Resonance won't really come into play here, but just look at how much health is uh, left on those other characters. I think Fufu in this round got hurt a little bit by his dice and didn't manage to use all of his skills appropriately. I, he's mousing with that Hash Brown, I wonder if he wished he had used it on the previous one, but I think he knows it's over. You know, 16 health is just too much even for the, uh, the Quicken deck here. Yeah, I remember when uh, Fufu tuned Sealy. <laughs> I actually feel like that was a mistake. I know it was really early on in the game, but I, I yeah. just feel like card draw is so crucial in this game. Yeah, definitely. I think I think if he had played the Sealy there, it would have kept him fueled for the rest of the game. Um, you know, like I said, you're, you're giving, you're using up one card, but you're going to be drawing right back up throughout the game. Turn one is the best time to have the Sealy. So, you know, I think he definitely he'll look back on that moment and, and wonder if it would have been better. I mean, you never know what you're going to draw into. We can't predict the outcome of the game. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think in this game, Claudia definitely had a lot of dice uh, roll in his favor pretty significantly, and then Fufu did, on some crucial turns, have some pretty bad dice rolls. You know, he never once got to use Nahida's oh. uh, talent there. Um, and that might have made all Doesn't the difference. He ramp. He has to throw all those away. Let's see if he gets any food. He doesn't get a Lotus Crisp and a toss up. Lotus Crisps isn't going to be in. Oh, wait. No, because because of the Ito, uh, the I haven't lost yet in Claudia's hand. I mean, this is his best line. But because of the I haven't lost yet, he's going to be able to get an extra energy and fight through oh, the Lotus Crisp. So it's not going to matter. Um, but this is the best play he can make. So he's going to equip Lotus Crisp onto Dignari there, who's going to probably use a uh, charge shot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely charge shot here. Really nothing else you can do. But I think once that I Haven't Lost Light comes down, Fufu knows he's going to die. Because Sino here normally would only be able to do three damage, but he has that extra dice. And it's just going to tune away the rest of his hand, I think. You know, there's no reason to keep any of it. You know, it's really fun to watch players that are, you know, definitely counting dice or calculating everything they need to do because mm -hmm. you can predict what's going to happen and it actually happens and it's like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, so Fufu here, I mean, uh, if it wasn't, you know, if he didn't have that extra dice, he would have been at least a decent spot because the summons would have killed at the end of the turn. Again, a... Sino. 
That's it's yeah, you got two boys. Go. Yeah, Here he sees go. that I haven't lost yet card. Fufu acknowledging that yeah, he has a card and had it. Doing the best oh, he could. No, Claude yeah. is your winner of the second semifinals. Yes. Three very close games. Good. Two of those games coming down to one health. And that last one, once again, coming down to a single card, you know, having that extra dice. You know, Claude using that, not having that extra dice Amazing in the previous job. game, uh, but incredible. this time he had it. Um, and you can see every dice matters. So very good play there by Hufu. I, I think stage. we got to toss back to our host now. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, my goodness. I, now, I'm just going to say it. I, I've been watching a lot of this game, and this was the best series I have ever seen. I mean, taking time to think about every play, two rounds coming down to one HP, and then that dramatic end as well. How are you feeling after that incredible series? I'm still shaking a little. <laughs> What is up with you in one HP wins? I, I don't understand. It came down to it again. I mean, it's always so close, but do you feel like you worked harder in this series than you have at the rest of the events? I mean, this really took a lot of time. Definitely. Yeah. It was the hardest one yet. <laughs> Two one HP matches. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, any words to uh, your opposition? Uh, you know, Fufu really came out there, was uh, trying their best. Um, uh, what was it like facing off? They played really, really well. Oh, okay. I'm very happy to hear that. And we are going into the grand finals. Congratulations. And we are going to be going in very shortly. Whew, you've seen everyone play. You've made it this far. What are your thoughts about the grand finals? I'm excited. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can see the shaking. I can see the excitement coming here. And we are so excited to see you make it there as well. So stick around, my friends. We are going to get to the grand finals here. Let's go ahead and throw it to our casters as we get ready to enter the end of this tournament. Those were some really amazing <laughs> matches. Also, thank you so much, Slacks, for passing it back to us. Mm -hmm. What I do mean, you have to say? I mean, we're shaking in the booth here as well, right? I know, Just as much really... as Claudia here. Those guys were so close. Like I said, you know, it was down to single cards, single decisions. Yes. And that's kind of the, the high skill level that I've come to love about this game. You know, mm -hmm. you can see the, the, a lot of the RNG, the dice and the cards, but decisions do matter. And, you know, your choices do really matter. And, you know, we saw in this game one here, a very unusual deck choice from Claude, but managing to survive uh, through all the opponent's attacks. You know, Hutao very much being showcasing her full kit here in this match. Yeah, and, you know, if you get everything set up, you know, uh, Chongyun's Frostfield mm -hmm. and Xingqiu Rain Swords, like, Hutao is set for life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think in this one, you know, like I said, it might have made the difference uh, if you didn't uh, have... Uh, Pyro Agent take the hit there. But in the end, you know, Xingqiu's Burst still showing up to be very strong. Again, one damage off, uh, as was the <laughs> the complete pattern for this series, you know. Boom, one HP win. Well, yeah. kind of. Plus three Plus from three. Burst, That doesn't yeah. count. That doesn't count. <laughs> oh, the classic Geoshin win. Geoshin deck, yeah. Uh, Geoshin has really showcased its power so far today. Mm -hmm. I think both games we've seen it, it has won, yep. correct? Yes. Yep. It's been one of the only decks to have a consistent win record here. Uh, from the times that we've seen it. And, you know, for those of you who are at home, very strong choice. People will probably hate you for playing it. <laughs> but if you want to win, uh, that might be what it takes. Might see um, some nerfs next patch, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's, but it's still very beatable. You know, I think it definitely has some weaknesses. Uh, but you have to play more. And I think, you know, if you remember back to our comments, uh, you know, that decision not uh, to have swapped off of Klee onto Fischl might have made such a huge difference in this one. Because, again, Claude was oh, one attack short. Yeah, I mean, had he used that skill there, it would have put his only down to two, but then he would have been able to finish off with the second skill. So again, every dice matters here. And again, it came down to that as well here. I think Fufu did his best. He, I think having not rolled five Dendro dice for the entirety of the match and not having uh, the fixing cards to do that, he never got to use Nahida's skill. So he lost yeah. out a little bit in damage efficiency. I, I feel like Overload is just better into uh quicken especially yeah quicken because mm. like it goes off faster in my yeah. opinion and one of the and things it controls your characters you know it, right. can, it can send your characters to the next board yeah and that's really important because in the quicken deck it's once you have used the IA once you don't really need her again and so being able to send her off and put a different character here very important 
So, yeah, we're looking at our brackets now. Uh, both semifinals were two to one. So, mm -hmm. as we can see, they were very close. No one has yeah. really secured a three or two oh win, except for Fufu, Fufu <laughs> in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So, I don't know. We saw a player who was maybe favored to win yeah. get knocked out. Very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the dice rolling away. And, you know, the grand final is going to be a best of five. So once we come back, you have you know, get ready for some long matches. I don't think it's going to be a clean sweep from either of these players, yeah. given how close the games are. So I'm going to expect it to go up to the full seven. In fact, I hope it does. Um, yes, and for now, we're going to throw to the break before our grand finale. Thank you so much. Yeah, get your snacks, get some popcorn, get something to eat. Get and ready. We'll join you back here in about 10 minutes yep. once you come back from the break.
The Astra Carnival Prince Cup Invitational. Now I know you know who Prince is, my friends. Prince is the beautiful kitty cat, the dual saint of cats, if you will. This is his tournament, but perhaps you did not know that we actually did have a cup. In fact, it's a trophy. It's Prince's trophy, which the winner will be taking home here today. That is right, we have had quite a journey. Qualifiers, games, semifinals. Hopefully you have been with us for the entire way. But now the time has come. The end is upon us. And after this series, our grand finals, we will crown for you the greatest Genshin Impact Genius Invocation in all of Europe, my friends. And it's time for us to get to the grand finals and see who will be taking Prince's Cup and who will become a saint themselves in the world of Genshin Impact Genius Invocation. And our first competitor, well, they made it there first, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting their way to this stage, may I please introduce to you, Benzu! Benzu coming in, only lost one game on this stage, has yet to lose their series, and welcome, welcome. It is a pleasure and an honor to have you, one of EU's finest. Thank you. No matter how it turns out, you're either gonna be the finest or the second finest. So it should be pretty interesting to find out. However, do they have some competition? Talk about coming in by the skin of their teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, may I reintroduce you for their third series on this main stage. It is Claudette, bring it on up. Come on up, my friend, come on up. Oh, that same swagger, that same calmness, somehow still surviving in some of the most intense series that we have seen since we started this bad boy. Thank you so much as I now welcome our two grand finalists together. What a journey it's been, huh? It's been an incredible ride for you guys. Yeah, it's been a really incredible journey. I didn't think I'd make this far, but here I am. There you are. So no matter what happens, you are one of the best EU players. You know, you're either the first best or the second best. Any words out there to the fans watching at home who one day hope to be as good as you? Just have fun. <laughs> Just have fun. And I assume you're going to be having some fun on this stage as well, my friend. How are you feeling going into the grand finals? Yeah, uh, I hope the dice are lucky with me in the finals and I don't get zero usable dice for the finals. Well, I hope that you have been saying your prayers to uh, our boy Prince then and making sure that everyone knows. All right, well, Prince, I hope that he is ready for this match to happen. Let's go ahead and for the final time, shake some hands. This is the last time you will be able to shake hands. Oh, and encouraging words. Please take a seat. And you at home, you still have some work to do as well. You should be seeing a QR code. Go ahead and scan that bad boy. Tell us how we are doing here because we love to hear your feedback and we'd love to do another one of these shows for you. So let us know how we're doing. But the time has come. Are you ready? All right, they're ready. Prince, you ready out there? Prince is ready. Let's get this bad boy started. Grand Finals of the Prince's Cup Invitational. And we're throwing it to our fantastic casters. Let's get it on. Thank you so much again, Slacks. And I am so excited for yeah. this final. What are you thinking? Uh, I mean, I'm. we're going to get into a best of five. So not only are we going to have a lot more games to show, mm -hmm. they're going to be able to showcase some of their slightly weirder decks. Again, if you win with a deck, you can't play it again. And on top of the bands, that really reduces your options very quickly. And, you know, yes. like I said, Claude is still one of my you know, people I've been looking forward to the most because he has such different characters. I mean, we can see Child there. We can see Kaya and Xiangling. All three of those, he is the only person to include those characters in any of his decks. So again, very much, you know, he's, he's he, when he said just have fun, he really means it. Yes. Because um, I think those decks are 
tons of fun. They are tons of fun. They're very different. And you know, Binzu came in with a 2 0 bye because Hakyo unfortunately couldn't make it. Right. And he's making it to the finals. That's so yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so these players had to submit an extra two decks Correct. for the finals. So, I mean, for the best of three, they submit five and two are banned. Now it's, they submit seven and two are banned, left with five because it's a best of five. Yeah. So, um,. We may see some different things here as well. I mean, I'm hoping so. Uh, you know, we have some of the bans in front of us. We won't be seeing Geo Oceanid again. Both sides uh, deeming to ban out the G double Geo yes. plus Hydro kind of combination there on each side. And also, then... notably, Pyro Kaching is banned yes. on uh, Binzu's side. Very mm -hmm. meta deck. We haven't seen it today. It's on our bingo list. Unfortunately, <laughs> don't get to cross it out. No. Probably for good reason. You know, those bans, uh, mm -hmm. banning out some of the more scary decks. And you see something pretty similar from Binzu as well, blending that uh, Leoe Super Friends deck. Yes. As I said, that we called, you know, I think may maybe seeing it in action, he said he decided he wasn't quite prepared for that setup. It's a very strong. It is very strong. If you can get it off, it is very very strong. And like I, I'm pretty sure these players don't know what deck they're facing into. Yeah. They can only guess. So they pick a deck to go into game one, mm -hmm. and just go from there. Yeah. So you can't really determine what matchups you're going to be facing when you're a player. Mm -hmm. You just have to put your best foot forward. And you know, I'm really excited because as you can see at the bottom of the screen, Binzu has chosen to go with the Shenhei Animo deck, you know, my pet favorite there. We're going to see it in action one, maybe one last time, maybe twice if he doesn't end up winning. But very weird deck here from Claudia, as I mentioned, that Xiangling. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, Yai, I got... You know. Yai Nahida Xiangling Burning deck. That's actually a very, very strong deck, I think. Okay. Um, so the goal is... Oh, we're getting into game one, actually. So. <laughs> I mean, you know, keep, keep explaining, you know, that we're just seeing some ties thrown away. Claudia throwing away all the cards, getting double Timmy. That's actually a really good draw for him. You know, Timmy is such a strong card on turn one Main and really seven. sets you up nicely for the future turns. Starting with Shanna, typical start for this deck. Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably going to see Shanna's yep. elemental skill for the Icy Quill Summon. The thing with the Nahida Shangling Yae deck is mm -hmm. that it can proc overload Right. Quicken and also Burning. Burning creates a Pyro Summon on the board. And the, I mean, Yai plays off her totems, you know, her summons as well. Yeah. And Shangling is also a summon character. So it's just kind <laughs> of relentless. Yeah, and I think what, what we'll see here, Claude is going to probably, based on what his opponent is doing, either elect to go... Uh, he's probably going to go with Shelling here. I don't think, you know, triggering Quicken isn't the most important uh, in this matchup. But, you know, Binzu with a very straightforward play. Oh, with an only a normal attack. Only a normal attack. His dice he... must not have lined up for him. Oh, no. Uh, so what Binzu is doing here, so it's, if he uses Icy Quills first, his opponent will be able to swap off that character and deny him the cryo application on the other character. Yes, so uh, Binzu is going to use skill now onto Shangling, mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, skill onto Shangling. We'll probably see, he might need to... Uh, actually, he has a Varanari in hand, so that last Omni Dice is not going to go to waste, thankfully. And also, Claude is probably going to cast uh, Guoba here, which yeah, the Overload's yeah. just gonna send Shanha in. It really <laughs> is, yeah. Uh, I wonder if Binzu actually did plan around that. You know, I think you would expect for sure uh, Shanling here. I think if Claude yeah, is, forward, yeah. is thinking about his plays, he might actually want to swap off of Shanling here. Um, because that would give him Claude, uh, sorry, Binzu an awkward turn. So if I was him, I'd probably... Uh, this is a good opportunity to swap to Nahida, maybe apply, hope for good rolls and apply the five cost skill next turn. But I really do think you should do that uh, uh, swap to deny the swell from the Anemo deck. I do agree. I mean, Bintu is going to go first anyway. Um, if if Claude decides to not swap, I wonder if we'll see Mushroom Pizza onto either Xiangling or Yai. Yeah, it's Just gonna be one of the last other. Ice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. And we see we that- We are seeing the swap to Nahida. Yeah, I think this is the right play. You know, Nahida is the person you want to be using next anyway. Assuming your dice roll goes well, you know, the Overlord's gonna switch to Sucrose, but you actually don't want Sucrose out right now. So Binzu left in a little bit of a tough spot with Toss only up. a single, oof. Yeah, I think he, he really wants to see a Nemo resonance here. So it's gonna be pretty tough. I don't know if it makes sense to swirl here with, uh, with Sucrose right away, because you're just not using your damage very efficiently. I honestly think you have to swap back to Shanha and start using her mm -hmm. burst and But look at, look at Claude's dice rolls. You know, he does not want to see Pyro dice. He's keeping one here, maybe just in case. But he... Oh, okay, he's rolled a couple of Omni dice. So he at least has access to four Dendro dice this round. I think he's going to tune one for an Ahita 5 cost skill. Probably see Shanha burst first. Yes. Shanha burst here makes the most sense. 
unfortunately having to use that fast swap. So if, if he can draw a neat, he does oh. not draw it. Two Leosu, I don't know how useful that is. Uh, with the Sucrose talent, you might actually be looking to set up a Sucrose burst with, with Li Xu here uh, on the next turn, and that could be pretty strong. Again, it's a little bit late. I think this this Overload deck can pile on damage a little bit too quickly. You're also getting threatened by those two Timmies, uh, who are going to provide extra dice and cards next round. And yeah, that send off coming in play there. You know, I think Binzo still had the right move there. You know, you use up your icy quills, uh, get another cryo application onto your enemy characters, which probably is more important uh, here than anything else. I get the feeling that we're still just going to see uh, Shana's skill right now, and then all those characters are going to have cryo application on them, so I mean the animal characters Eat can it. go at it after. Uh, probably sacrificing Shenha a bit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is not this is not your ideal start uh, for the Anemo deck, being staying on Shenhei so quickly, but yes. she's able to put out quite a lot of damage by herself. You know, those Icy Quills not only benefit Swell, but she still is useful for her. We'll probably just see those two dice go to Varanara at the end of the turn, and I think, yeah, I think uh, Binzu is going to rely on the Overload to swap into Sucrose for him. Yes, and Leo Su should, should prop it will, it onto will. Sucrose, yes. Yes, you'll still get it for that turn, so that's, that lines up perfectly. And Swell's going to be real nice to keep... Uh... Oh no, Shelling is active right now. Uh, we'll see what she does. Maybe just refresh Gulba. Might as well. Ooh, that's a pretty inefficient use of dice there, unfortunately. But I, that I'm not sure what right else play. Claudia could have done. The thing is, like, uh, you were swapping back and forth already using dice. And yeah, I mean, a normal attack probably would have been uh, okay there just to get more damage up and, and not worry too much about the Gwoba because you're already going to have enough Pyro application from the shelling there. So we'll see if that matters. If this ends up coming down to about two health, which I know, given the Pat and Claudia's games are going to be very close, but if it comes down to a difference of two health from that normal attack versus refreshing that Gwoba, uh, we might see that uh, come into play later. He might regret that. Does decision. go down. Um, Sucrose is out. Yeah. the It's putting the Anemo deck in a really awkward position here. You know, if... Claude can play it in a way that uh, plays around that cryo aura. Uh, he's going to put himself in a really good spot because he's had a very healthy health total on all of his characters. Very good dice roll from Bingzu though, that he's got perfectly what he needs this turn because I think he wants to set up a swell into a sucrose talent. Oh! Calx's arts see. coming in on top of Claude. Yeah, we're definitely going to see. Mm -hmm. Skill from uh, sucrose probably burst next. Yeah, I mean, it depends. So Claude has a, a choice here. He can stay on Nahida, uh, but it looks like he doesn't have the dice anyway, so he's going to fast swap to Shangling. Shangling probably for burst, right? To burst, yes. yeah. And this is this plays around, you know, a a uh, the burst as well from Sucrose. So I think this is his best play. And this is part of why, you know, I, I didn't think it was too important to let uh, Woba go before, because you're already going to get this Pyro uh, hit in anyway. But yeah. I guess it, you know, it, it saves Claude from having to do it now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's Claudius. Uh, sorry, Binz is still opting to use the Sucrose talent there. Setting up the summon. I mean, I think it, it is right to set up the summon as early as you can, but unfortunately, it's not. You're not maximizing the effect until you get a uh, infusion on that uh, the summon. Uh, you know, once it is infused, it buffs all of the damage of that type by one, which seems weird for a Nemo, but you have to keep in mind when you're swirling that same damage, it increases that swirl damage by one as well. I think the unfortunate... I, I feel like Sucrose is going to get sacrificed here, so um, Binzu just opting to use her talent now. Mm -hmm. uh, setting up for Xiao to probably take out everyone at once, right? That's kind of the goal of this Possibly. deck. Possibly, yeah. Um, you know, if I... Claude unfortunately doesn't have any... I, I think if I... The optimal play here for Claude would be to ramp, uh, you know, use a Paimon or Leaving card and then end the turn. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't have either of those cards in his hand right now. Yeah, look, he's opting not to swap off of Shaoling there. Oh, the, the Pyronite still triggers. So Sucrose is getting pretty low. Wonderful. See a Lotus now on the Sucrose. That will... I mean, the Lotus will negate the damage from the Electro, but I don't know if it, it matters. You might actually want to just let Sucrose go down here, save the Lotus for Xiao, because Sucrose is going to go down to one... Uh, from the summon, and then the Gorba will kill, but then you lose. Your opponent hasn't got any more resonances left. Also, we're kind of seeing something here. This is what happens when you take Vanarana and Lieben. Not really use Lieben at all. <laughs> um, 
with Vanarana active unless you end with five dice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you're probably when when that happens, you're probably just looking, you know, for one or the other in, in the early turns. You know, you're not really too disappointed if it's Lieben or Vanaran the other way. Um, at this point, it is getting pretty late to be using Lieben anyway, so I don't think you're missing out on too much. But yeah, I think Claudia definitely played very well at the beginning to play around the game plan for the Animo deck. Um, not letting them do their swirls, forcing them to stay on Shenhe, and that's really made all the difference here. Because you see that two damage, two damage from that Sucre Summon is actually low. You know, if it infused, it goes up to three. Yep. In addition to powering up your swells, so I think Claudia's played this very well. We'll see if Binzu can make something happen with Xiao here, but things aren't looking good for him. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Shangling is still the active character. Um, there's nothing to swirl, mm -hmm. like you were saying. Like, there's nothing to swirl. I think this is probably why Claudia stayed on Shangling. Mm -hmm. um, so. It really puts the animal deck at a disadvantage like this. Yeah, it's, it's one of the, you know, the wrong problems I started seeing as well, the double animo deck when I run it. It's very good, uh, you know, when you're playing a bunch of people and you're not sure who you're up against. But as you get progressively higher and higher level uh, and you know how to play against the deck, it's very easy to play around what they're trying to do. And it's pretty frustrating, you know, uh, okay. when your opponent knows what they're doing. Pass up coming for Binzu just does not have the dice right now. Let's see if he can get the dice from this toss up. Yeah, I mean, he definitely needs a good set of rolls to be able to come back here because I think he is definitely on the back foot. Oh man, rainbow dice. Yeah, luckily he has enough charts to tune, but that wasn't the, the best use of his uh, dice there. Yeah, he's probably going to want a normal attack just to conserve his dice at this point. It probably doesn't matter whether he uses normal attack or a skill here, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, using a normal attack in this case will just get rid of the excess uh, bad dice you don't want, right? So um, I think this works out fine. And now, I mean, the shell burst is kind of threatening, right? It is, yeah. This kind of effectively forces Claude not to swap uh, to one of the characters of the Cryo-Rise, but honestly, he might be happy enough just resummoning Guoba. Because I don't, like, if you can prevent the uh, infusion from going off on the Sucrose Burst, it really doesn't do a ton of damage by itself. But it looks gonna like we're going to go for a swap. A quick swap specifically onto Yai and Miko. Interesting. Yeah, probably kind of get that summon back down. Um, you know, it's actually pretty rare for, for games with Yai and Miko to last long enough for her to actually deploy the next uh, summon. Yeah, a second set of summons, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, just going to be a normal attack here, which I think this makes a lot of sense. You know, the summon is too delayed, and this way, you know, you're really putting pressure on your opponent here. But this does give Sucrose an opportunity to swell. To swirl, yep. And you can see how how important it was that um, the hypostasis, uh, sorry, the, the summon from Sucrose didn't activate on Cryo. And now it's Cryo. Now it's Cryo, now but it's, it's a little cryo. bit too late, because that would have killed off Xiangling, but now Xiangling is left alive, and you have to do something to kill her again. I imagine we're, we might see a uh, Guoba here, maybe? Probably. You know, I think a normal attack to kill off Sucrose makes a lot of sense here. Um, sh your sh enemy's shout is already at full energy, so you're not too worried about I haven't lost yet. And Shao doesn't have a very efficient way of killing off Xiangling. Could also be Calc's Burst. Yeah, Calc's Burst would work. I, it might be a little bit late for that burst there. Yeah, Just opting attack. for the normal attack. Yep. Let's see if Xiao can actually do it here. I mean, he has four dice left. Unfortunately, not going to no have... No gamblers. Yeah, no gamblers. So he's thinking about whether he wants to use... Looks like he's going to go for the burst. The good thing, so, I mean, Yai did a normal attack instead of summoning something. Uh, same case with Shangling, so there's no elemental application on Xiao right now. One of those two characters is going to fall to uh, the Sucro summon. Yes, uh, the Sucre Summit is going to take out one of the characters, so it will be all up to the remaining character to make something happen. And Xiao is very threatening here with this burst. You know, his skill is going to do four damage at the start of the next round. Um, Ooh, so it might, yeah, this. I mean, this makes sense. You know, uh, Nahida is the only one with any upfront damage. You don't want to end on Yai, and I don't think there's enough time. Well, the thing is that Yai has her burst up. Correct, but the burst isn't probably going to be enough damage. Oh. Okay. Vanarana taking the two Omni forward. Yeah, that's fair, because um, Yayamiko doesn't have her elemental skill up, mm -hmm. so it's going to do significantly less damage. Yeah, I think that would have been a good line if the uh, 
if the summon was still up, but you know, now at this point in time, I think you really just want to rely on Nahida to carry forward. If he can draw a Lotus Crisp, uh, he has the play of putting Lotus Crisp on Nahida, equipping the Traveler, uh, the Lucky Dog, and that puts Nahida after effect of seven health and out of range of Shao. Oh, so you see, man. no Lotus Crisp. Uh, I think you can see kind of see Claudius' appointment. They're really hoping for something to keep Nahida alive, but as it is, I don't think it's going to be enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these players are battling for a significant sum of money, right? Yes. First place is $16,000, <laughs> second place is $10,000, mm -hmm. if we're correct. Yeah. Um, so emotions are definitely running high, I'm sure. Yeah, and you know, again, every, you know, every decision is so, so important. So yeah, I think we're gonna see Nahida here with the five cost skill. I don't think it's gonna matter. You know, Shao Shao has the damage to come back. Uh, I think Claude knows that he's just doing doing what he can, putting it down into a close game. Not yeah. quite one health, uh, off by one, as it were. Very good match the by Big first Zoom. round of the finals with the swirl onto Nahida. That lucky dog circlet wasn't quite enough to sustain Nahida. Uh, Clare wasn't mm -hmm. able to draw any food. Yep. I mean, actually, Binzu did. Binzu got Lotus in the end, but it was kind of didn't it matter. didn't didn't matter at that point. Yeah, I think it was it, it, it showcased a lot of good play both on Clare's side from avoiding the cryo damage for so long, but Binzu also recognizing how important it is to have that cryo application yes. and staying on Shenhe in a double endema deck for four or five turns you know even after doing the burst doing it another turn just so he can ensure that cryo it really goes to show how critical it is and you know you have to recognize what's important for each of the decks yep and you know how much these players are thinking about really tiny things you know yeah. when you're when you're playing casually uh it's hard to account for everything there's just so right. many different hidden mechanics in this <laughs> game that you will only discover if you get into a game and start playing yeah. speaking of which we're in the game too now <laughs> yeah let's see what the players decided to bring binzu, i immediately obviously. see um electro res mm -hmm. for binzu so let's see what deck would that be what deck would that be I'm gonna find out in oh. a second. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be the Raiden Chong Yun Razor deck. Oh my gosh, we haven't got to see this yet. Um, no, this deck's been banned quite a lot. I think it's yeah. a very popular one in the uh, the cool. EU really metagame. Oh, and Claude opting to use the same deck here, very much liking uh, how his chances are. Again, it, it was very close in that first game, so I think if he can execute kind of a similar game plan, you know, come to think of it, maybe that normal, now that I think about it, remember that normal attack that I talked about uh -huh. uh, that didn't come in? You know, it it did come down to two damage on the Shao, so I do wonder if he had went for the normal attack instead of resummoning Guoba, if that would have made the difference. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll see what we'll lines see. he takes in this uh, in this game. Yeah, maybe maybe Claude was able to um, <laughs> figure out uh -huh. where he kind of <laughs> made a mistake, misstepped last round, and go at it again. I mean, it's a very good deck. Yeah. Definitely showcasing some uh, the power of kind of Shaolin who isn't used too much, but I think really trying to like maximize all her power applications can be pretty difficult, but if he can do that, I think he'll pull ahead in this matchup. But yeah, the Chong Yun, I'm excited to see this second action. You know, I asked some of our players about this deck. It's very easy to look at this deck and think it's a deck around Razor. You know, you set up your Chong Yun field, you get Razor's burst up you with the help of Raiden. You do a bunch of super conduct damage. Yeah, you, know? you do a bunch of attack. That's actually not at all how this deck works. You know, I, I've been schooled by them, <laughs> uh, so to speak, in how to yes. actually play this deck. And it's, you know, Razor's are very much a backup plan. We're going to see Chong Yun and Raiden take most of the time on the field. Yeah, I mean, Razor is kind of like better than Sino in this mm -hmm. deck, I think, but they would play the same role, right? They so, do. like, cleaning up at the end uh, and acting as an anchor for the Chung Yun and Raiden core. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, pretty, pretty solid super conduct deck. I'm really excited to see this one play out. Yeah, and some choices here. Does Binzu want to cool. change? Cool. Yeah. I was wondering, because if the Overload uh, had uh, ended on Raiden, then it would have sent him onto Razor, which is not what he wants. So he preemptively uh, decided to go to Chong Yun. This lets him start on Raiden the next turn, which is exactly yep. what he wants. With that yes. frost layered field up, Raiden's attacks, of course, are going to do cryo damage, and he's going to be able to trigger that, that superconduct. Correct. Yeah, that burst, and then Chong Yun will be threatening a burst as well. Ooh. So uh, Raiden is obviously a new character to 3.7. If there are any uh, more casual players out there who are tuning in, yep. Raiden's burst does a hefty amount of damage on cast, and also it gives the other two characters on your team mm -hmm. two energy points towards their burst. That would put Chong Yun 
Brittany to cast his burst. He already has one energy mm -hmm. point. And Razor at two out of three. So yeah. very, very good. Very, very good. And, and, you know, we've seen a lot of, if you look at some of the, the high level tournaments in here, people really generally avoid characters with three cost bursts. They're very yes. hard to get going. They're powerful, but because of how long they take to set up, it can be tricky to use them. But Raiden has really helped that along a lot. You know, if you add two uh, energy to everyone on your team, it's only one more energy to be able to burst right away. Yeah, and I mean, the thing with Chong Yun is, like, you can play around his burst. His burst is very powerful, does seven cryo damage. Yeah. The thing is, like, you don't have to. What's good about Chong Yun is his utility with his elemental skill because it is off field sure. cryo application. You don't have to have Chong Yun as the active character to apply cryo onto the enemy, and mm -hmm. that is really where he, he shines, right? Yeah, it's, it's similar to uh, Xing Chou. Yeah, it's a lot of what makes this deck work. Otherwise, Raiden is very bad at generating the second point of energy. Once you have her summoned there, you're really left to a basic attack, but Chong Yun lets her do a cryo attack. And you see that Claude having to go with a normal attack, the dice not really being in his favor. He does have five Dendro, so we might see a swap onto Nahida here, maybe even a fast swap uh, so you can use a five cost skill. I think you really need to maximize your Dendro here. I think you would like to perhaps use uh, the shelling burst, but if your dice don't line up, I think you have to take a different line. Yeah, and you know, Raiden oh. already has her burst up, coming in with the super conduct onto Shangling, piercing damage across the board, of course. Um, and Lotus is onto Nahida to protect her, but I mean, Raiden's burst is gonna go off anyway. Yeah, I was wondering if Vincent was gonna opt to wait a turn to burst, uh, just so he can just waste the Lotus Crisp. But I think this is probably the better play. You know, get the burst down as early as possible. Yeah, the meta is very fast. So, I mean, getting getting started fast is the way to go. And I think you could even end on Raiden just... I think you want Chong Yu next. I, I believe if he wants to go... You want You want his uh, Frostfield back, right? So you could end on Razor, and then it'll overload onto Chong Yun. Mm -hmm. But it depends if he wants to have the first turn with, with Raiden, but I don't think it matters. Oh, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, I think you just end the round here, and then maybe just lead off with uh, the skill on Razor. Yeah, Raiden's going to take a bunch of damage here. Actually, yeah. the over it's not going to overload because of the It's going to quicken, it's going to be quicken, yeah. and then uh, Pyro onto Raiden. Would you really happy with that? Quicken isn't the best in this deck. I, I think it's the one element you don't want to really trigger that. Yeah, element. yeah, you don't really want that elemental reaction here because you can't really utilize that as much. You're going to be applying a lot of pyro and it just doesn't, like, doesn't work too well together. Yeah, Claude ending on shelling there, I think basically signifying that he wants to use the burst uh, next turn while it's still available. But we'll see here Raiden take a bunch of damage. Uh, going down to one. It's one HP. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the gamblers is a really big Ooh. draw here because all the characters on the other side are low, but uh, you know, uh, but not yet dead. So we could see some something pretty big happen with gamblers. I wonder if we're gonna see uh, Raiden's skill refresh actually. Um, you know, just keep her on the yeah. one HP. So uh, Claude has to waste some dice to remove her. Mm -hmm. Not very good rolls from Binzu. They're two pairs of dice are kind of the worst uh, that you can ever see. There's really nothing you can do about them. Oh, pull a quick swap. <laughs> yeah, the quick swap might matter a lot here. You know, he, he might he's going to be able to snipe off the Xiangling before she gets burst up. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a quick swap into Chong Yun. Yeah. We're gonna see the gamblers, gamblers go on. Equipping, probably. Yeah, and this is gonna deny the shelling. Oh. Yeah, using the burst there, you know, I think that makes the most sense. The skill isn't gonna be enough to do the damage. And really, you don't care too much about Chong Yun after this, because uh, Razor is still at 10. Well, you do, you don't wanna use his skill. You, you wanna use his skill, skill one last one time, more time, but both Yai and Nahida, I think one of the weaknesses of this team that Claude has put forward is that they're not very good at uh, front loading their damage. You know, yeah, with Yai's Yang skill Gong, is delayed. No more pyro, it's right. huge. No more pyro, and Shelling can only summon or normal attack. Yai can only summon or normal attack, and Nahida has skills, but they're either expensive or don't do a lot of damage by themselves. Yes. So he's, he feels pretty safe, uh, I think, in this spot. Yeah, there's no way for Chong Yun to basically die here, so uh, Binsu should be safe to use his frost field again, and then. Mm -hmm. But we are going to see Kalsa's Arts giving Nahida that second energy. We're going to see her burst go up, but that's not going to be enough to kill Chong Yun. Yeah, it's not going to be enough to kill Chong Yun at all. Oh no, with the quicken it will be. That's five exactly. Oh, you're right. But Razor's probably going to. Yeah, Razor's taking the field now. 
I mean, he's he is hopefully going to do what he is in the deck to do, which is to clean up after everyone. So uh, it's going to be a bit hard without the super fun deck. I mean, there is the cry application on Yaimiko to consider, but um, yeah, ideally you would want Chong Yun's Frost Field on Razor when he's using his burst. So it's just constant super conduct, super conduct, super conduct, and yep. yeah, Benzu's going to have to operate without that. No, but he will be able to burst it. If, if uh, Claude doesn't swap off Nahida, she will go down uh, to Reza. You know, very interesting choice. I, th I think Benz is probably going to tune that Northern Smoke Chicken. Mm. Um, although, I guess it depends on what, what Claude does. If Claude doesn't swap off Nahida there, then Yaya isn't very threatening with no energy, and he might actually opt to get rid of the Lotus Curse. And if there is a swap, yeah, here we go. A new, one of the new cards, I actually don't know the name of that food, but it does put a shield for two on all of your characters. So this will protect Claude from the Razor uh, Burst finishing off any characters. Often you send off on the Raiden skill. I mean, in this case, I think the, the choice for Binsu is pretty clear, right? You swap onto Raiden and use her skill, right? I think that might be the best play. Yeah, because Raiden is going to die to uh, the passive pretty quickly and right in skill gives you the best uh damage uh kind of ratio against that food oh, looks like that's not what Vince is gonna do yeah burst through that food shield mm -hmm. minus the Nahida, and now razor has <laughs> two rounds <laughs> yeah Ooh, okay still swapping to right in uh right going to fall to that summon here mm -hmm. yeah definitely the the reason behind that is of course to uh get rid of that summon and yes. not let uh, Reza have a aura on him. And also the Quicken Stack on Nahida uh, was involved in that damage mm -hmm. done to Raiden, so that's less damage that will fall onto Razor, which I think is really smart. Yeah, it's Razor against the world. <laughs> do you believe in him? I oh, I, I think I do, actually. I mean, he, we'll have to see what Claude, how well Claude's dice rolls. He didn't get a lot of Dendro dice. He didn't dice. get anything to protect Nahida either. And I mean, sw swapping to Yai is not going to do him any favors. No, he doesn't really have much he can do here with the dice that he's been dealt. And this is kind of the problem with having characters like Yai without a lot of damage up front, is that swapping to them isn't going to quite do enough. So we might... Oh, I don't think you want to use when the crane returns here. Because Yae is going to die to a normal attack, and she's kind of more important now than Nahida. But either way, I don't Neither think... Neither characters do damage on their own. Yeah, I think problem. the fact that we know that Binzu has the Lotus Crisp, uh, I believe this game should be over yes. uh, for him anyway. And yeah, having to tune on those dice, there might have been something that uh, Claude could do with Lee Shu into Calx's Arts. But with this line of play, I don't think there's anything. We're going to see Reza probably eat a Lotus Crisp and then do a normal attack. I don't even think he needs to eat a Lotus Crisp. <laughs> Honestly, he's he's not even doing that. Yeah. yeah. They're just taking Let's... out Yaimiko. The Super Conduct does do one more damage. Nahida doesn't take her out, but... Uh, Claudia gave me a respectful smile there on the camera. You know, he knows when no he's cards beaten to when he sees it. Look, for four Electro dying. That poor Nahida cannot yeah. do much at all. So... Very close game there, and Binzu takes it the lead at 2-0. Two, zero. Two, zero. This is the first time we've seen this happen, right? Because, I mean, yeah. all of our best of threes have gone to um, full three games. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, then it's, now it's match point. So uh, Binzu in a very comfortable spot here. Definitely you know, using two of the stronger decks in his arsenal uh, to come out ahead. But, you know, if you, if you, those of you who watched the uh, previous stream here with the USA TCG duels, you'll remember in the finals, we did have one of our uh, players go to, down 2-0 only to come back in the next three games. So Reverse sweep. Yeah, the reverse sweep. Clouder is not yet out of this game, and we hopefully will see some more interesting decks out of him, and maybe he can front a comeback here. I mean, Claude has brought a lot of interesting decks to mm -hmm. this battle, right? Um, yeah, and, and he's definitely, he chose that Nahida deck twice and has lost it twice, so he might be thinking to try something different, or he's confident that that deck can beat the remaining deck choices out of Binzu. One of the decks that he brought is Child Barbara <laughs> Raiden, and I know Blep and I have been scratching our heads over this one. Oh, yeah. We really want to see it played. You know, um, if we don't say play today, hopefully we'll see maybe it in action on Sunday. But let's get into... Ooh, there's a already, fan. Oh, we have... I see Quicken. Yeah, there is... Uh, I think the Quicken deck is on... 
the bottom. We'll see the, the, the deck choices shortly after that. Man. Pretty good draw from Binzu. Lots of dice, uh, but not a lot of ramping cards. So a pretty aggressive start. He might be able to do something very early in the game. Ooh, Kaya! Yeah, this is That's the Kaya bingo. Mona. <laughs> That's another bingo! Kaya, you know, not used very often. I, I really loved using Kaya during some of the uh, NPC fights. You know, it's really satisfying sometimes to just use Kaya burst and then swap and kill a bunch of shrooms or hiller churls, you know, on the other side. Yeah, and I see that Claude has brought uh, mm -hmm. Kaya Mona. And to yep. me, I feel like that is a really strong core because Mona's passive, I mean, she, she can apply Hydro pretty easily with her skill and yep. then her passive lets her quick swap to another character mm -hmm. and with Kaya's burst it does cryo damage when you swap characters so I guess you can kind of see how that would go yeah. together right yeah and there's definitely a lot of quick swap in Claude's deck if you saw earlier I'm not sure if he kept it or put it back but there was the new one of the new cards the gliding fan I don't know the exact uh, the the technical name for it but you know it does reduce uh, your swap cost and also make it a fast swap it still has it in his hand but yeah. only for the second swap but you know if your deck is swapping around a lot already then the second swap isn't that far away. Also, Adrian, I feel like is a good third character into this. I mean, you don't have Woven because you don't have Elemental Resonance, but uh, the thing is, Adrian is just really good at sweeping the board when you need him to. Yeah, and we saw that Claude having to use Mona basic attack because he didn't, you know, the Cathedral reroll didn't give enough Hydro Dice to use the Mona summon. Not a great start here. He does have a Paimon card, that he will probably deploy at the end of his turn along with Timmy uh, in order to probably have better dice next round. But not starting with Mona Summon is a really big detriment to the deck, especially Binzu with such an aggressive start. We might see him just pile on a lot of damage very early on. I, I fear one thing. I fear one thing for oh. Claude right now. Ending without swapping off of Mona. So the thing is, uh, Binzu has double woven. Yeah, so we could potentially see a first turn kill there. He's, I think he's doing that. He also has changing shifts. So he has all the dice to work with in the world. I wonder if he should have used the changing shifts. Oh no, but he wouldn't have enough dendro dice anyway. So let's see. He's wondering if he wants to use five cost skill or two three cost skills. I think he's going to go with the double three cost skill option. Yep. Might be sniping Mona off right away. And in fact, the second skill is, is still going to apply the seeds to the inactive characters. So not even that much worse than the five cost skill. But this, this kills Mona. This is an FTK on to Mona first turn kill. This is very, very unfortunate for Claude. Yeah. This is not a great, you know, it really is those dice rolls. If he had rolled up better dice, uh, he uh, would have better deploy the Mona skill, being able to swap off Mona comfortably, but he really needed that Hydro application and was banking on it next turn. And you can see how strong Nahida is, you know. Uh, you can do either a 5 cost skill or 2 3 cost skills. The mm -hmm. difference is just one dice, like we were talking about earlier. Yep. And if you do 2 3 cost skills, you know, it only applies seeds onto the first character, and then if you do it again onto the same character, it will spread those seeds, which is what we've seen just now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the one of the things you have to realize, though, Bins used a lot of cards uh, in order to execute that first turn kill. So you're kind of trading there the flexibility of a future turn in order to reduce the options of your opponent. So the good thing is Claude is bringing a deck with three different elements. So he mm -hmm. hasn't turned off any of his elemental reactions. He still has access to still Kaya melt. and Melt. Yes. Yeah, and he's actually clean of elemental reactions right now. So he's in a decent enough spot. Um, hopefully he rolls better dice this time with the Paimon card. Also, I mean, Paimon also a uh, library. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if this goes on for another round, uh, Timmy's set to give him some more resources cool. as well. So we'll probably mm, actually look at his dice. Yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be really tough to come back because combined with the uh, efficiency of Binzu's first turn and on top of that, Claude having such a bad first turn, this the really favors Binzu right now being the aggressor, you know, piling on a bunch of damage, making Claude worried about, you know, things like that uh, that northern uh, that Tandori chicken that did an extra two damage. Yeah, skill. so Tandori chicken buffs a uh, character's skill by two damage, I believe. Mm -hmm. And yep. so we see Binzu sitting on two Electro, one Omni. We'll probably see a slow swap with changing shifts onto Fischl for an Oz refresh. Yeah, that's probably the best play here. I mean, I think the best option for Claude here is probably to swap to maybe not even to Pyro Agent. It's going to be tough. I mean, the one good thing is a refresh of Oz will probably be sent off. 
So I think Claude is deciding whether he wants to normal attack into uh, Kaya burst, but he's also very much still struggling on dice here. So this is not a good time to, to have bad the dice rolls. Yeah, it's really not a good time to have bad dice rolls. This is so unfortunate. Yeah, it looks like we are going to switch to the Pyro Agent. I think this makes the most sense. Yes. Your opponent is going to probably switch to Nahida or Fischl, oh, both of which man, uh, have Pyro Reaction here. But Pyro um, Agent not able to, uh, you know, isn't going to be able to use up uh, his kind of de uh, shield stacks to the most efficiency. We're probably going to see a skill here. We're trying to tune that fan. Bye, fan. It was good seeing you for a little while. You gotta tune it. I mean, you gotta tune vape, it. Vape's gonna apply onto uh, official, but the thing is, I think swapping to agent was the play here, specifically because you don't want that extra damage from uh, Quicken. You don't want to proc Quicken again on Titan. Yeah, but I think it might be too little, too late. Like I, mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of the strengths of official in this deck over Yai. I think in this spot, if it was Yai, it would be very vulnerable to send off. It would have been a much. Uh, less effective turn here, but Binzu able to apply continual pressure here. I think we're about to see send off onto Oz and then maybe Calx. Maybe, maybe... I don't know. I, I don't think you should use Timmy here, actually, because you're no, not going to survive gonna, three rounds. Yeah, Timmy's not going to come tuning. into play. You should probably tune it um, at a later turn. But even Calx's out's not very good because I don't think Agent Burst is that effective here. Oh, playing Timmy. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think... Honestly, I don't think Claude has a lot of good options left. Um, he's kind of looking through it in his head and realizing, you know, that first turn kill on Mona was such a big deal. You yes. know, losing out on one of his elements, even if he has some backup ones. Agent is not the best character to uh, kind of take the field this early. You really want him near the end when your other characters uh, on your opponent's side are lower and dead. Yes, and the thing with Mona is, like, she's not going to be your primary damage dealer, but she is so core, especially in a deck that revolves around swapping, like, with Kaya's burst. Yep. Um, so having her go down just kind of removes the core of your deck in that case. Mm -hmm. Agent should not be up front this early. Yeah, yeah, and still the dice not really agreeing here with Claude. Uh, luckily, he has one more reroll here. You know, he's really hoping for another Pyro and or Cryo. Okay, so he's got something workable. So we're probably going to see uh, Agent do a burst, kill official here before she can do an ultimate, but I think... I mean, that might be enough because there's no more Oz. That send-off really did uh, have a good impact on the game there, denying any further Electro application. But I believe the remaining Electro aura on Agent is going to be enough to finish that game. I, I think it will be enough. We're probably going to see Claude. Go yeah. I think we're probably going to see a Nahida burst here. Yep, yep. a six burst damage we'll on the take Agent. take out Agent, and then it's just Kaya. I mean, even Kaya's going to take minus one from Nahida's seat, so... Yeah, <laughs> and lone Kaya is not what you want, because, you know, if you only have Kaya left and you burst, you literally cannot do anything. Uh, you cannot proc it while you have one character left. So Kaya is the worst character you could probably solo with here. So I think... I think that was a very clean finish from Binzu, showcasing kind of the power of three very strong decks. And Claude Ooh, here, Claude gonna concede, conceding. which oh, makes Binzu our champion. Today. Congratulations to Binzu. Binzu taking home 16,000 USD, right? Yes, that is our top prize here. I mean, Claude is also gonna make up very well, but you know, that top prize, it's more about the trophy and the bragging rights than anything else. And Binzu has earned it with a 3-0. We gotta pass this to our host now. Congratulations, congratulations, a handshake here, very, very well done. But please, to the center of the stage, everybody, can we get a round of applause for our winner, Binzu, come on to the front, Binzu, congratulations. What an incredible show here, and I must allow you to take the trophy. There you are, hold it up, ah, yes, there it is, fantastic there, well done. Unbelievable performance, wow, you did, oh, this part, oh, oh. It's for you! Thank you, Prince! The Prince Cup! Wonderful job there! My goodness! Alright, let me ask you a quick couple questions. How does it feel to be crowned the best player of Genius Invocation in Europe? Yeah, it feels really good. <laughs> it, it's uh, honestly the last three games were nerve wracking, but now that it's over, it's just feeling good. Yes, absolutely. You really spread the gospel here of the Dendro Electro Quicken Chicken. Anything out there to say that people are going to be running that deck for the rest of their lives now? Uh, I don't know if they will be running it, but <laughs> I think it's uh, a fun deck and you can always high roll or 
sometimes low road, but the high roads are more worth like the road. Absolutely, let's let them take a nice look right at the front of the trail. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that kitty. That is for you, Prince. All right, I want to give you one last chance to say anything out there to everybody watching, your fans, your viewers, everybody. Yeah, uh, I'd like to thank like everyone that supported me and I'd like to thank like especially the people I always play with and uh, especially like Kevin, I net decked every single deck from the for him, but I got to play them and it's really good. All right, fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your champion of the Astra Carnival, Prince. There you go, the cup, he has won. Your winner, Pinzu. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. It was an absolute pleasure and honor to bring you the Prince Cup. We will see you again. Don't go anywhere because we have NA coming up and this will be your EU champion. We'll see you soon for North America tomorrow. Have a fantastic night, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you, Prince. Thank you.